Chapter 501 The Gentleman Gervais The maid quickly lit all the lamps in the bathroom. And instantly the whole bathroom became brightly lit. After the maid lit the lampstand, she went to the bath and started pouring two large buckets of milky white milk into the bath. Then she brought a large basin of fresh flower petals. Once everything was done, the maid made sure that the water temperature was normal. And then she quickly headed towards the bathroom. Go to the door. Miss Adela, the lampstand in the bathroom has been lit. You can take a bath now. Just when the maid arrived at the door, Adela had already changed her bathing clothes and came to the bathroom door. Okay. Then, Adela walked into the bathroom, followed by two maids. You all go and do your work. I don't need to serve you when I take a shower. Because these maids were not people she was familiar with. Adela was not prepared to let them serve her to bathe. After entering the house, he waited for them to put away their clothes and greeted the two of them. Yes, Miss Adela. The two maids said nothing and responded respectfully, then quickly exited the room and carefully closed the bathroom door. After the maid left, Adela, wearing only a silk nightgown, came to the bathtub. It was only at this time that Gervais truly saw the appearance of the woman named Adela. The woman was about 18 or 19 years old, tall and well-proportioned, with long brown hair, which was tied back by a ribbon. What shocked Gervais even more was the appearance of this woman. Her appearance is not inferior to that of his chief wife Alice. You must know that Alice is the most beautiful woman Gervais has ever seen in Eurasia. Even Caroline is inferior to Alice in appearance and can only make up for it with her perfect curves. But the woman in front of her was comparable to Alice in appearance. So you can imagine how beautiful she was. However, Adela and Alice are completely different in terms of temperament. Alice is aloof and quiet, just like the snowdrops on the snow-capped mountains, making people feel amazing but also feeling ashamed of themselves. But the woman named Adela in front of her was beautiful and elegant, just like those wealthy ladies in dramas, with outstanding temperament and easy to make people fall in love with her. Gudong! After looking at the appearance, his eyes began to move downward unconsciously. Gervais was above the bathtub at the moment, and Adela was standing on the edge of the bathtub, bending over to test the water temperature with her flawless white soles. Because he was wearing a nightgown, the gap at the collar was looming in front of Gervais. Gervais swallowed his saliva just after taking a look. After reacting, Gervais was so startled that he quickly looked away. It's not that he has the heart of a saint and doesn't want to look at anything inappropriate. Rather, he was worried that making too much noise would attract the attention of the woman below. Fortunately, Adela was splashing in the water to test the temperature of the water, and the sound of splashing water covered up the sound of Gervais swallowing just now. Gervais was still frightened after he withdrew his gaze but his mind was still filled with the beautiful face of the woman below and the looming beautiful scenery. Wow! At this time, the sound of splashing water came from the bath below again. It was probably that Adela was getting ready to step out of the bath. Why don't you take another look? I have to collect some interest for working so hard on the beam. But wouldn't it be too beastly to do so? Well, I promise you will only look at it once. And you must control it so that you don't swallow. You can't be worse than a beast. Right. What's more important is that if I don't look at her, if she notices me, I won't know yet. Gervais struggled hard with his thoughts. But in the end, it was because of safety considerations that Gervais had to look down again. When Gervais's eyes moved down again, his whole body suddenly shook. His eyes widened. And he couldn't bear to blink anymore. I saw that Adela below was slowly taking off her bathrobe at this moment. And her skin as white as milk that could be broken by blowing was slowly revealed in front of Gervais's eyes. Gervais unconsciously compared it with Alice in his mind and found that the ice crystal jade skin of the two was still about the same. As the bathrobe was slowly taken off, the scenery that fell into Gervais's eyes became more and more beautiful. The petals are so big. Oh, no, they are very long petals. Oh, that's not right either. Gervais' reaction in his mind became a little slow. But at this moment, he could no longer compare the woman below to Alice. It's embarrassing to say that although he and Alice have been married for so long, the only intimate contact Gervais had with his cheap wife was that day when Alice took the initiative and forcibly kissed her. So he could only compare Adela's skin to Alice's. But there was nothing else he could do. But in general, Gervais was sure that in the island country's literary films he watched in his previous life, there were absolutely few such perfect figures. One point more was too much. And one point less was too little. Wow. Wow. Adela didn't notice that there was a gentleman in the bathroom. After making sure that the water temperature was suitable, she slowly walked into the bathtub and then started to gently scoop water on her body with a ladle. 
About five minutes later, it was only at this moment that Gervais looked away. The scenery was infinitely beautiful, but Gervais felt that his posture was a little tired. He didn't feel anything in the first few minutes, especially the beautiful scenery just now. Gervais felt that he could see it for a year and a half without blinking. However, Gervais obviously overestimated the strength of an ordinary person. He only had a bean with thick arms underneath him, and he had to keep his balance on it at all times. Maintaining this balance required a lot of strength. But Gervais, who gradually lost his fighting spirit, felt the numbness in his arms, and his body began to sway slightly. Hold on! Hold on! It'll be over if you fall! Beauty! Hurry up and wash up! If you don't finish washing, I will be embarrassed when we meet like this. And you will be embarrassed too. Right. When he was feasting his eyes before, Gervais wished that time could freeze at this moment. But now, he wished that the woman in the bath could finish washing and leave as soon as possible. However, because Adela had been traveling for a long time, it was difficult for her to take a comfortable bath. So she was naturally prepared to take more baths to relieve her physical fatigue. Time passed by and Gervais had been lying on the beam for more than 20 minutes. There were already many beads of sweat on his forehead on the beam. Tick-tock. Suddenly, a drop of sweat fell on Gervais's forehead without warning. Gervais wanted to raise his hand to catch it, but in order to maintain balance, his hands needed to hug the beam tightly. That drop of sweat fell directly into the pool. Seeing this scene, Gervais's little heart trembled. Wow! Fortunately, the beauty below was concentrating on bathing and the sound of scooping water covered up Gervais's low voice of sweat drops. Phew! It's okay! It's okay! Gervais shouted lucky in his heart, and wanted to raise his hand to wipe the sweat from his forehead to show how nervous he was just now. However, it seems that the glory boss doesn't want him to feel better. Gervais relaxed slightly, but the sweat on his forehead dropped again, and there were three drops at a time. Tick-tock! 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 Three drops of sweat fell into the pool again. This time Gervais was not so lucky. At this time, Adela stopped scooping water and was gently rubbing her shoulders with her hands. The sound of water dripping one after another immediately attracted Adela's attention. Why is it leaking? Adela felt a little strange. So she slowly raised her head and looked above the falling water droplets. Initially, Adela was just confused. But when he saw a shirtless man lying above him, his beautiful eyes widened in disbelief. As if he had seen a ghost. Ah. Chapter 502 Types of Evil Holy shit! Gervais looked at the shocked eyes of the pink beauty below. The expression on her face was uglier than constipation. Gervais didn't dare to let her shout anymore. So he immediately released his hands holding the beam and flew towards the pool. But a wealthy lady like Adela obviously hadn't reacted yet and was pounced on by Gervais. Woo! 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 Gervais knocked down Adela accurately, then quickly pushed Adela to the edge of the bath and covered Adela's mouth with one hand. Gervais had already used his senses to detect that there was no fighting spirit in Adela, and she was also an ordinary person. So after Adela was pressed against his body and covered her mouth with her hands, she could only stare in horror, struggle and whine. Shoo! After Gervais covered Adela's mouth, seeing that she was still struggling, he reluctantly raised his other hand to signal Adela to be quiet. But how could Adela listen to Gervais's words, and instead struggled even more fiercely? Stop making noise. If you make any more noise, I'll kill you. At this time, Gervais had to pretend to be ruthless in order to shock the woman in front of him as quickly as possible. Sure enough, seeing the frightening glare in Gervais's eyes, Adela gradually calmed down, with a trace of panic flashing in her eyes. A rich young lady like her has always been the focus of attention in stars, but she has never encountered a fierce person like Gervais, especially Gervais's fierce eyes that have been used to kill people for a long time. Of course, she was not afraid of death, but worried that the man in front of her had other thoughts. Very good. My appearance here is just an accident. As long as you promise not to say anything, I will leave now. Do you understand? If you understand, just nod. Seeing that Adela finally calmed down, Gervais's heart relaxed slightly, and his tone became calmer, and he spoke to Adela. Adela knew that she had no chance to resist now, so she could only nod silently. Very well. I'll let go of you now and leave immediately. But if you dare to make any noise again, I'll kill you directly. Gervais warned solemnly again. Woo! Woo! Adela looked at Gervais and nodded again. After receiving confirmation again, Gervais turned around and looked around, finally focusing on the gauze curtains. Now that Adela has found her trace, 
it is no longer possible to leave from the first floor by taking the stairs. For now, she can only leave from the balcony. Gervais is going to tear off the curtain and tie up the woman in front of him. And then escape. As for taking Adela as a hostage and leaving, it would be too easy for an accident to occur. Gervais did not dare to take the gamble. Although he had the black kiwi fruit as a life-saving trump card, Gervais did not want to use it as a last resort. Because Gervais is very sure that if this is the holy continent, there will definitely be someone stronger than the white flag knight. If someone stronger than the white flag knight is attracted, he will definitely end up in a miserable state. Only by pretending to be an insignificant ordinary person can he be ignored by those strong people and then find a way to escape. After thinking about how to escape, Gervais glanced at Adela again and then slowly released his palm covering her mouth. After confirming that Adela really didn't scream anymore, Gervais quickly stood up and came to a curtain beside the bath. Tear. Boom. 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 Miss Adela? Did you scream just now? Miss Adela, are you okay? But just as Gervais raised his hand to tear down the curtain, there was a knock on the bathroom door. Obviously, the scream Adela just made, although short-lived, still attracted the attention of the maid in the small building. Gervais became nervous immediately and turned his head to stare at Adela. Adela also looked at Gervais intently, but did not immediately ask the maid for help. Adela knew very well that these maids were just ordinary people, and she didn't dare to bet that the maids could rush in before the shameless gangster in front of her could hurt her. Shoo! Seeing that Adela was quite honest, Gervais raised his hand again to signal her to silence, and then looked at the balcony with his peripheral vision. It makes no difference whether to tie Adela or not for this purpose. The maids outside have been alerted, and Gervais is not sure whether they have notified others now. It would be a waste of time to tie Adela now. So Gervais rushed towards the balcony without saying a word, and then quickly tied one end of the curtain to the balcony railing. Seeing Gervais running to the balcony, Adela finally breathed a sigh of relief. Gervais climbed onto the balcony and quickly rolled down. After confirming that Gervais could no longer see her, Adela quickly stood up from the water and quickly ran to the clothes rack nearby. There is an intruder here. Please call the guards. Adela shouted towards the door while putting on her clothes. After getting dressed quickly, Adela didn't open the bathroom door, but ran directly to the balcony. When she came to the balcony and took advantage of the firelight on the roadside below, Adela once again saw the shameless gangster with only a blanket around him. At this time, he had run more than 10 meters. Adela gritted her teeth and began to chant. The light condenses in the sky, and the holy light shines in the sky, and the holy light purifies. As Adela chanted for two seconds, a beam of white light appeared on the balcony. And as Adela pointed out, the beam of light instantly flew towards Gervais, who was still running. Holy crap! This woman is actually a magician! Although Adela's singing was subtle, Gervais also heard the movement in the silent night and couldn't help but look back as he ran away. Suddenly, he was shocked. The young lady who looked weak just now turned out to be a magician. And at this time, a beam of white light was shooting towards him rapidly. Gee, Gervais had no time to react. He suddenly felt a burning sensation coming from his body. And a burning smell suddenly came from the place hit by the white light. Gervais looked up and saw wisps of black smoke coming out of his shoulder that had been hit by the beam. Not to mention the hair on it. Even Gervais's skin had turned black. After taking this trick, Gervais did not dare to neglect. He endured the pain and rolled into the nearby bushes. Adela suddenly lost Gervais' figure. The holy light didn't cause much harm to him. Seeing Gervais running into the bushes, Adela was angry and a little incredible at the same time. She didn't know that Gervais still had about 50% damage immunity effect. Otherwise the entire shoulder would be burnt. Shameless bastard. I will kill you even if you run away to the ends of the earth. Looking at the bush where Gervais disappeared. Even a wealthy lady like Adela changed her usual lady-like elegance and cursed through gritted teeth. This shameless gangster should have been hiding on the beam before she took a bath. Which meant that her body must have been seen by him. Adela had classified this man into a category as evil as those undead. Chapter 503, Manhunt The holy city of Hika is one of the city-states of the Human Sacred Alliance. Its strength ranks in the middle and lower reaches of the Human Alliance. It has jurisdiction over five small cities, thousands of villages and towns, and a total population of more than 8 million. Today, the city lord's palace in the holy city of Hika is extremely lively. In the reception area with more than 10 independent manors, thousands of guards are carrying torches and conducting carpet searches. I heard that it was because a thief sneaked into the reception area. 
This thief even bumped into the second young master's VIP guests, making the second young master furious. Adela, are you okay? Yes. Adela, I told you to live with us. It's all Lachi's fault. If Lachi hadn't arranged for you to live here, this wouldn't have happened. That's right. Lucky, you need to give Adela an explanation as to why thieves broke into the palace of the city lord of your holy city of Hika. Are the guards of your holy city of Hika so unbearable? Ha ha. The most ridiculous thief is an ordinary person. Lachi, I hope you can explain. At this moment, the lights inside and outside the small building where Adela was located were brightly lit, and there were already hundreds of guards guarding her. In the hall on the first floor of the small building, seven or eight men and women were talking in a hurry. Among this group of young men and women, including Adela, there were a total of three women and four men. Three of the men were now questioning the second young master of Hika Holy City. Lockie, without any mercy. They all knew at this time that Adela had encountered a thief in the bathroom. Fortunately, Adela herself said that everything was normal when she entered the bathroom. But just after she finished bathing and got dressed, a man suddenly he came in from the balcony and fled immediately after seeing her. The thief was finally hit on the shoulder by Adela with holy light purification, and then disappeared into the woods. Although Adela's experience was almost safe, several young men were indignant about such a thing. They all followed Adela all the way because of Adela, in case Adela was taken advantage of by others. How to make them happy? The second young master of Hika Holy City, Loki, was also their competitor. But because this was Loki's home court, Loki arranged for Adela to live in a different manner with them. Now that something like this has happened, it's time for them to vent their anger and add insult to injury. I'm sorry, Adela. I didn't know such a thing would happen. I will definitely catch the thief and make him pay the due price for offending you. At this time, Lucky's face turned red, almost turning into a pig liver face. However, because Adela was there, and it was indeed their problem in the holy city of Hika, he could only endure the cynicism of the other three young people. At this moment, Lachi wished he could catch that damn thief and cut him to pieces. He finally got a chance to perform well in front of Adela, but he didn't expect that it would turn out like this. He didn't know if this would give Adela a chance. Adela left a bad impression. What's even more hateful is that it was a bathroom. If Miss Adela hadn't just finished bathing and got dressed, wouldn't she have taken advantage of the thief? What's the use of being sorry? Adela, let's move out and stay in a hotel in the city. I brought five golden knights here who can definitely protect our safety. Yes. Adela, I also brought three training magicians, who can definitely protect our safety. The three men were not prepared to let Lachi pass just like this, and began to encourage Adela to leave the city lord's mansion. Otherwise, this city lord's palace is Lachi's home court, and they would not be able to compete with Lachi at all. Adela, don't worry. I have arranged hundreds of guards outside this manor. I promise that what just happened will never happen again. Lachi hated those three men with itch. But he still couldn't get angry. The status of the three of them was no lower than his own. And the most important thing now was to retain Adela. Otherwise he might really have no chance in the future. Okay. Stop arguing. Adela was frightened just now. Have you ever thought about Adela's feelings when you were arguing like this? While several young people were arguing, a woman next to Adela spoke. Several young people who were originally planning to continue mocking Lucky immediately became quiet after hearing this. It was not that they were afraid of the woman who spoke, but that they were worried about really upsetting Adela. In fact, you are also responsible. If you hadn't come up with the idea to go to the city for a walk, Adela and I would have come here at the same time. How could Adela be able to escape even if the thief frightened her? The woman who spoke was Adela's classmate, named Xenia. A group of seven of them came from the Alliance College of Higher Education. After arriving in the holy city of Hika today, several young people wanted to please Adela and came up with the idea of going to the city for a walk. In the end, Adela was tired from traveling and did not participate. So I returned to the manor alone to rest. Xenia and another woman also lived with Adela. But they were very interested in the idea of going to the city. So they did not come back to rest with Adela. That's what happened next. Adela is a talented magician with dual magic skills. And one of them is an extremely rare light magic. However, light magic is super powerful against undead creatures but its attack power against humans and other creatures is smaller. But she, Xenia, is a fire magician, and her attack power in combat is naturally stronger than that of the light magician. So if she is around, the thief will not be able to escape. Yes, we were negligent. Adela, 
We promise not to do this again in the future. When the three young people heard Xania's big hat being put down, they thought that when they just said they wanted to go shopping, you had approved it with both hands. But now you are blaming it on us. However, when they thought that if they wanted to pursue Adela, they would have to rely on Xania to put in a good word for them. They could only hold their noses and admit it. I'm a little tired. You all should go back. I'm fine now. Lachi, when the time comes, the thief will be caught. Remember to inform me. Adela finally spoke, her teeth itching with hatred for the shameless man who had seen so much of her body. But she couldn't tell anyone. Now that she heard that these young people were only blaming each other, she didn't want to pay attention to these people. So she simply started to chase them away. Okay, Adela, have a good rest. I will definitely catch the thief. I will give you a satisfactory explanation then. Hearing that Adela was willing to continue living here, Lachi finally breathed a sigh of relief. At least he still had a chance to perform. Next, Lucky and three other young men walked out of the small building, leaving only Adela and three other women. Gervais didn't know it yet, but he had already worn the hat of a thief. And because of him, the second young master of Hika Holy City is very angry. If he is caught, he will definitely suffer a lot. At this time, Gervais was lying on the shore of a lake, his whole body soaked in the water, with only one head exposed above the water, looking at the groups of guards searching the surrounding roads. I've just stung a hornet's nest! Gervais was a little bitter. As soon as he slipped into the bushes, he started running nonstop. He ran all the way for five or six minutes. But unexpectedly he encountered a high wall, which made it impossible for him to escape. At that time, there were chaotic shouts and tapping footsteps on the roads everywhere. Gervais knew that the situation was not good. So he quickly slipped to the lake, dived into the water to escape, and at the same time thought about how to escape. Naturally, Gervais would not choose to force his way in. The search teams just now all showed up with tidal knights. Even the Golden Knight Gervais saw no less than two or three people. In a place with such strength, Gervais felt that there would be no shortage of strong people. With his own hard steel, he could the chances of escaping and ascending to heaven are slim. So the only solution for now is to be smart. And Gervais has already thought of a good way, which is to use the transparent mask he obtained from Zell. This mask can disguise himself as anyone. So he plans to blend in with the hunting soldiers and then find a way to escape. Otherwise, by the time dawn comes, the difficulty of escaping may skyrocket. At this time, Gervais was staring intently at the searching guards. He needed a chance to sneak into them quietly. Chapter 504 A Strange Big Tree Gervais laid down on the shore and waited for more than half an hour. At this time, Gervais's eyes lit up. And the opportunity finally came. I saw a small group of guards searching the woods in front. And several people were slowly searching towards the lake. One of the guards was approaching Gervais with a torch. There were several large rocks in front of Gervais. The guard glanced at this side and walked over directly holding a torch. It's you? Fortunately, I am versatile. Seeing the guard approaching, Gervais began to conceive of an illusion in his mind. Now that he had no fighting spirit, he could only rely on illusions to stealth the guard. The guard held a torch in one hand and put his other hand on the sword at his waist. He cautiously approached the stone. If any danger appeared, he could ensure that he would respond immediately. But suddenly, the guard seemed to see a touch of gold ahead in the darkness. What? After seeing a hint of gold, the guard couldn't help but raise the torch higher, wanting to take a closer look. With the faint firelight, when the guard saw clearly what was emitting golden light, he suddenly felt excited. It was a money bag. The mouth of the black money bag was opened. There were more than 10 gold coins scattered around the money bag, but the money bag was still bulging. This was a huge windfall. But although the guard was secretly happy, he did not lose his vigilance. Instead, he became more cautious, stopped and began to observe his surroundings. The guard first carefully checked the situation behind several boulders and found that there was no one. Then he looked around again, but there was still no one. Then he began to move and quickly came to the money bag. You're lucky. It's enough to make up for the first half of the year. Thinking of this, the guard bent down and lowered his arm on the hilt of his sword, preparing to pick up the gold coins and money bag on the ground. But when the guard put his arm on the money bag, he suddenly realized something was wrong, because there was no feeling of touching the money bag with his fingers. Boom! But it was useless for him to react at this time, because Gervais had already hit his neck with a stone the size of a brick. After hearing a muffled sound, the guard lost consciousness and fell into unconsciousness. Gervais quickly took the torch from his hand 
and helped him behind the rocks. Just three minutes later, Gervais put on the guard's armor and walked out from behind the rocks. The guard was thrown directly behind the rocks by Gervais, tied into a rice dumpling with a wire lock found on his body, and his mouth was blocked with a large piece of blanket. In fact, the safest thing is to kill him. Otherwise, with his silver knight cultivation, ordinary ropes cannot trap him at all. Fortunately, Gervais found a small bundle of wire locks on his body, which were forged from mithril. This allowed the guard to escape and save his life. After all, there was no grievance, and Gervais was not willing to kill innocent people indiscriminately if he could avoid killing him. Moreover, killing him would really offend the owner of this place to death. The man's hands and feet were tied, his mouth was covered, and he was hidden behind rocks. There was no way he would be discovered until tomorrow. Gather! After Gervais changed the guard's armor, he did not leave immediately. Instead, he pretended to search the area. One is to wait to leave with these guards, and the other is to prevent other guards from coming here to search. About ten minutes later, a gathering sound finally came from the road ahead. Gervais heard the shouting and saw that the other guards had stopped searching and went to gather. So he walked there in a hurry. Did you find anything? This man should be their captain. When he saw the team members coming back, he glanced at everyone and asked, Captain, nothing was found. Captain, I didn't notice it either. Several guards shook their heads one after another. Gervais had now transformed into the appearance of that guard and shook his head amidst the crowd's voices to express that he had not noticed. Forget it if you don't find it. What happened today is a bit inexplicable. I heard from the captain that he is a thief, but he has no cultivation. How is this possible? Ordinary people would not be able to break into the city lord's mansion even if they gave him 10,000 courages. Besides, the walls of the city lord's mansion have three walls. It's more than 10 meters high. Who can climb in? Captain, do you think he is a wild mage? There are so few wild mages. How dare they come to the city lord's mansion to become thieves? If they are hired by the magic association, they will be dead. Let's go! Since we haven't found anything yet, let's meet at the gate. The captain and the team members discussed quietly for a moment, and finally waved his hand and led everyone towards the front. Soon, Gervais followed everyone to the gate of the reception area of the city lord's mansion. At this time, hundreds of uniformed guards had gathered here, all standing quietly and waiting. Vice Commander, we didn't find anything. Well, go and wait over there. Afterwards, Gervais and his group of ten people joined the crowd and stood quietly waiting. Only at this moment did Gervais truly feel the extraordinariness of this place. All the soldiers present were silver knights, and there was not even a bronze knight among them. Fortunately, these soldiers are not like Gervais, who turns on his senses to spy on others all day long. Otherwise, if he has no fighting spirit now, others will definitely notice that something is wrong. After waiting for more than half an hour, Gervais and his group had gathered thousands of guards, all of whom had just returned from searching in the reception area to report. After confirming that tonight's search found nothing, the deputy commander of the legion walked to the front of all the guards and began to speak. It's late at night, and there are VIPs in the reception area, in order not to disturb their rest. Today's search operation is suspended, and the search will continue tomorrow morning. The first, second, third, fourth, and fifth squadrons are now returning to camp to prepare for the search tomorrow morning. The sixth, seventh, eighth, and nine squadrons will be guarding all the exits of the reception area tonight, and don't let even a single mouse out. Do you understand? Yes. Sir. Very well. Let's start taking action. After saying that, the deputy commander turned over without looking back, mounted a monster that Gervais had never seen before, and left here first. And Gervais also learned from the guards beside him that the team he was in now belonged to the 5th squadron, and he could just return to the camp to rest. This made Gervais breathe a sigh of relief. There are not many people in the reception area, except for the guests received by the city lord's palace. There are only those servants who are specially responsible for duty. It is midnight again, and these servants can only stay in the manner where they are. There are only soldiers searching on the road outside. No one can even be seen. The small number of people means that Gervais cannot fish in troubled waters and leave. Now that he leaves the reception area, Gervais has a much greater chance of escaping. In addition, this welcome area is the focus of the search. If you continue to stay there, you will be a turtle in the urn. Soon, under the leadership of his captain, Gervais easily passed through the exit of the reception area. This city lord's mansion is really big, 
The palace in the City of Glory is probably not even one-tenth of his size. After walking out of the reception area, Gervais silently followed the guards to a wider area. The view here is much wider than in the reception area, and there are many gothic buildings on both sides of the road. Moreover, Gervais finally saw one or two people other than guards here. However, Gervais obviously couldn't rely on these people to leave, and he didn't pay much attention to them. Instead, he kept secretly looking around and observing the terrain. After walking for about five or six minutes, Gervais suddenly discovered a strange sight. Why is that tree so tall? And what are those bright lights? Neon lights? Or drones? Am I dreaming? Just after Gervais passed through a city gate again, he suddenly noticed a tall tree appearing in the distance. Gervais estimated that he was at least a mile away from the tree, but it still felt extremely tall from here. The most important thing is that when he looked carefully, he could see that the big tree was actually emitting a faint fluorescent light. Although the looming fluorescence is not very bright, it can be vaguely distinguished in the dark night. And in addition to the fluorescence of the trees themselves, there are streaks of colorful light that are like the tails of meteors passing around the trees. The colored lights are sometimes fast, sometimes slow, sometimes close to the big tree, and sometimes quickly far away. This aroused Gervais' curiosity. But it was night now. And although there was some moonlight, he could not see the scenery in the distance clearly. Gervais did not dare to ask the surrounding guards. Otherwise he would definitely be exposed. So Gervais suppressed his curiosity and waited until he left here to talk about everything. Chapter 505 Wild Mage As the team continued to move forward, Gervais lost sight of the big tree again and was blocked from view by the tall buildings on the side. But at this time, Gervais had no time to pay attention to the big tree anymore because he found that his chance to escape had come. These guards are all guards of the city lord's mansion. And their camps are also in the city lord's mansion. And for the convenience of duty, their camps are placed near the gate of the city lord's mansion. At this time, Gervais had already seen the gate of the city lord's mansion. Although the gate of the city lord's mansion was closed, there were many servants coming in and out of a small door next to it. It was already late at night. But for the sake of dignity, many dirty and smelly tasks needed to be completed at this time to avoid bumping into the noble. For example, those who transport garbage and excrement are all carried out at this time. Moreover, there will definitely be many people living in this huge city lord's palace. And there will naturally be a lot of garbage and filth produced. At this time, a long queue is formed in front of the small door. If you don't leave now, you'll have to wait until later, Gervais muttered in his heart, then looked at the surrounding environment and deliberately slowed down. His team was the fifth squadron, so he was last in line when he returned. There was no one behind Gervais at this time. Gervais looked at a bunch of bushes on the side and quickly got in. The guards in front did not notice Team Gervais and continued to walk forward without looking back. Gervais squatted in the bushes, watching a servant waiting in line to leave the city more than 10 meters away, and continued to conceive of illusions in his mind. After the illusion was completed, Gervais picked up a pebble from the bushes and gently threw it towards the servant. Click. Gervais was not very strong so he threw the stone two or three meters away from the servant. The sound of the stone falling to the ground quickly attracted his attention, and he looked in the direction of the sound in confusion. Just when he was wondering what was going on, he suddenly saw a touch of gold on the edge of the trees in front of him. The servant's eyes lit up, and he obviously knew what he had seen. He looked around and saw that there was no one behind him, but his companion was sitting on a carriage full of garbage and looking forward, hoping to pass through the city gate quickly so that he could finish his work and go to bed early. So he tiptoed to the edge of the bushes, stood next to the golden object, and then quickly leaned over to pick up the gold coin. Boom! But before his hand touched the gold coin, he suddenly felt a pain in his head and fainted. Dozens of seconds later, Gervais walked out of the bushes in his servant's clothes, and then carefully returned to the side of the carriage. The servant in front of him, who was driving the carriage, didn't even notice that his companion had changed. After waiting for about another minute, the team in front finally completed the inspection. And the garbage truck moved forward under the control of the servant. Captain Rick! It's me! This servant was obviously familiar with these guards. After approaching the door, he stopped the carriage and naturally began to say H, low. Oh! Garney! Shibby! It's your turn to transport garbage again tonight. But something went wrong tonight and the car needs to be checked. The captain named Rick glanced at the servant driving the truck and Gervais. Seeing that they were acquaintances, he said H, low, and then began to ask his men to inspect the garbage truck. Oh, okay, Captain Rick. The servant driving the car was obviously a smart man, 
and did not dare to say anything. He nodded and waited honestly. Gervais did the same, and stepped aside with a smile, allowing a few guards to check. In fact, the inspection by the guards was very simple, except for the garbage contained in the carriage. All other parts of the carriage were clearly visible. So the two guards climbed onto the carriage and stabbed the garbage in the carriage more than a dozen times with their spears. After seeing that there was no problem, they jumped off the carriage. Okay, let's go! Okay, Captain Rick! In this way, Gervais finally escaped from the city lord's palace in the holy city of Hika with the help of the disguise mask he obtained from Zell. After walking out of the city lord's mansion, Gervais looked around under the moonlight. The appearance here was completely different from that of Eurasia. And it was countless times more prosperous than Eurasia. The streets in the holy city of Hika are very wide. The street Gervais and the others are walking on is more than 10 meters wide. And the buildings on both sides are also exquisite Gothic buildings or small Western style buildings. However, because it was late at night, there were not many pedestrians on the road. Gervais did not run away immediately, but continued to follow the garbage truck forward. Gervais knew that the garbage truck would definitely leave the city. So he planned to follow it outside the city and escape. Gervais was not sure whether the people in the city lord's mansion would search the city again if they knew he had escaped. So it was safest to escape outside the city first. With the sound of the wheels rolling, Gervais followed the garbage truck all the way to the outside of the city. Although there were guards on duty when leaving the city gate, it was obvious that the guards at the city gate were much more lax than those in the city lord's palace. They didn't even check. Seeing that the coachman and Gervais were both familiar faces, they directly let them go through the small gate, out of the city. On the way, the driver in front of him would occasionally chat with Gervais, but Gervis would just talk him out of it. After leaving the holy city of Hika for more than a mile, Gervais looked at a forest beside the road and got into it without thinking. The other servant continued to drive the garbage truck squeaking forward. Phew! We finally came out! Today was so thrilling! I almost lost my life! When he came to the forest, Gervais found a suitable big tree, climbed up in a few moments, and then leaned on the thick branches to recall what happened tonight. That rich lady named Adela is really beautiful. It makes up for the bad things I suffered tonight. Cheap wife, you have to live well. I'm still waiting to come back to compare you with that Adela to see who is better. In this way, Gervais fell asleep leaning on the branch while thinking wildly. While Gervais was sleeping soundly, in the city lord's mansion in the holy city of Hika, Lucky couldn't sleep. Those three bastards from Devere. How dare you mock me in front of Adela like this? In a luxurious manner in the city lord's palace. Lucky sat on the sofa in the hall with a dark face. He raised a glass of rum poured by a servant and drank it like a cow. He cursed angrily in his mouth. Master! At this moment, a middle-aged man walked in from the door of the hall. He was Lucky's own butler, who specialized in helping him take care of things in this luxurious manner. Bag! What's up? Have you caught the thief? Back to master. The guard searched the entire reception area, but still found nothing. Because we are worried that it will disturb the guests' rest. We have suspended the search now and are preparing to continue it at dawn tomorrow. Butler Bob replied respectfully. What a bunch of trash. They can't even catch an ordinary thief. Master, the city lord's mansion is heavily guarded. That person who can sneak in is probably not an ordinary person. Steward Bog did not quiet down because of Lucky's anger but instead began to speak for the guards. Is it a wild mage? Lucky's attention was immediately drawn away. If he is really a wild mage, why didn't he accept my recruitment and instead went to the city lord's mansion to become a thief? Master, it's not certain whether the thief is a wild mage, but this thief does have some abilities. Stop talking. Let those losers continue the search tomorrow. And we must find this thief. He made me lose face in front of Adela. And I must make him pay the price. Bag. How's the recruitment of magicians going? Lucky asked, changing the topic and continuing to drink rum. Master, there is still no magician to answer the call. Butler Bob replied respectfully. That bastard Devere used his father's connections to prevent magicians from accepting my recruitment. I will definitely avenge this in the future. Upon hearing Beige's answer, Lucky felt itchy with hatred again. Bag, don't you even have a wild mage? Master, there are only a few wild mages in the first place and they are worried about being hunted down by the Magic Association. So they definitely don't dare to show their faces, Butler Beige said. But he was muttering in his heart, you only offer a reward of 200 gold coins. Which wild mage dares to risk his life to earn these 200 gold coins? Because of that incident more than 200 years ago, 
and the subsequent emergence of wayleading parties, such as the new temple on the mainland. The Magic Association has stipulated since the catastrophe that no one in the Holy Alliance is allowed to learn magic privately. If you want to learn magic, you can only go to a few academies established by the Alliance. And you can only use magic outside the academy after you have been certified by the Magician's Association and obtained a magic badge. Otherwise, they will be regarded as traitors to the Alliance and be directly imprisoned. If they dare to resist, they will be killed directly. And wild mages are these wild magicians, who are not from regular colleges, and have not been certified by the Magician's Association. We will set off in two days. We can't go on like this. Bag. Go and change the recruitment reward. As long as you participate in my call, you can follow me to the Alliance College to be an auditor. There are two places in total. Master, isn't this price too high? Where is the city lord? Hearing Lucky's words, Butler Bog was stunned. Although this is only the qualification for an auditor, you must know that Lachi is in the Alliance High School. If you are not a genius, you will basically not be able to enter without status. And although you are an auditor, you can still take the college's assessment when the time comes. And you can get a qualification certificate after passing the assessment. For example, a magician's qualification certificate. With this, you can go to the Magician Association for certification and become a noble magician who can walk the mainland openly. The same is true for knights. Once you have the qualification certificate, you can register with the Knights Association. One day, you can actually become a white flag knight. At that time, you can directly be certified and enjoy all the preferential treatment in the Alliance. Without this qualification certificate, the Wild Knight needs to find a force to affiliate with. And only with a guarantee can he register with the Knights Association. In short, the qualification certificates of these academies are the tickets for ordinary people to enter a higher level. With this ticket, as long as the strength increases in the future, they will be able to obtain corresponding benefits. Do as I say. Aren't the four quotas for auditors in Arhika Holy City this year not yet used? So what if two are left for me? I will tell my father about it then. Lucky can no longer control so much in pursuit of Adela. Adela is not just beautiful. In addition to being a talented trainee magician with dual magic, her background is even more terrifying. If anyone really marries her, they will definitely save themselves a lifetime of struggle. Even the second young master of the holy city of Lachihika. Chapter 506 Dwarf Orcs The next day, Gervais was awakened early in the morning by the noise coming from not far away. Golialu! The next moment after waking up, his stomach growled unsatisfactorily. He was busy until midnight last night, but he didn't need a bite of food or rice. At this time, there wasn't even a bit of dregs left in his belly. Gervais dug into his pocket and found two silver coins and several copper plates inside. When he came here, he was completely naked. Even his underwear was shattered in the turbulence of time and space. Naturally, he had nothing. These two silver coins were collected from the guard last night. Now that he has money, Gervais doesn't want to have too little, and is ready to go out and buy something to fill his stomach. Arriving neatly under the tree, Gervais first stood still, and then his face changed again, turning into a young and handsome young man. The disguised servant appearance last night was naturally not visible to anyone, and Gervais did not dare to walk out with his original appearance. Who knew whether he would be remembered by that beauty? After making sure that there was nothing wrong with his face, Gervais looked at the clothes he was wearing. They were the clothes of the servants of the city lord's palace, and they couldn't be worn casually like this. So Gervais simply took off the outer shirt, and then only wore the ordinary underwear underneath, so that no one would notice anything strange about his outfit. After making sure that nothing was missing, Gervais walked directly towards the direction of the noise, which was the main road to the holy city of Hika. Gervais walked slowly and arrived at the edge of the forest in a minute, pushing aside the branches blocking the road ahead. The road has become bustling with people coming and going, making it look like a prosperous scene. At this moment, Gervais suddenly saw something. His expression changed, and he subconsciously touched his waist. But in vain, I saw an orc appearing on the road ahead. A green-skinned orc to be precise. At this time, the orc was pulling a truck forward, and in the car behind him was a short, muscular, middle-aged man with a big beard. Dwarf! After a moment, Gervais also reflected that the half-orc was obviously a coolie, and the pedestrians on the road turned a blind eye to the orc. It's really weird! This scene felt quite strange to Gervais. When he was in Eurasia, orcs and humans were enemies of life and death, and they would fight to the death when they met. But here he saw orcs and humans swaggering side by side. Although he didn't know the reason for this, 
Gervais felt that it was most important to fill his stomach first. So he spotted the gap and walked directly out of the woods and onto the road. At this time, most of the people on the avenue were heading towards the holy city of Hika. And Gervais also followed the flow of people slowly towards the holy city of Hika. Last night, it was too dark to see the whole of the holy city of Hika. When he saw the holy city of Hika again today, Gervais was deeply shocked. The giant city in the distance is like a giant dragon rising from the ground. Entrenched in this vast land, Gervais made a preliminary estimate and found that the wall of the holy city of Hika was at least 50 meters high. This was a very astonishing height, coupled with a length that could not be seen at the end. It was difficult for Gervais to imagine that. What kind of price does it cost to build such a city? Looking all the way, Gervais followed the crowd and soon arrived at the gate of the holy city of Hika. At this time, the place was already lined with people waiting to enter the city. Although the gate to the holy city of Hika has been opened, it is early in the morning and people entering and leaving the city are most concentrated. So congestion is inevitable. Among the people waiting in line, Gervais saw more orcs, as well as the muscular and bearded dwarf just now. The orcs were all dressed in rags, just like the one we just saw. Many of them could be seen as coolies of humans or dwarves. The free few were alone, carrying some furry beasts on their backs, as if they were preparing to sell them in the city. Although the surrounding crowd obviously kept some distance from the orcs, they did not show any fear, but only disgust and contempt. As for the dwarves, most of them were sitting on the carriage, lifting the jug from time to time to pour wine into their mouths, as if they would never get drunk. Those orcs are basically their coolies. Just as Gervais was looking around curiously, the queue finally slowly moved towards the city gate. A copper! When Gervais arrived at the city gate, a guard came to him with a jar and said impatiently, Damn! You still have to pay for entering the city? I'm afraid I can collect thousands of copper coins this morning. It's really faster than grabbing it all day long. This was the first time Gervais encountered someone who had to pay a fee to enter the city. After looking at the people in front and behind him, he took out a copper plate and threw it in. Gervais complained slightly. But in the end, he still took out a copper plate and threw it away as well. Into the money jar. Now there are at least a thousand people gathered at the city gate. And Gervais feels that this business of collecting money is more profitable than his own wine. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! Master magician can pass! Just when Gervais handed over the copper and was about to move forward, suddenly the guard shouted from behind. When Gervais looked toward the rear, he saw a luxurious carriage slowly coming from behind. While the guard responsible for guarding the door quickly dispersed the crowd behind and made way for a path. The carriage did not stop when it passed the city gate and entered the city unimpeded. Master Magician is so majestic. You don't have to pay to enter the city. It would be great if I could enter the city without paying. From now on, I will travel throughout the entire alliance. Don't look at your own appearance. There is no certified magician who is not a big shot. Let's go quickly. Sell the fur of this gray wolf early today. And we can live happily for a few more days. The two people in front of Gervais saw the scene their eyes full of envy. When Gervais heard their conversation, he couldn't help but look at the two of them. They were both low-level bronze knights. But now they were envious of the magician who could enter the city for free. Gervais really didn't know what to say. After the magician walked away, Calm returned to the city gate again, and Gervais also entered the city directly. At this time, the city was crowded with people, and it was even more lively than at the city gate. Gervais first randomly found a stall on the roadside and ate two big cakes to fill his stomach, and then started walking around the city. If he wanted to go back, he needed to figure out where he was. To figure out his situation, Gervais thought there were two ways, either buy a map or go to the tavern to inquire. In addition, he also needs to find a way to get some money. Otherwise he may be hungry in a few days. Prices here are much higher than in Eurasia, where a piece of black bread can fill you up for three meals. Here, two copper coins could only buy one small cake and Gervais ate two to fill his stomach. However, because the taste was really not good, Gervais stopped eating after temporarily filling his stomach. As he walked along, Gervais looked at the many shops on both sides and wanted to see if there was any store that sold maps. However, after walking two streets, he found nothing. Tavern? Just when Gervais was about to continue wandering aimlessly, he suddenly saw a tavern in front of him. After seeing the tavern, Gervais's eyes lit up. If you want to understand this place, Apart from maps and other objects, the tavern is probably the best place. So Gervais stopped immediately, turned around and walked into the nearby tavern. Chapter 507 Mercenary Union 
The Sunset Forest seems to be uneasy recently. I heard that many forces are rushing there. Do you know what's going on? Don't you know yet? I heard that an incredible treasure was found in the Sunset Forest. Many people have already rushed there. If I weren't on a mission right now, I would be ready to take a look. What treasure? Real or fake? Of course it's true. Both Maple Leaf Holy City and Tulip Holy City have set manpower. You said how could these big forces go without treasure? The land of God's fall is about to open. Many holy cities are recruiting warriors. Which holy city do you think is better to join? I think it's better to join the holy city of Lima. They are closest to the entrance to the land of God's fall. And they will definitely be able to occupy a good position when the time comes. What's the use of occupying a good position? The most important thing is the sacred tree. Although it was morning, when Gervais entered the tavern, he found that there were already many people sitting inside. Most of these people were armed with swords and weapons and were all titled knights. Gervais found a seat in a corner and sat down, then listened. Although he has heard a lot of news, he doesn't know much about this world. So he has always been confused. Sir, what wine do you need? Not long after Gervais sat down, a waitress with scantily clad clothes and heavy makeup came to Gervais. Have a drink of your favorite. Gervais didn't want to drink early in the morning. But if he didn't drink in the tavern, he would probably be kicked out by the owner of the tavern later. So Gervais gave a casual order. Okay, sir. When the waitress saw that Gervais was young and handsome, she puffed out her chest before leaving and gave Gervais a wink. She almost made Gervais vomit out the two pancakes he had eaten in the morning. Although the waitress was not ugly, she was not beautiful at all. She was old enough to be Gervais's aunt, which Gervais could not bear. Sir, our signature rum. Soon, the waitress came back and brought a large wooden cup from the tray. How much? Sir, five coppers. The waitress ogled again. Snap. Gervais shifted his gaze and directly placed ten copper plates on the table. Do you know where I can find maps for sale in the city? Although he wasn't sure if there was any concept of maps being sold here, Gervais still wanted to ask. It was better than wandering around on his own. Map? We have it in the tavern. Why? Is this your first time to the holy city of Hika? Sir? Seeing the ten coins on the table, the waitress's smile became even more charming squeezing out all those wrinkles. How many of them? Show them to me. It was really hard to find anywhere, and it took no effort to get it. Gervais didn't expect that the tavern would sell maps, so he immediately replied to the waitress. Sir, what kind of map do you want? We have two types of maps here. One is the map around the holy city of Hika, and the other is the map of the entire holy alliance. As for the price, the first type costs 30 copper coins, and the second type costs two silver coins. Although Gervais was dressed a little strangely, only wearing an undershirt, Gervais tipped so generously. So the waiter naturally thought he was a rich man. So he asked Gervais coquettishly. The second one. Gervais naturally chose the second option without even thinking about it. Although I will be clearing my pocket after buying it. It is better than turning a blind eye to this place. Soon the waitress came back again. And this time, she brought an animal skin. Sir, you need to pay before you can watch it. The waitress put the animal skin map in her hand and reminded her delicately. Gervais suddenly felt goosebumps all over the floor, and quickly placed the two silver coins he had prepared on the table. Sir, you are such a generous man. Do you have any other needs? Such as, after taking away the two silver coins on the table and placing the animal skin map on the table, the waitress deliberately bent down to reveal the terrifying deep trench. If you want to find a job in the city, where should you find it? The kind that pays quickly, Gervais asked ignoring the waitress's hint and resisting the urge to turn away. After buying this map, he only had three or five coppers left in his pocket. If he didn't make some money, he would probably be hungry for dinner. So he wanted to find out where he could make quick money. The guests in this tavern carried weapons with them and were obviously not good people. So Gervais felt that the waiter should also know some ways to make money. Do you want money quickly? Although she was a little disappointed that the handsome guy in front of her ignored her hint. Handsome guys always have privileges and are generous with their actions. The waitress replied cheerfully. The mercenary union. Go there to pick up the mission. The fastest way to get money. But, as she said that, the waitress looked at Gervais for a few times. She came in without a weapon. He was handsome. But with the appearance of a certain young master, he probably couldn't earn the kind of money that would lick blood with a knife. As soon as Gervais heard about the mercenary union, he knew where it was and what the waitress wanted to say later. So he quickly asked for the address of the mercenary union. 
and then asked the waiter to leave. Mercenary Guild. This is indeed an authentic fantasy world. No wonder the church people say that people in Eurasia are country bumpkins. Eurasia is indeed a countryside. There are no such things over there. Knowing the existence of the mercenary union, Gervais has already planned to go around later. Although his fighting spirit has not recovered yet, he still has magic. So it shouldn't be a problem to take on some simple tasks to make some money first. Moreover, his energy has recovered to some extent. And I believe he will be able to use fighting energy again in a few days. By then, if you make some more money, you can prepare to return to Eurasia. Thinking about it, Gervais opened the Holy Alliance map that he bought for two silver coins. When Gervais opened it, he couldn't help but frown. This map is really simple. Very similar to the simple maps in previous games, with dark yellow leather and abstract painting style. Apart from mountains, forests, rivers, and cities, there are only one small dot mark. Gervais couldn't help but twitch at the corners of his mouth. After a while, the expectations were indeed too high. But after buying it all, Gervais couldn't help but dislike it. It's not easy to have such a map. Soon, Gervais found the location of the holy city of Hika from the dense map. However, the holy city of Hika is actually in the interior of the holy continent. This is a bit troublesome. If Gervais wants to return to Eurasia, he will definitely need to go to sea by boat. But the place he is currently in is inland, which means that he has to find a way to get to the coast first. Gervais didn't know exactly how wide the sacred continent was. But considering that the majestic holy city of Hika only had one point on the map, he could guess how far it would take to get to the coast from here. Alas! One mistake will lead to eternal hatred. I was tricked by the new temple and caused me so much trouble. After continuing to look at it for a while, Gervais reluctantly put away the map. Now that he knew where he was, Gervais's next task was to make money. Whether traveling to coastal areas or providing your own food, clothing, housing and transportation. You need money. After putting away the map, Gervais saw the full glass of rum and reached out to pick it up. He only ate two flatbreads in the morning and didn't drink even a drop of water. He was indeed a little thirsty now. Gudong. Puff. It actually tastes sour. And it's completely different from the rum on earth. As soon as the rum entered his mouth, Gervais spurted it out. He was completely fooled by the confusing name of the wine. From then on, Gervais stopped drinking and stood up directly with the map, preparing to go to the mercenary union to find work. Chapter 508 Finding Wealth in Danger The mercenary union was not difficult to find because it was built very grandly. After leaving the tavern and crossing two streets, Gervais quickly found the mercenary union on the main road of the holy city of Hika. Standing at the gate of the mercenary union, Gervais truly felt the prosperity of this continent. Gervais estimated that the size of this holy city of Hika was at least 10 times larger than Alice's Winterfell, with a population of at least 1 million. Without stopping at the door, Gervais followed the crowd directly into the Mercenary Union. The hall of the Mercenary Union is very spacious. Although there are many people inside, it does not feel crowded. Gervais looked around the hall. Instead of approaching the Mercenary Union staff, he went to a wall on the left first, because there were many people surrounding the wall at this time and Gervais could see that the wall was covered with dense messages. If he guessed correctly, you need to check here first if you want to receive the mission. Soon, Gervais walked to the recruitment information board. We are in urgent need of ten night orchids. More than two years old. The purchase price is one silver coin per plant. The commission will increase depending on the year. The caravan is in urgent need of ten mercenaries. The escort destination is Kazair City. The commission is twenty silver coins. We urgently need a mercenary to deliver a message to Luoka City. The commission is five silver coins. As Gervais read each item, he suddenly became convinced that he no longer had to worry about dinner. It seems that it is quite easy to make money in this holy continent. You can earn a few months worth of living expenses by doing just one of these many tasks. Gervais was originally worried that there would be few suitable jobs here. But now it seems that he is overthinking it. Finding a job here is much easier than finding a job in his previous life. Gervais carefully memorized the two tasks, both of which were escorting caravans, and the commissions were worth dozens of silver coins. Although there will be certain dangers in this, it is not a problem for Gervais at all. Even if there is any big danger in the sale of silver coins, Gervais feels that it is quite in line with his own wishes. Gervais took out maps to confirm the destinations of these two escort missions, and they were all heading towards the coast. Although this was only a small distance compared to the long route on the map, Gervais thought, he would use this method to get to the coast in the future. You can make money without worrying about getting lost. After confirming the task, 
Gervais did not go to the counter in the lobby immediately, but stood carefully and observed. Soon Gervais saw a man dressed as a mercenary walking towards the counter after reading the information column. Gervais immediately followed the man to the counter. Gervais didn't know how to claim the mission, so he needed to follow the man to see what procedures he needed to go through. The man walked up to the counter and said a few words to the service staff at the counter. Then the service staff took out a form and filled it out for him. After the man filled out the form, the staff handed him an envelope, and the process went smoothly without any delay. Then, the man walked out of the mercenary union with a smile. Oh, it seems quite simple. Seeing this, Gervais didn't waste any time and immediately walked to the counter along the gap. Sir, how may I serve you? The staff member looked at Gervais and then asked Gervais politely. I want to take on the mission. Afterwards, Gervais stated the first choice task he wanted to take on and waited for the next process. Okay, sir, do you have your badge? After listening to Gervais's words, the staff nodded and asked Gervais. Huh? Badge? Gervais' mouth twitched. He had just been standing behind the man, so he didn't see the badge on the man's chest. Sir, if you haven't been certified as a mercenary yet, you can go to the lobby on the second floor to be certified. Then come here to receive the mission. Apparently the staff often encountered people like Gervais and took the initiative to tell Gervais a solution. Okay, thank you. Gervais stood up in embarrassment. It turns out that no matter which world he is in, the process of first applying for a certificate and then starting work is the same. But what Gervais doesn't know is that not only does this world also require you to apply for a certificate before starting work, but you also need to pay for the certificate. Sir, you need to pay a deposit of one gold coin to be certified as a junior mercenary to ensure that you will not cause losses to your employer after claiming the mission. A few minutes later, Gervais walked back to the lobby on the first floor from the second floor with a look of despair. His mercenary career ended before it even started because he couldn't afford the deposit of one gold coin to be certified as a mercenary. Although mercenaries have no threshold for strength and do not need proof of identity, they do need gold coins as a deposit. After paying this deposit, you can become a junior mercenary. At that time, you can receive tasks worth less than one gold coin from any mercenary union within the Holy Alliance. If the failure of the task causes losses to the employer during the execution of the task, the deposit of one gold coin will be used to compensate the employer. I estimate that I am the most miserable king in history. If Alice and Caroline knew about it, they would probably laugh out loud. Gervais walked slowly towards the gate of the mercenary union. Since there was no way to make money here, Gervais could only use his backup method. That's robbery. Of course, Gervais is not going to rob ordinary people, but is going to find some thieves or bullies to take advantage of them. Wherever there are people, there are rivers and lakes. This holy city of Hiko with a population of one million is naturally indispensable for such people and Gervais will not be lenient when snatching them away. Originally, he thought it was too embarrassing to rob those thieves. So he came to the mercenary union as his first choice. Now it seems that he can only lower his requirements. Wow. It's a quota for the Alliance College of Auditors. Oh my god. Did I see it wrong? Yes. Who posted this recruitment notice? Is it a lie? The reward is actually a quota for auditors. Not to mention the Alliance College of Higher Education. Even a mid-level college is an incredible reward. Yes. Look. It says recruiting magicians. But why didn't he recruit magicians to the magicians union? Instead, he came to the mercenary union. How could those noble magicians come to the mercenary union? Hey. Staff. Do you think this recruitment notice is fake? Just when Gervais was about to leave the mercenary union, he heard a sudden noise in the hall. When he heard the words magician, he stopped immediately and couldn't help but move towards the crowd. Look, this recruitment notice is true. It was sent by Beige, the butler of second young master Lucky. If there are any magicians among you, you can go to the gate of the city lord's mansion now to find the guards on duty and tell them clearly about the recruitment. After this happens, they will take you to see Butler Bog. At this time, a staff member informed everyone of the authenticity of the recruitment notice. Are you kidding? If we were magicians, we would still come here to pick up the mission we would have gone to enjoy the blessings long ago. Many mercenaries laughed in low voices after hearing the staff's words. It was obvious that all those magicians were noble beings, so it was naturally impossible for them to appear here. Ahem. Listen to me. Butler Bag said that they are recruiting magicians and they don't care about their identity. Do you understand? The staff member looked at everyone meaningfully. After a pause, he continued, 
You only have one chance. This recruitment task will be invalid until tomorrow evening. This is the quota for auditors of the College of Higher Education. If you get the college's certificate by then, you can go to the Magician's Association or the Knight's Association for certification. Even if you can't use this quota yourself, you can still resell it when the time comes. As for the price, you should have heard of it. After speaking, the staff member said no more. He believed that he had said enough. Wow. Sure enough. After he finished speaking, the noise below suddenly became louder. Everyone understood what the staff member meant. He doesn't care about his identity, which means that even a wild mage can take on this recruitment task. This is extremely rare. And it also explains why recruitment information for magicians appears in the mercenary union. In addition, another focus of discussion is of course the number of auditors. 5,000 gold coins? Gervis's eyes lit up. Although he heard everything in a fog most of the time, there was one thing he heard clearly. That is, if this quota is sold, it will be worth at least 5,000 gold coins. And there are still a lot of people buying it. So there is no need to worry about no one wanting it. Wealth is gained through danger. Let's do it. After silently reciting the number of gold coins, Gervais felt fierce and walked out of the door of the mercenary union. Naturally, he doesn't know the difference between wild mages and certified mages in this world. He was so solemn just now because he ran out of the city lord's mansion last night after all the hard work. And now he had to take the initiative to run back. Chapter 509 Entering the City Lord's Mansion Again At the gate of the majestic city lord's mansion, compared to other bustling streets in Hika Holy City, this place seems much quieter and more empty. Many passers-by pass by and lean far away to the other end. At the same time, their footsteps became hurried, fearing that their lives would be in danger if they stayed for a moment longer. At this time, Gervais was wearing a brown linen gown and came to the city lord's palace. Looking particularly dazzling, the undershirt he just wore belonged to the servants of the city lord's mansion. So naturally he didn't dare to wear it arrogantly to the city lord's mansion. So Gervais took a linen gown with him on the road. Although it was a little worn, he had washed it and dried it outside. Five copper plates. As soon as Gervais approached the gate of the city lord's mansion, several guards on duty looked over with unkind eyes. What are you doing? This is the city lord's mansion. You guys, please leave quickly. One of the guards saw Gervais approaching in a shabby linen gown and couldn't help but yelled. I'm a magician. Clang. Just after Gervais finished speaking, several guards were shocked and immediately pulled out the long sword from their waists. Because Gervais did not look like a certified magician no matter how he looked, but instead belonged to a wild mage. More likely, it was Butler Bag who posted a message recruiting magicians in the mercenary union. So I came here. Gervais didn't know that all unlicensed magicians in this continent were collectively called wild mages, and that they would also go to jail. When he saw these guards, he was nervous and quickly told them his purpose. Put the sword away! At this moment, a guard who looked like a captain walked out of the city gate. The captain asked the guards to put away their swords. The ordinary guards did not know about Butler Bag's recruitment of magicians. But he, the captain, received the explanation. So after hearing that Gervais was a magician, he walked out immediately. Sir, you are truly a magician. The captain came to Gervais and looked at Gervais for a while. When he saw the shabby linen robe on Gervais, he felt a little unbelievable. Not even a wild mage would live such a miserable life. In fact, most wild mages are quite rich. Because if you don't have money, how can you learn to read? And if you don't have money, how can you have time to study magic? Just buying magic books through the black market costs a lot of money. And ordinary people simply cannot afford it. Yes. Gervais looked at the captain without fear and nodded. Okay. Then please come in and sit down. I will inform Butler Bog now. The guard captain knew that Master Lucky was eager to recruit magicians in the past two days. So after confirming that Gervais was not here to cause trouble, he quickly invited Gervais in and then reported to Butler Bag. Boom. That bastard of ear. Is it great to have three trainee magicians? If he hadn't been mean and used his father's connections, I could have recruited even junior magicians. Bastard. Bastard. At this time, Lucky was furious in his manner again. Early this morning, he ran to the reception area to find Adela to show his courtesy. Everything was normal at first. But when the three duels arrived, they changed the topic to the Sunset Forest. The duels all swore that the subordinates they brought would definitely ensure that the treasure hunting trip went smoothly. After making the guarantee, a few people naturally started to crowd around Lucky again. As the second young master of the holy city of Hika, 
Lachi does not lack title knights. But he lacks magicians. Because when he shamelessly asked to join, he beat his chest loudly and said that he would definitely recruit more magicians. The division came to escort us. But now there are less than two days before the departure date. And he has not even recruited a trainee magician. Let alone a junior magician. Devere and others began to provoke in front of Adela. Saying that Lucky should not go there. After all, there might be danger there. Lucky would not be protected by a magician. So he might be a burden. Although Adela vetoed it in the end. Even though Adela did not listen to Devere's instigation. Lucky was still furious. Bag! I asked you to change the recruitment reward last night. Did you go and do it? It was almost noon. But there was still no trace of the magician. Lucky was very anxious. Master! I have sent people to replace them this morning. I have even sent people to the mercenary union and night union to post recruitment information. Two days ago, the recruitment information was only posted on the magician guild. Now they have made up their mind that even wild mages can be recruited. So they naturally cast a wide net. Ask the guards at the city gate to keep an eye on me. If anyone comes to answer the call, let me know as soon as possible. After hearing that the recruitment notice had been posted to the mercenary union, Lachi's expression softened a little. Yes, master. Beige responded quickly. Boom, boom, boom. Master, butler Bog. At this moment, there was a knock on the door of the hall, and Bug frowned. Someone knocked on the door at this time. It would be bad if Lucky was angered. As a housekeeper, he knew best that his young master was a standard wealthy young master with a weird temper and difficult to get in touch with. What's up? Bug quickly walked to the door and whispered to the servant who knocked on the door. Master Butler, a guard captain came to report that there was a young man claiming to be a magician at the gate of the city to answer the call. Oh, then let him bring people over. Butler Bag's eyes lit up. If no magician came, Master Lucky would probably demolish the entire manor. Butler Bog, the captain said that the magician is probably a wild mage. The servant added, It's okay. Let him bring him here right away. Beige didn't care whether he was wild or not. He just hoped that this man was really a magician and could release magic. If you just come to fish in troubled waters, you will probably end up in a miserable place. After the servant went out to inform the captain, Bug quickly returned to Lucky and happily told Lucky about the magician's arrival. Your Majesty the Magician, come with me now. Butler Bag asked me to take you there. The captain of the guard came back from Lucky's manor. Knowing that this young man might be put into great use by Master Lucky, his tone became much more polite than before. Okay. Thank you. Gervais nodded and followed the guard captain and began to walk towards the city lord's palace. Although I passed by this place last night, when I saw the city lord's mansion during the day, I felt it was even more magnificent. Every building and every garden reflected the craftsmanship. When I return to Eurasia, I will build a palace like this. Gervais couldn't help but feel envious. Living in this environment was much more comfortable than the castle. Soon, the guard captain took Gervais to the manor belonging to Lucky. The manor occupies a very large area. Gervais estimated that it should be no less than 10 football fields. However, Gervais's focus at this time was not on the gorgeous manor, but on a big tree in the distance. At this time, Gervais saw the big glowing tree last night again. According to Gervais's visual inspection, the big tree was at least a 100 meters high, and the tree branches were dense. Under the sunlight, it still gave off a faint green light, and it was more conspicuous than at night. This is awesome! Gervais murmured in his heart. Gervais still thinks that plants that can glow at night are acceptable. After all, not to mention that this is a different world. Even the earth in the previous life has them. For example, China's lantern tree and firefly mushrooms both glow at night. But the big tree in the distance can shine even during the day. But it is more obvious than at night. Which is a bit of a shock to the three views. In addition, Gervais could also see dots of green light rising among the branches and leaves of the big tree. Or a liquid? The more Gervais looked at it, the more familiar the green light looked. And suddenly the bottle of spiritual energy liquid he owned that could help the silver knight break through and become the golden knight rang out. Ha ha! Your Excellency! Isn't it spectacular? Although the sacred tree in our holy city of Hika cannot be compared with those big cities in the Sky City, it can still be ranked in the middle of the Holy Alliance. Seeing Gervais looking at the sacred tree in the distance with his eyes in amazement, the guard captain said to Gervais proudly. After saying that, the guard captain saw a butler bag waiting in front. So he whispered to Gervais, Your Majesty the Magician, don't look away now. Butler bag is already waiting for us. 
Let's get there quickly. Gervais was still thinking about his words. According to the meaning of the guard captain's words, every holy city in the Holy Alliance has such a strange tree. After hearing his reminder, Gervais put his thoughts away and quickly walked forward. Chapter 510 Rich and Wealthy Soon, Gervais followed the guard captain to the front of butler bag. This butler was in his forties, with gorgeous and capable clothes, and a fighting spirit about him. He turned out to be a golden knight. If Gervais hadn't known his identity, Gervais would have thought he was a noble. Butler Beige, this is the magician who has come to answer the call. The captain of the guard said respectfully. Well, you go ahead. Bag nodded and dismissed the guard captain, then raised his eyes and began to look at Gervais, and said after a moment, Your Majesty the Magician. What is your name? Harry Potter. Gervais did not use his real name. He didn't know if the new temple would still cause trouble for him. So it was better to use a fake name to be safer. It turns out to be Mr. Harry. Please come inside. Master Lucky is already waiting for you. After learning Gervais's name, Bag nodded and didn't ask any more questions. Lucky would naturally ask in person later. A moment later, Gervais was taken to the magnificent small building of the manor. Many of the decorations and furnishings inside were unprecedented to Gervais. For example, there are black pearls the size of watermelons and giant claw specimens of unknown creatures that are taller than Gervais. Without giving Gervais a chance to take a closer look, Bagger quickly led Gervais to the hall where Lachi was. Master, the summon magician has arrived. He said his name is Harry Potter. Arriving in the hall, Lucky no longer had the previous anger, with a faint smile on his face, and was drinking rum. Your name is Harry. You have already seen my recruitment. So show me if you have what it takes to get this reward? Lucky didn't mean to beat around the bush. He urgently needed a magician who could do it. Although Gervais's clothes were a little ragged, he didn't dislike it. Okay, Master Lucky. Of course, Gervais knew that this reward would not be easy to obtain, and he had to show his true ability to gain their recognition. After nodding, Gervais directly began to cast spells. Oh, fire element wandering between heaven and earth. Please listen to my call. In fact, in the past, Gervais did not need to chant at all to release the fireball technique. But in his previous battles with the church, he saw that those magicians needed to chant to release it. To be on the safe side, Gervais recited the fireball spell. Boom! As Gervais chanted, just a moment later, a fireball the size of a basin appeared on his palm. Huh? So fast? The fireball is still so big! When they saw the fireball suspended above Gervais's palm, Lucky and Bag both looked at each other in surprise. Gervais' spell casting speed was completely comparable to those geniuses. Generally speaking, it takes at least three seconds for a trainee magician to release magic, because they don't have much magic power in their bodies at this stage. And their mental power is not high. Therefore, when casting spells and chanting, the speed will be slowed down, so that chanting can be used to successfully communicate the magic power between heaven and earth and complete the spell casting. Naturally, the two of them didn't know that Gervis's singing was not to communicate magic power, but to deliberately conceal the differences between himself and other magicians. If he wanted to unleash the fireball technique instantly, he could do it. Harry, I wonder how many fireballs like this you can release at one time. Gervais's casting speed and the size of the fireball proved Gervais's strength. So Lucky's expression became more kind. About seven. If all the magic power is really used up, it can be released. Gervais answered truthfully. Since he practiced basic meditation, although he has not yet been promoted to a junior magician, his magic power has more than doubled than before. Very good. It seems that Harry is only one step away from being promoted to a junior magician. Harry, besides Fireball, do you know any other fire magic? Master Lucky, I have only learned the Fireball technique. Gervais blinked and did not reveal that he knew the wood healing technique. Judging from Lucky's reaction, Gervais has been able to confirm that Lucky is still very satisfied with his performance. So he feels there is no need to continue to reveal his background. Everything that is beautiful in the forest will be destroyed by the wind. I am not familiar with the place here. So keeping a low profile and being a talented person is the right way. Um. Lucky nodded and said nothing more. But said to Butler Bagger. Bag. Take Harry to take care of himself. I will take Harry to the reception area in half an hour. Yes. Master. Bug bowed respectfully in response. Then turned his head and said to Gervais. Sir Harry. Please come with me. Gervais then dispelled the fireball in his hand and followed Baggy out of the hall. He is indeed very wealthy. 
half an hour later. Gervais came to the manor hall again, wearing a brand new black magician's robe and holding a magician's staff. Of course, in addition to the superficial things, there are actually a lot of interesting things under Gervais's robe. When Gervais finished washing and put on the magician's robe, Bug immediately delivered a tray. There are three low-level magic recovery potions in this tray, which can restore the magician's magic power in a short time. A magician's staff, although it was only the lowest level, but looking at the genuine fiery red Warcraft crystal on it, Gervais knew that even the lowest level staff was worth a lot of money. In addition, there is a basic fire magic manual, which Gervais has opened and read. It is all magic that a trainee magician can learn. For example, firewall, lighting, fire, and combustion supporting spells. Although these magics are not very powerful at first glance, they are more practical and can bring a lot of convenience to Gervais. After all, if you need lighting, you can't just hold a big fireball in your hand, which will consume a lot of magic power. Harry, from now on, you will follow me until the mission is over. I will directly give you the place as an auditor at the College of Higher Education. Lucky was also very happy to see Gervais suddenly look presentable after putting on a magician's robe. In this way, bringing Gervais over to compare with Devere and the others will definitely get him back into the game. As for the magician's magic weapons and recovery potions allocated to Gervais, they were nothing to him. They were the lowest level objects. What he needed was to show his excellence in front of Adela. Okay, Master Lucky. Gervais responded in a neither humble nor condescending tone. Very well. Let's go. Let's go to the welcome area now. Lucky couldn't wait any longer. He had been ridiculed by Devere and the others for so long. Now that he had recruited a magician, he naturally wanted to show off. After saying that, Lucky stood up directly and led Gervais toward the reception area. Soon, Lucky brought Gervais to the small building where Adela was, with a faint look of excitement on his face. Dever despicably made those magicians refuse to accept his recruitment. And now that he has recruited them, he will just slap him in the face. When Lachi was excited, Gervais, who was following behind, couldn't help but blink at this beautiful little building. He naturally remembered this place. It was here that he became a gentleman on the bridge and enjoyed the beautiful scenery that he had never seen before. Thinking of the beautiful woman whose appearance was similar to Alice's, Gervais moved his shoulders unconsciously. If he hadn't had the healing power, his shoulders might still be scorched black now. Master, Master, Lucky did not stop at the door of the small building, but walked directly into the small building amidst the greetings of the servants. When Gervais followed Lucky to the inside of the small building, his eyes were quickly attracted by a beautiful woman, the elegant and refined Adela. At this time, Adela was wearing a white floral dress, with her brown hair tied behind her head, and decorated with many crystal clear accessories. The most eye-catching thing is her neck as white as snow, because there is a delicate sapphire blue necklace hanging on the neck. With this necklace as a foil, this aristocratic lady instantly becomes elegant and noble. Chapter 511 The Function of the Holy Tree Lucky walked into the hall with a cheerful face, took Gervais directly to the sofa where Adela and others were sitting, and directly chose an empty sofa and sat down. Adela, I recruited a magician today. Later, Lachi introduced Gervais to Adela like a treasure. In fact, there was no need for Locky to introduce him. When Gervais followed Locky into the hall, everyone already knew his identity, wearing a magician's robe and holding a staff. Except for magicians, no one who is crazy would wear such a dress. Wild mages will be put in jail, and the magician association doesn't care whether you are pretending to be or not. Of course, now that Locky is covering him, Gervais doesn't have to worry about the people from the magician's association. The Magician's Association will still give these big forces a little face. However, because Gervais's appearance was really good, everyone still took a look at Gervais. Adela also glanced at Gervais. But after taking a look, she frowned slightly. Because she found that this wild mage was very rude and looked at her directly. And the man's eyes gave her a strange feeling. As if she had seen him before. Adela frowned slightly and looked at Gervais again. After making sure that she had not seen this person, she looked back and turned her face slightly away from Gervais. Of course, Gervais also saw Adela's slight frown and immediately withdrew his gaze. He didn't want this rich lady to recognize him. Lachi, I didn't expect you to recruit a magician. But why doesn't he have a badge on him? He can't be a wild mage. Right. A cold light flashed in Dever's eyes when he looked at Gervais. But he quickly covered it up. And then began to squeeze Lackey. Lachi-san, 
Let me tell you. Although wild mages can also do magic, their abilities are not that great. Why don't you come to me if you can't recruit magicians? We are all classmates. As long as you say something, I will definitely help you find some magicians. It's better than wild mages. Davere. Although Harry is a wild mage, his strength may not be worse than the three trainee magicians you brought. I have always been willing to employ people in short supply rather than in excess. After hearing what Dever said, Lucky immediately retorted. He had already seen what Gervais was capable of. And it would not be an exaggeration to say that he was a genius for being able to teach himself to this point. He now wanted Gervais to show off his skills and slap Dwyer in the face again. However, Adela was present at this time. And Lucky wanted to pretend to be more stable. So he hoped that Dwyer would take the initiative to speak out. So that even if they competed, he would not appear to be aggressive. Ha ha! Lucky! Are you drunk? Even this wild mage wants to compare with the three magicians I brought. Dever laughed heartily. He naturally did not believe that a wild mage could compete with a magician from a regular academy. One was cultivated through systematic education. And the other may have gained magic power through meditation and learned one or two spells purely by luck. There is no comparison at all. Humph. Do you want it? Okay. Don't talk anymore. Several people were quarreling with each other like this again. And a hint of displeasure flashed in Adela's eyes. But her cultivation made her understand that she was not suitable to interrupt at this time. However, Xenia beside her did not hesitate and loudly interrupted the argument between Lucky and Dwyer. Classmate Lucky, didn't you say you would take us to play in the City Lord's Mansion today? Let's go now. Okay. Xenia. Lucky was just about to take over Dever's words and asked Gervais to release a fireball spell for everyone to see and make himself blush. But was interrupted by Xenia. So he could only endure this thought. Let's go. Adela. Let's go for a walk. The opportunity to get up close to the sacred tree is rare. I haven't seen the sacred tree up close yet. Seeing that Lucky agreed, Xenia happily pulled Adela up and walked out the door first. Then came Lucky and others. As for the follower Gervais, naturally no one paid attention to them. They just had to follow them quietly and... That's it. Instead, the three trainee magicians brought by Devere looked at Gervais deeply when they walked past him, their eyes full of contempt and disdain. Gervais was not afraid at all, looked at them one by one, and then walked forward on his own. At this time, Gervais finally knew that there was a difference between wild and regular magicians in the holy continent. But this doesn't mean anything. If you fall into a big fireball, the trainee magician will definitely have to kneel down. After walking out of the welcome area, the person leading the way became lucky. While leading the way, Lucky introduced some of the strange scenery in the city lord's mansion. In addition to Adela, Xania, Dwyer and others sometimes showed surprised expressions. Obviously, these scenery were not something they could see often. As for Adela, who was of noble birth, she was naturally familiar with the situation. She just kept a polite smile along the way and didn't react too much. And Gervais was also very excited at this time. Not because of the scenery he saw along the way, but because the place they were going to was the strange sacred tree he had seen several times from a distance. After walking around in the city lord's palace for about ten minutes, everyone passed through several heavily guarded areas and finally arrived less than three hundred meters away from the holy tree. Here, they could no longer see the whole view of the holy tree, because the holy tree was too tall. When they raised their heads, their heads were also obscured by the huge crown. This is the sacred tree in our holy city of Hika. It is 103 meters high, and the thickest part of the trunk reaches 18 meters. The size of the sacred tree ranks among the top 50 in the alliance. Seeing everyone's surprised expressions, Lachi's vanity was greatly satisfied. This holy tree is the foundation of his Hika family. Having such a holy tree also represents the strength of the holy city of Hika. Classmate Lackey, if you practice here, how much can your cultivation speed increase? It was obviously the first time for Xenia to see the sacred tree so close. She was very excited at this time and asked Lucky, who was making an introduction. Five times. Wow. It can increase the cultivation speed by five times. It's amazing. If I can practice in a place like this every day, it will definitely not be a problem to become a great magician in the future. Xenia let out an exclamation. And even the Daveras, who had been competing with Lucky, couldn't help but express their yearning. Ha ha. Although I can't satisfy your desire to practice here every day, you can try to practice now and experience the feeling of practicing five times faster. After receiving Xenia's praise, Lucky was greatly satisfied. He spoke generously to several people 
and at the same time looked at Adela from time to time, hoping that Adela would react. But it was obvious that Adela was not from an ordinary class, like Xenia. And she did not show any strange expression. Okay, then I'll give it a try. Xenia nodded happily, then sat cross-legged on the lawn. Chapter 512 Seed It turns out those colorful lights streaking across the sky are elves. Some of them are obviously much bigger than the elves. They are probably big elves. Gervais finally figured out what those colorful lights he saw that night were rising and falling in the dark night. They are the big and small elves transformed from the elf bugs. But Gervais is still not sure what the relationship between those big and small elves is and this big tree. Just when Gervais was thinking, he happened to hear Lucky saying that practicing here can increase the speed of practice by five times. Gervais was also shocked. This must be amazing. This is comparable to one-third of the speed of his own red kiwi fruit. And this is permanent. Gervais looked at everyone for a few times. Several others were already sitting cross-legged on the grass with their eyes closed and began to experience the five times faster cultivation speed. Adela also sat elegantly on the grass. But she did not practice. Obviously, she did not find this experience novel. On the other hand, the corners of Dever's mouth were twitching. He also wanted to experience it by crossing his legs and closing his eyes. He had never experienced practicing at five times speed before. But looking at Lucky's playful eyes, he finally resisted. It was also the first time for Gervais to encounter such a sacred tree. He also wanted to experience what it felt like to see if it had the same effect as the red kiwi fruit. So he immediately did it cross-legged. Not bad. When Gervais sat down cross-legged and closed his eyes and began to meditate, he immediately felt that the speed of absorbing magic was much faster. And the jerky and slow feeling during meditation was significantly reduced than before. Gervais has determined that this feeling is exactly the same as after eating a red kiwi fruit. But the red kiwi fruit can accelerate the cultivation speed 15 times while this holy tree only accelerates it five times. But this holy tree is permanent, which is a bit scary. Gervais sighed slightly in his heart. Um, just when Gervais quit the meditation and was about to check himself, he suddenly found that his energy seemed to have recovered significantly. No way. This holy tree can not only speed up cultivation, but also speed up the recovery of injuries? Gervais was startled, and immediately opened his eyes, and began to try to activate his fighting spirit. Soon, he discovered a strange thing. Although he could not influence the movement of Dochi yet, he could guide some green light spots into his chi veins. These green points of light are the same ones that surround the leaves of the sacred branches. When the green light spots enter the chi meridians, they will soon attach to the cracked chi meridians, then merge into the chi meridians and disappear. The cracks on the chi meridians actually become slightly smaller. Holy shit! After discovering this change, Gervais almost couldn't help but swear. Gervais opened his eyes and looked at the holy tree in front of him. At this time, Gervais was really shocked by the heaven-defying effect of this holy tree. Not only Gervais was shocked, Xania and others were also shocked after experiencing it. And their eyes looking at the sacred tree became brighter. Classmate Lackey, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to experience the magic of the sacred tree. Although Xania is also a student at Alliance High School and her family is considered to be upper class. Her father is not a city lord. So she is naturally very grateful to Lucky for giving them this opportunity to experience. The holy tree is the foundation of every holy city. And naturally it will not be easily accessible to outsiders. This opportunity is very rare for Xenia and others. Classmate Xenia, you're welcome. We are all classmates. Today he finally felt proud in front of Adela. Lucky looked radiant and looked at the ashen-faced Dever with contempt from time to time. Devere's father is a magister, the vice president of the Magician's Association and a very important figure in the Holy Alliance. However, Dwyer's father did not have a city of his own, nor did he have a holy tree. So although Dwyer has come into contact with the holy tree once or twice, it belongs to others after all, and cannot be shown off like Lucky. Classmate Lucky, I heard that the holy tree is not only powerful in the holy continent, but is also the key to our human survival in the land of God's fall? Xenia had a hundred thousand reasons in her mind, and she immediately took the opportunity to ask. The people present did not dislike her talking too much. One party wanted to know more about the holy tree and the land of God's fall. But the other party wanted to show his excellence in front of Adela. So both parties got what they needed. That's right. Classmate Xenia, the spiritual energy riot in the land of God's fall is uncontrollable. Whether it is our title knight or the magician who enters there, if his fighting spirit or magic power is consumed, unless he keeps using potions to recover, he cannot rely on practice and meditation to recover. 
And as long as you have the holy tree, the holy tree can change the surrounding environment and calm the riots of spiritual energy. So if you want to establish a stronghold in the land of God's fall, you must have the holy tree. And the more powerful the holy tree is, the wider the area it can cover. The land of God's fall will be opened again in a few months. At that time, my father will take the holy tree to the land of God's fall to occupy a rich land. Lucky told everything he knew without hesitation. In fact, these were not secrets. It was just that they were still young. So the academy did not start teaching this knowledge. This knowledge would be taught to them just before they graduated. Teach them. The land of God's fall changes every thousand years. This is known from ancient books. Every time it reaches the millennium node, the passage to the land of God's fall will automatically close and will only be reopened after five years. After it is reopened, the terrain inside will change. So even if humans built majestic cities inside it in the past, once the millennium comes, the land of the gods will once again become a land without owners. At this time, the big forces that own the holy tree will be able to take advantage of it and start to rely on the holy tree to enclose the land and build strongholds in cities. Of course, in addition to humans, other races will also occupy a place in the land of the gods. Because the land of the gods is a treasure. Whether it is the treasures in the ruins or the various elixirs and minerals naturally produced, they are countless times richer than those in the holy continent. The rapid development of the holy continent over the past 200 years is entirely due to the land of God's fall. I envy you. Lucky San, Zania said. In fact, besides Zania, the other three men and women who had just tried practicing also showed envy. Ha ha. Classmate Zania, don't envy me. Didn't I promise you back then that as long as you come to my holy city of Hika, I will give you a chance to pray to the holy tree. Perhaps you can actually get the seeds of the holy tree by then. Is it really okay? Everyone in the venue looked at Lucky with expectation. Even Devere's expression became expectant this time. I am afraid that the only one present who could remain calm was Adela. The Rich Lady. Chapter 513, The Holy Tree's Recognition. Since the holy tree is a tree, it naturally has seeds. However, the holy tree has a spirit, and its seeds will not fall for no reason and be picked up by others. Even the person who signs a contract with him can only get one seed every three to five years. Others can only sincerely pray to it. If the holy tree recognizes someone, it will send its own seeds. Although obtaining the seed does not mean that a holy tree will be cultivated. It does mean that there is an opportunity to obtain the holy tree. Owning the holy tree means that you can open up new territory in the land of God's fall. So even a 1 in 10,000 chance is extremely valuable to people. Usually the holy city uses this method to win over its masters and win people's hearts. In fact, this is similar to the enfeoffment system in Eurasia. Lachi San, thank you so much for your generosity. Zania's eyes sparkled, and her face was filled with excitement that could not be concealed. Even Devere and the others looked forward to it. This opportunity was really rare. In order to earn gold coins, some weaker holy cities will also sell such blessing opportunities. In this way, the amount required to win the lottery can reach tens of thousands of gold coins each time. Now Lucky has given a few people a chance for free, which can be said to be extremely heroic. In fact, the reason why Adela lives in the city lord's palace in the holy city of Hika is precisely for this reason. It was not because Adela herself wanted a chance to pray, but because of the pleading of her classmate and friend Zania and another girl. After the two got Lucky's promise, they begged for a long time in front of their friend Adela. Seeing her friend's appearance, Adela thought that she would only stay in the city lord's mansion temporarily for two days. So she agreed and paid for her. My friend got this precious opportunity to pray. Zania! We are all classmates, and we should help each other. Come! This is the branch of the holy tree. Through it, you can connect with the holy tree. You take this branch and pray to the holy tree in your heart. If you are recognized by the holy tree, it will naturally give you seeds. If you don't get its recognition, you can't blame me. Lucky is very generous and enjoys being looked at by everyone. Although his behavior seemed like a prodigal, he knew how difficult it was to gain the approval of the holy tree. He used to come here to pray to the sacred tree whenever he had free time. But he had never seen even Mao. And many times, after their father's subordinates have made great contributions, they will be given an opportunity to come here to pray. His father has given such an opportunity no less than a thousand times. But only one person can get the seed. And it has been five years since this man got the seed. But he still cannot cultivate the holy tree. So he was completely empty-handed. He didn't believe that Zania and other talents with less than 10 people could obtain a holy tree seed. 
following Lucky's instructions. Several guards, who had been following not far away brought a few branches. Although it was said to be a branch, only after everyone saw its appearance clearly did they realize that it was extraordinary. This branch is only as thick as a thumb and about 10 centimeters long. The strange thing is its material. The branch is brown in color, cold and smooth to the touch. It looks like it is carved from gemstones, both to the touch and to the naked eye. It just looks like a branch. Each branch has a green leaf with clear veins. It doesn't feel like a branch to the touch, but a real ordinary leaf. At this time, Adela, Zania, and Devere all had a branch in their hands. Although Lachi hated the three of Devere, in front of Adela at this time, he knew that he must show the generosity and gentleman he should be. At this time, Gervais was also looking at the branches in the hands of Adela and others. To be honest, after personally experiencing the power of the holy tree, Gervais also wanted to own such a holy tree. Get Harry a branch too! Seeing everyone smiling, Lucky suddenly saw Gervais. Thinking that Gervais would need to escort him on the treasure hunt in a few days, he gave the guard another order. Anyway, he was just a white wolf with nothing. So he might as well take this opportunity to win over Harry. He would have nothing to lose. And he could also win over the genius magician Gervais. Although Lucky is a playboy. He still has this understanding. Thank you, Master Lucky. Gervais glanced at Lucky in surprise. He didn't expect that even himself was included. So he sincerely thanked him. In any case, at least this was a gift outside of the transaction. And Gervais owed him a favor. Under the envious eyes of the three trainee magicians, Gervais took a branch handed by the guard and then looked at it more carefully. Okay, everyone can start praying now. Just relax and feel the branches in your hands. I wish everyone good luck. From then on, Lucky directly asked everyone to pray. After hearing what Lucky said, Zania and the others couldn't wait. They immediately held the branches in their hands, slightly raised their heads towards the sacred tree and began to pray silently. Gervais took a look at everyone's appearance and imitated their movements and closed his eyes to feel them. When Gervais closed his eyes and felt the branch in his hand, he was suddenly shocked and his spirit was instantly pulled into a strange space. This is a desolate wilderness with a strange purple scorching sun hanging in the sky. Under the shining of this purple scorching sun, everything here withers, the land is cracked, and everywhere is filled with a desolate atmosphere. Only a towering tree in the distance stood like a giant in this desolate wilderness. What's even more peculiar is that under the shade of the giant trees, there is lush vegetation, which is in sharp contrast to the surrounding desolation. After seeing such a scene, feeling the scorching purple sun, Gervais unconsciously moved his steps and walked slowly towards the holy tree. When Gervais came step by step under the sacred tree and felt the coolness under the tree's shade, the previous feeling of being burned by the scorching sun disappeared instantly. Gervais did not stop after entering the shade of the tree, but carefully avoided the vegetation and continued to approach the big tree. When Gervais came to the giant tree, he truly realized how tall the giant tree really was. The exposed roots of this giant tree alone were three or four stories high. Looking at the giant tree in front of him, he seemed to be attracted by it. Gervais unconsciously raised his hand and touched the roots of the giant tree. Boom! The moment Gervais touched the giant tree, there was a buzz in his mind. When he regained consciousness again, he found that the scene he was in had changed. There were no giant trees or vegetation. There were only shouts of death and large fragmented ruins. The strong smell of blood could still be smelled at the tip of the nose. The place where Gervais is now is in a certain palace complex. And in front of him is a man in golden armor. This man is holding a giant sword in his hand, with a broken red cloak trailing behind him. The wind swings. Just when Gervais wanted to take a closer look at the golden armored man in front of him, a huge change suddenly occurred in front of him. A white sword light covering the sky was slashing towards the golden armored man, mixed with the power of destroying the world. The golden armored man wanted to block with his giant sword, but his power was like fluorescent fire in front of the white sword light. There was no chance of resistance. He was instantly enveloped in white light and completely annihilated, including the surrounding buildings. The ruins were also crushed to pieces in an instant. Ah! The moment Gervais was covered by the white sword light, he was also shrouded in the shocking killing intent, as if he would be shattered in the next moment. Call! The next moment, Gervais was in a trance again. When he regained consciousness, he had returned to reality. He was still in the city lord's palace in the holy city of Hika, still 300 meters away from the holy tree. Lockie in front was looking at them with a leisurely look. Gervais looked around again, 
and everyone else woke up at about this moment. However, everyone had different expressions. Some were puzzled, and some were annoyed. Gervais was not sure whether the scene they saw was the same as his. Huh? When Gervais looked at Adela, he suddenly found that Adela's face was a little pale. Although Adela's skin is originally as white as snow, normally fair skin will also have a slight rosiness. But Adela's face was now less pale, which obviously meant that Adela was also frightened by something. Did she see the same scene as me? Even he was frightened by the scene, let alone Adela. Gervais felt that it was probably just as he had guessed. Okay, you have all prayed to the holy tree. Now whether you can get the gift of the holy tree depends on your luck. If any of you really get the recognition of the holy tree, within three minutes the holy tree will grant you blessings. The seeds of the tree will be delivered to you. Lockie was sure that no one would be so lucky to be recognized by the holy tree. But he couldn't show it directly. So Lockie raised his head and looked above the holy tree. Everyone was also looking forward to whether they could be recognized by the holy tree. And they all raised their heads and looked upward. Just more than ten seconds after everyone looked up, the giant tree suddenly changed. The branches and leaves of this holy tree were originally just swaying gently with the breeze, very softly and casually. But at this moment, they suddenly began to shake gently, making a rustling sound. With the shaking of the leaves, strange changes occurred on the main pole of the holy tree, which was more than ten meters in diameter. Countless green veins appeared on the branches that were originally just ordinary. The veins were densely packed. Some were thick and some were thin, as if the human veins extend from the ground to the tree crown a hundred meters high. How can this be? Lucky's eyes widened, and he could fit an egg into his mouth. He knew what it meant for the holy tree to appear in such a situation. It meant that some of the people who had just prayed had been recognized by the holy tree and obtained the seeds of the holy tree. While Lucky was stunned, the strange changes in the sacred tree lasted for about two or three seconds, and then the sacred tree returned to normal again. After the strange changes disappeared, everyone soon saw an elf flying down from the branches and leaves of the holy tree dozens of meters away. Everyone knew what this meant. Their bodies began to tremble slightly, and they were worried about who the seeds of this sacred tree belonged to. Chapter 514 Charming Gervais In the expectant eyes of everyone, this elf quickly fell down, instigating its transparent wings, and came to the people. Is this the great elf? When the big elf came to the ground, Gervais carefully looked at the appearance of the big elf. It looked the same as the elf, but it was a little bigger. Two heads taller than the elf. Racky! Locky! Grandpa Holy Tree asked Leah to deliver the Holy Tree seeds. What surprised Gervais even more was that when the big elf finally came to Lucky, he began to speak human words clearly, but with a cute baby-like tone in his words. Okay, Leah, you can give the seeds to whomever the Holy Tree asked you to give. Right. Although it was beyond Lucky's expectation that someone obtained the seeds of the Holy Tree, since this person was recognized by the Holy Tree, Lucky did not dare to have any objection. Although the Holy Tree signed a contract with his father, it was an equal contract, not a master-servant contract. Moreover, the Hika family still needs to rely on the Holy Tree. So even his father will not do anything against the wishes of the Holy Tree. It's just that Lucky is very worried now. He doesn't want the three duels to get the seeds of the Holy Tree, because these three people are very annoying to him. Okay, Lucky. Leah obviously didn't know what Lucky was thinking. After hearing Lucky's words, she responded happily, then flew up with a splash, circled around Lucky, and drew a green line of light in the air. Finally, with everyone watching, Leah quickly flew in front of Adela with a chirp. Beautiful sister, the holy tree asked me to give this to you. Please reach out and catch it. Is it me, little cutie? You didn't send it to the wrong one. Right. Adela's tone was filled with surprise, and her crystal clear eyes kept blinking looking at the big green elf in front of her tenderly. Of all the people, Adela is naturally the one who has the lowest desire for the seeds of this holy tree. She just took the branch and prayed, but she just wanted to experience the process of praying. But now Zania and other classmates didn't get the seeds. But she did, which made her feel a little embarrassed. Leah will not admit her mistake. Grandpa Shang Shu showed me her beautiful sister's face. Leah remembers her beautiful sister's appearance. Leah circled around Adela twice, and her tone was very sure. From then on, Adela did not shy away and stretched out her white and slender palms in front of her. And Leah immediately slowed down her flying speed and landed steadily on Adela's palm. Lee! Lee! Change! Dang, dang, dang! After the little guy stood firm, he waved the little magic wand in Adela's hand. 
as a green light flashed. The next moment, a green seed the size of a soybean appeared in Adela's hand. This seed is crystal clear, with a green light emitting from it. It looks more like a gem than a plant seed. Wow! This is the holy tree seed! Although she was a little disappointed not to get the seed of the holy tree, when she saw that the person who got the seed was Adela. Xenia also knew that maybe only a perfect person like Adela could be recognized by the holy tree. So she immediately suppressed it. Feeling disappointed, she began to carefully look at the holy tree seeds in Adela's hands. Thank you, cutie! Seeing the holy tree seeds that were more beautiful than gems. Even though Adela had no needs at first, the woman's love for beauty was reflected at this moment. And she gently stroked the big elf's head, her tone full of gratitude. You're welcome, pretty sister! The great elf Leah enjoyed Adela's caress very much and stayed on Adela's hand for three seconds before flying to Lucky's side with another chirp. Leah, thank you for your hard work. You can go back now. Seeing that the person recognized by the holy tree was Adela, Lachi not only did not feel that it was a pity to lose this holy tree seed, but it was in line with his wishes. If you really pursue someone who is recognized by even the holy tree, wouldn't it complement each other? What happened in the holy city of Hika this time will definitely leave a good impression in Adela's heart. And she will be remembered by Adela by the way. If Gervais knew what Lucky was thinking at this time, he would know that this was the beginning of a dog-licking affair. And he will also tell him, lick the dog until there is nothing left. Don't worry. Lee! Leah likes beautiful sisters. Leah still has things to do. The great elf Leah refused Lucky's request to go back immediately, but said something in a cute tone. Then, before anyone could react, he chirped and flew in front of Gervais. Handsome brother. You feel so comfortable. The big elf flew in front of Gervais, spun around him twice, and then hovered in front of Gervais, tilting his head and saying, Oh, really? Beautiful Leah. You are also very cute. So lovable. Gervais already had some guesses in his mind about the reason why Leah came to him. He looked at the cute-looking big elf and said in a gentle tone, Lucky. Dwyer and others all looked at Gervais in surprise. They also had a vague guess in their hearts. But they felt that this guess was too absurd. Holy tree seeds are already rare. Adela was extremely lucky to get one today. How could there be a second one? Handsome brother, please stretch out your hand now. Leah has something to give you. It was Grandpa Shangshu who asked me to give it to you. No matter how unbelievable everyone was, the word spoken by the great elf Leah confirmed that this incredible scene really happened. I really gave away two holy tree seeds at once. Lucky suddenly felt a faint chill coming from his butt. He felt that if his father knew all this, his end would definitely not be easy. Originally, I just wanted to give away favors empty-handed. But unexpectedly, I gave away two super gifts. And Dwyer and others looked at Gervais, the wild mage, with jealousy in their eyes. In their eyes, the wild mage is undoubtedly a pariah. But now this pariah has been recognized by the holy tree. This is really rubbing their faces on the ground. Adela also looked at Gervais with strange eyes. If this man also got the holy tree seed, wouldn't it mean that he was as good as herself? This made Adela a little unhappy. This man was obviously so rude. How could he compare with a lady like himself when he looked at himself so directly just now? Gervais doesn't care what others think. He is very happy anyway. He immediately smiled and stretched out his palm, waiting for this cute elf to land on his hand. The big elf seemed to like him very much. When he saw Gervais extending his palm, he immediately happily landed on his palm. Leah. Leah. Change. Dang, dang, dang. As the little guy's playful words fell, a holy tree seed exactly like Adela appeared in Gervais's palm. After seeing this holy tree seed, Gervais couldn't help but open his mouth, revealing his white teeth. Ha ha. From now on, the king will also be the one who owns the holy tree. Gervais didn't know how difficult it would be to get the seeds of the holy tree to germinate. In his mind, it was just watering and fertilizing. In my heart, I have begun to imagine the sour feeling after owning this towering tree. I really like my handsome brother. He looks even more charming when he smiles. Seeing Gervais's happy smile, the little guy did not leave immediately as before. Instead, he sat directly on Gervais's palm, supported his chin with both hands, tilted his little head and looked at Gervais, and made a sound in his mouth, the murmur of eating. In fact, Although the appearance of Gervais in disguise is considered very handsome, it is on par with Gervais's real face and does not appear to be so handsome as to make people cry. The reason why the great elf is so obsessed with Gervais is entirely because of the effect of the affinity-increasing kiwi fruit that Gervais ate. Gervais was surrounded by acquaintances at that time, 
so the effect was not very obvious. But now that he meets strangers who are not hostile, the wonderful effect of improving his affinity is immediately reflected. In particular, this big elf has no scheming. And his joy, anger, sorrow, and joy are all expressive. Who he likes and who he hates will be shown immediately. Seeing Leah's appearance, Lucky couldn't help but twitch the corner of his mouth. He really wanted to ask Leah, Whose family's great elf are you? Chapter 515 Recruitment from the Holy City of Hika Okay, little cutie, it's time to go back. The little guy stayed in Gervais's hand for more than a minute. And then Gervais raised his hand and touched her head, asking her to go back. After all, Lachi and the others were still looking directly at him and this little guy. So it wouldn't be a problem to keep wasting them like this. Okay, handsome brother. Although the little guy was clingy, he was also very obedient. Hearing Gervais' words, he responded obediently and immediately stood up from Gervais's hand. Handsome brother, I'm leaving. Please come visit me in the future. I will miss you. After saying that, the little guy flapped his little wings and spun around Gervais twice before flying into the air with a chirp. Without even saying age, low to Lucky. When Lucky heard what the big elf said, the corner of his mouth twitched. This Gervais got a sacred tree kiwi fruit in just one visit. And he also had the possibility of abducting his own great elf. I would definitely not dare to let him come again in the future. I didn't expect to see two holy tree seeds appear at once today. Adela. Harry. Congratulations to you. After the great elf Leah left, Lucky calmed down and congratulated Adela and Gervais with a smile. Both Gervais and Adela have been recognized by the holy tree. So even if Lucky is reluctant to part with him, he has no choice. So he might as well act grandly and let Adela take a high look at him. Thank you. Lucky. Thank you. Master Lucky. Gervis and Adela were sincerely grateful. In any case, they had truly benefited from Lucky. You're welcome. This is your own responsibility. Adela. It's already noon. Let's go have lunch. I already ordered the servants to prepare it before I came. Lucky was beaming with joy. And Adela was of noble birth. And behaved dignified and virtuous when getting along with their male classmates. So she didn't talk much. Now that he could get a sincere thank you from Adela. Lucky felt very benefited. Um. Adela nodded slightly in response. And then raised her wrist in front of everyone. Revealing the delicate bracelet on her wrist. At first. Gervais didn't know what Adela was planning to do. But he understood the next moment. Adela's bracelet turned out to be the legendary space bracelet. With Adela's thought, the sacred tree seed that was still on her fingertips disappeared instantly. At this time, when everyone saw the scene, even Lucky showed envious eyes. This woman is worthy of being the daughter of a rich family. She even owns a space bracelet. And looking at Lucky's expression, it's clear that even he, the second young master of the holy city of Hika, can't afford it. Gervais sighed in his heart. He knew that Adela's bracelet must be priceless. Otherwise, even a playboy like Lucky would not be envious. Next, the group headed to the banquet hall of the city lord's mansion under the leadership of Lucky. Lucky, Adela and others sat at the same table. And Gervais and others did not have to stand Lucky also arranged lunch for them in another small room. After lunch, Adela and others returned to the reception area to rest. While Lucky took Gervais back to his manor. Just when he arrived at the gate of the manor, Lucky received the news that his father had summoned him. In the end, Lucky could only follow the guards, who sent the order and walked towards the depths of the city lord's mansion. In fact, Lucky had already been mentally prepared for such a big event as the holy tree giving away two holy tree seeds, which would definitely alarm his father. After Lucky left, Gervais stayed in the manor. After asking Butler Bug, Gervais went to a library in the manor. The reason why it is called the library is because this is not the study room where Lucky usually reads and studies. Because there are so many books of all kinds in the holy continent. A study room simply cannot hold so many books. Most of the books that are not used on weekdays are stored in a separate library. And are sorted out and moved to the study room only when they are needed. Sir Harry, this is the library. You can view it freely here. But the placement cannot be disturbed. And the books cannot be taken away. The library contained ordinary books nothing about cultivation. So Bag felt relieved to open the library and let Gervais read it by himself. After a few words of explanation, Bag left to do his own business. After Bug left, Gervais couldn't wait to start looking through the library. To be honest, he really has a dark eye on this sacred continent. Sometimes he could understand what Lucky and the others were saying, but he didn't know what they were talking about when they fell to the ground. 
This made Gervais very distressed. Gervais first began to look for books about the sacred tree, because that was what interested him most. Fortunately, the holy tree is the most important existence in the holy continent. And Gervais quickly found books on this aspect. It turns out that the holy trees have existed for a long time and were discovered in the land of God's fall. After people discovered that these holy trees could calm the rioting aura around them, people began to build strongholds and cities around them. The real collective name of sacred trees is not trees, but sacred plants, because in addition to trees, other plants can also become such sacred plants, such as flowers, grass, and vines. The reason why these plants have such magical abilities is because they incorporate the remaining thoughts of the gods in the land where the gods fell. After the remaining thoughts of the gods are fused with the plants, if they are lucky, they can produce consciousness and wisdom. Then they will continue to practice and grow, and eventually become sacred plants. Only then did Gervais realize that he might not be able to cultivate a holy tree after obtaining the holy tree seeds. Because if he wanted to cultivate a holy tree, he would have to find a fragment of the god's will and fuse it with the seeds. Holy shit! You're such a cheat! Where do you want me to find the fragments of the god's thoughts? Gervais suddenly felt like there were a hundred thousand grass and mud horses galloping past in his heart. God sounded like tall beings. Even if they were fragments of consciousness, Gervais didn't think it was that easy to get. Fortunately, I just imagined that I would bring the seeds back to Eurasia. When the holy tree comes out, I will be able to cultivate thousands of knights with the title. And then I can live a life without shame with my queen. Now it seems that this is all a dream. In addition to increasing the speed of cultivation, sacred plants also have powerful attack power. It can be said that sacred plants are the protective gods of every force. Especially in the land of God's fall. The growth of the sacred tree naturally requires care. But it is not taken care of by humans. Instead, it relies on elf bugs and elves to take care of the sacred plants. This is why Gervais can see so many elves, big and small, surrounding the sacred tree in the holy city of Hika. After reading the introduction about the holy tree, Gervais continued to read other introductions about the holy continent. Gervais spent a day and a half looking at it, except for going out to eat and drink. He spent the rest of his time here. During this period, Lucky came to see Gervais because Lucky's father, the lord of the holy city of Hika, learned that Gervais had obtained the holy tree seed. So he hoped that Gervais could join the forces of the holy city of Hika in the future. Of course, they did not force Gervais, but gave Gervais time to think about it. Gervais is now a wild mage. Once he obtains the qualification as an auditor at the Alliance College of Higher Education, he may actually pass the college's examination and obtain a diploma. Then Gervais will be able to become a real magician. So they hope that Gervais can join the holy city of Hika after becoming a certified magician again. Of course, the reason why the holy city of Hika is so easy to talk to is entirely because of the existence of the holy tree. Because the holy tree recognizes Gervais, they will only win over Gervais instead of suppressing others with force. Chapter 516 Moving Energy Points In the early morning, outside the city lord's palace in the holy city of Hika, it's very lively here today. A team of hundreds of people is gathering here. This team is lucky. Adela and others who are ready to set off. In fact, it was not that everyone came without guards, but because they were invited to stay in the city lord's mansion. Except for the three trainee magicians brought by Devere, who were allowed to enter the city lord's mansion because of their noble status. The other guards were all placed outside the city lord's mansion. This group of people can afford to attend the Alliance College of Higher Education. So naturally everyone in their status is extraordinary. Even a woman like Xania, who didn't seem to have much of a lady-like appearance, brought ten guards, two of whom were golden knights. The same is true for others. Devere brought three junior magicians and more than ten silver knights to protect him. Another man brought five gold knights and more than ten silver knights to protect him. The only thing that surprised Gervais was that a wealthy lady like Adela came without any bodyguards. Set off! After everything was prepared, and with a few people giving orders, the team of hundreds of people began to move towards the gate of the holy city of Hika. At this time, Gervais rode a carriage and followed the team, and slowly began to move forward. But he is the shabbiest magician in the team. The other three trainee magicians all have their own separate luxury carriages and the carriages also have badges and badges indicating their status as magicians. The carriage Gervais was riding in did not have the magician badge. The place we went to this time was the Sunset Forest, half a month away. Gervais checked the books. The Sunset Forest was a buffer zone between humans and orcs. So it was a no-nonsense zone. The whole journey was silent. And in the blink of an eye it was already 15 days later. 
The closer they got to Sunset Forest, the fewer humans they saw, but the number of orcs gradually increased. However, when these orcs met them, they stayed away from them and charged towards them with roars without even saying a word. In the library of Larch Manor, Rigwise also learned why these orcs did not fight to the death with humans like the orcs released from the elven insect space. It turns out that more than 200 years ago, in order to fight against the undead, humans, orcs, and other races formed an alliance to fight together. After the victory of the battle, the superficial relations between the two sides had eased. However, before the undead appeared, humans were far more powerful than orcs. And orcs could only hide in the forest and live like beasts. But in that catastrophe, humans suffered the greatest losses. At that time, Several orc tribes began to think of taking the opportunity to annex human cities and enslave humans. In the end, another war broke out between the two sides. In the end, humans won miserably. And the tribes that tried to annex human territory were also driven back to the forest. At that time, a small number of orcs did not participate in this war. Because they had already coexisting peacefully with the local humans. Although orcs are barbaric and crude, they also have a racial advantage. That is, they are very powerful in order to quickly rebuild the city. Those orcs who did not participate in the war and were willing to stay were recruited as laborers to build cities for humans. Only then did Gervais see the scene of humans and orcs coexisting peacefully. However, if you go further north and enter the sphere of influence of the orcs, the orcs there will not be like this. Humans will basically fight to the death when they meet them. Master Lucky! At this time, Gervais and his party had arrived at a town outside the Sunset Forest. Although this is a no-nonsense zone, it is not a sparsely populated place. Originally, there were a large number of aborigines here. And because of its proximity to the Sunset Forest, adventurers came here all year round. Now that the discovery of the treasure in Sunset Forest has spread throughout the Holy Alliance, the flow of people in the town can be said to be packed with people. Just as Gervais and the others walked into the town, two heavily armed men suddenly walked in front of them and came to their team. These two people were sent by Lucky to fight at the front. This is also the reason why Lachi can join Adela and their team. Lucky himself is not very strong or a genius. In order to join Adela and their team, he made a lot of promises. For example, he would look for the guide who came to Sunset Forest from the holy city of Hika, and he would also handle matters that came in advance to inquire about information, because the power of the Lucky family is only a week away from this town. This can be regarded as Lucky's home field. Adela, I have set people down in advance to book a hotel for us. Let's go there now. Okay. Thank you very much. Lucky San. Looking at the bustling town, Adela also knew that if Lachi hadn't sent someone in advance, it would have been difficult to find a hotel. The group of people walked towards the town under the leadership of those two people. Gervais also walked out of the carriage at this time and looked around curiously. The messiness of this town has a bit of the Eurasian feel. But the only difference is that Gervais can see a lot of orcs here. When passing by a blacksmith shop, he also took a special look. The people working there were bearded dwarves. And the hammers were banged by them. Boom! As a group of them were walking, they suddenly saw a person flying out of a room in front of them, covered in blood. Before anyone could understand what was going on, they saw more than a dozen orcs walking out of the room again. Dirty and cutting humans! How dare you look down on us orcs! The leader of the orcs was a burly half-orc. And he was followed by different types of orcs. There are pig-headed men. Kobolds and even a tower in that Gervais meets for the first time. Lord Gesang, can you reward me with him? After the leading orc stomped on the living and dead human on the ground, the kobold behind him came to the front with a mean smile on his face and asked the orc, Then I'll give it to you. Kirby! After saying that, the orc immediately stepped forward. Wherever he passed, both humans and orcs hit far away, because everyone can feel the oppression on this half-orc. The kobold also quickly picked up the unknown human on the ground and followed him with a mouth full of saliva. Adela, this is a no-nonsense zone, so there is nothing we can do about such a thing. Seeing Adela frowning, Dever couldn't bear it, and immediately whispered, Yes, Adela, such things happen here every day, whether they are humans or orcs. It's still about treasure hunting. Lucky rarely agreed with Dever's words this time, because they could all feel the strength of that group of orcs. Moreover, the Lackey family is right next to the Sunset Forest. So they naturally know the chaos here. Hearing what both Dwyer and Lachi said, Adela pursed her lips slightly without saying any words. It wasn't that she wanted to meddle in other people's business. It was just that the human was dead but still wanted to be eaten by the orcs. 
so she frowned. When Dwyer, Lucky and others were extremely wary of those orcs. Gervais looked at the orcs with gleaming eyes. In his eyes, those orcs were simply walking energy points. Although I met a lot of orcs on the road a few days ago. They were all ordinary orcs. And this group of people are all at the leader level. A pig's head or a dog's head represents a little energy point. It seems this trip was well worth it. Looking at the orcs walking away, Gervais smacked his lips. His injuries finally recovered after half a month of training. So he has regained his fighting spirit again. But it was hidden by his secret stealth skill number two, so that outsiders cannot detect it. Chapter 517 Enchanting Woman Ked, tell me about the situation in the Sunset Forest. In a hotel in Sunset Town, Rachel Adela and others sat around a table. And Gervais and three other magicians were allowed to sit together, because they were magicians. Of course, the most important thing is that we are in a hotel at this time. And the hotel is now overcrowded. And there are no extra tables for Gervais and others to sit. Master Lucky, we arrived here three days ago. Through our inquiries over the past few days, we have been able to confirm that there is indeed a ruins in the Sunset Forest. And as more and more clues to the ruins are discovered, the treasure hunting expedition team say that it is likely to be the ruins of a magician's tower. Oh, how can they be sure that this is the magician's tower? Lucky's expression changed and he asked. The expressions of Adela and others also changed slightly. They came this time because of the news about the ruins of the magician's tower. But I originally thought that not many people knew about this news. But now I didn't expect that even ordinary adventurers would see it. This would have a great impact on their plans. The magician's tower is an incredible existence. The status of a magician is already very noble. And the magician tower can only be built if one has reached the level of magician. It is conceivable that if the mage tower appeared in the sunset forest, it would be a discovery that would shock the entire Holy Alliance. Master, although the treasure hunting adventurers have not yet been able to find the true location of the magician's tower, many traces of the magician's existence have been discovered in the forest. Master, you see, this is something we bought from an adventurer for gold coins. This thing was also found in the sunset forest, and we saw it with our own eyes. As he spoke, Lucky's men took out a long stick. The strangest thing was that this long stick actually had a skull inlaid on it. The staff of the necromancer. Lucky, Adela, and Xenia looked at each other. What they had received before coming was the news that this place was a tower of necromancers. When they saw this ancient necromancer staff that had been buried underground for at least hundreds of years, they immediately knew that the news was true. Ked, apart from these news, are there any other discoveries? Has the stronghold of the mage tower not been found yet? Master Lucky, I heard they said that this magician's tower is probably protected by a magic circle so it is difficult to find. However, my subordinates also heard that Tulip Holy City and several other families have surrounded an area to prevent others from entering. I wonder if they have discovered it. Tulip City? Then go there first tomorrow. When Lucky and the others heard this, they made a decision immediately. The big families like Tulip naturally have more tricks than ordinary adventurers, so they may have discovered some clues. If they were late, their trip would have been in vain. And although big families like Tulip can stop ordinary adventurers, they can't stop Lucky, Adela and others who also have extraordinary backgrounds. After understanding the information, the food in the hotel was placed on the table under the swift transfer of the waiters back and forth. And then everyone began to feast. Although they were all young noble ladies going out, most of the road was in the wilderness. And they really hadn't eaten any decent and delicious food in the past few days. So everyone ate this meal very happily. Even Adela who had been chewing slowly and elegantly, had a great appetite today and ate an extra piece of golden barbecue. It is worth mentioning that although this is just a hotel in a small town, the meat on the table is all Warcraft meat, because the spiritual energy of the holy continent is several times more abundant than that of Eurasia. There is never a shortage of Warcraft meat in the holy continent. It is just that high-level Warcraft are more difficult to capture, just when everyone was eating, drinking and having fun. More than a dozen figures suddenly came in from outside the door. When everyone looked around, they discovered that it was the group of orcs who had just killed humans in the street. When this group of orcs entered, all the guests in the hotel looked at them. And this group of orcs were also looking at the hall. Masters of the orcs, the shop is now full. Can you please wait a moment? We will send you an extra bottle of wine later. The hotel opened its doors for business. So naturally it was worried that a few orcs would cause trouble here. So a servant with heavy makeup smiled coquettishly and ran to the orcs to apologize. You dirty and ugly human woman. Don't you want to live anymore? 
How dare you let us Lord Gesang wait? Believe it or not, I will swallow you up in one gulp. The leading orc had been silent since he entered the room. But the kobold behind him immediately stood up with a grin on his face after hearing what the female attendant said. Scaring the female attendant back again and again. Don't be angry, gentlemen orcs. It's just that the shop really doesn't have a place right now. The waitress turned pale with fright. But seeing the other guests in the hotel fidgeting, she still managed to reply. Who said there is no place? The kobold bared his teeth and then walked to a table with four or five adventurers. Dirty and cutting humans. If you don't leave within ten seconds, I will eat you alive today. The adventurers at this table are not very strong. Only one of them is a peak silver knight, and two of them are even bronze knights. Hearing the kobold shouting and cursing, everyone turned pale. One of the younger ones wanted to draw his sword, but was stopped by his older companions. Then they got up and walked away in despair without saying a word. Look, isn't there a seat here? Dirty and ugly woman. Hurry up and prepare the meal. If it's too late, I won't swallow you. Yes, yes, yes. Seeing her table of guests being chased away, the waitress opened her mouth, but ultimately said nothing. Now that she heard the kobold's words, she hurriedly ran to the kitchen. Master Gesang, there is a seat here. Come and sit down. Then, the kobold changed his face and began to ask the leading orc to sit down. There were a total of more than ten tables of guests in the hall, and they were all human beings. However, everyone remained silent when they saw this scene, obviously not wanting to get into trouble. These orcs are too arrogant. After the group of orcs sat down, the hall was a little quieter than before. But everyone also began to whisper. Many adventurers were whispering about the tyranny of this group of orcs. Of course, they were just whispering. And the table including Gervis remained silent because they could all feel the strength of the orc. The leading orc was at least as powerful as the white flag knight. Even if they brought many guards, they were still unable to deal with this orc. After the group of orcs left, the diners in the hotel ate at a noticeably faster pace. Many people stopped staying after eating and left the hotel directly or went to the rooms upstairs. Only the tables far away from the orcs still had some people continuing to eat. It was at this time that a group of people walked through the door of the hotel again. And this time, the people who came in also attracted the attention of everyone in the hotel. The person who came in was headed by a woman. This woman was wearing a long tulle skirt with only the important parts of the upper and lower parts lined. But the slender waist and the white, straight and slender thighs are looming, especially enchanting. And on her feet were a pair of transparent shoes that looked like crystal carvings. And her crystal clear jade feet were unreservedly displayed in front of everyone. Seeing this scene, all the men in the hall couldn't help but cast their eyes on the woman. Lucky and Dwyer even forgot about the forks and food that were only half raised in their hands. A bunch of perverts. Seeing everyone looking like this, Xenia muttered a little angrily. It was only then that Lucky and Dwyer suddenly woke up and immediately returned to normal. But their eyes still glanced secretly in that direction from time to time. This perfect figure is no worse than my Caroline. I just don't know what her face looks like. Gervais also admired the woman carefully and finally said something silently in his heart. Although the woman's clothing can be considered revealing, the strange thing is that there is a gauze hanging on her face, revealing only the face above the eyes. Although the face above the eyes is also exquisite, Gervais is a time traveler and knows what it means to destroy everything with one mouth. Sometimes a person's facial features have to be put together to tell whether they are really beautiful or handsome. Otherwise, if you look at it with a mask on, 99% of human beings are beautiful and handsome. This enchanting and charming woman didn't care at all about everyone's gaze. After entering the hotel, she went to an empty table and sat down. What surprised everyone was that the five golden knights following her were all standing motionless around her. Obviously just her subordinates. This woman's identity only strengthened the imagination of the men sitting here about her. Ugly human woman. Just when everyone was surprised by the woman's beauty and status, the table of orcs made a commotion again. The kobold said something very disdainful after seeing the woman. Kirby, you were wrong this time. That human woman is not ugly, but a very beautiful woman. The leading orc refuted the kobold's words. Ah, The kobold was a little confused. This was the first time Lord Gesang refuted his words after scolding humans so many times. However, the dog-headed person lives up to his name and obviously has the essence of the dog-legged person. After just being stunned for a moment, the dog's eyes rolled around and he showed a flattering smile. Master Gesang said, that the human woman is indeed a beauty. Lord Gesang, how about I call her over to drink with you now? As he spoke, the kobold stood up 
and the orc did not say anything to stop him. The aesthetics of orcs such as kobolds, pig-headed men, and tauren are different from humans. But the aesthetics of half-orcs are similar to humans. Because they themselves look 67% similar to humans. It was obvious that the leading half-orc was also attracted by the enchanting woman. Chapter 518 Take Action Clang! 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 The kobold's words and actions fell into the ears and eyes of the five golden knights beside the enchanting woman. Seeing the kobold coming with a huge dog head, they all pulled out the long swords and knives at their waists. Dirty and cutting humans! Are you looking for death? You actually want to attack the heroic kobold Kirby? The kobold showed no fear in the face of the five golden knights. He instantly bared his teeth and touched his waist, where a meteor hammer was placed. As the meteor hammer was held in the hand of the kobold, bursts of sparks flashed out from the meteor hammer. Seeing that the two sides were about to start a battle, the guests in the store kept away from each other. On the contrary, the enchanting woman never glanced at the orcs from beginning to end, and leisurely drank the drink that the waiter had just served. Gervais was watching all this intently at this time. He wanted to see what confidence this kobold had in fighting against several golden knights. You must know that he has killed many kobold leaders, and his strength is not even that of the silver knight. And this kobold actually challenged the golden knight. Go to HL! Cutting humans! The kobold took the lead in facing the five golden knights, waving the meteor hammer in his hand and attacking forward. Gervais could see that this kobold was not very strong, only at the level of the silver knight, which made him curious about what would happen next. When? Boom! But at the next moment, something incredible happened. The golden knight was directly hit by his meteor hammer and flew backwards. Ha ha! Dirty and cutting humans! They still want to block the attack of the brave Kirby! When the kobold saw the golden knight flying backwards, he laughed triumphantly, revealing the sharp fangs in his mouth. Of course, no one took his words seriously, because anyone who was not weak could see it. Just at the moment when the kobold and the golden knight started fighting, the half-orc who had been sitting still took action. He took a fork and flicked it directly on the golden knight's arm. He couldn't even hold the weapon, so he was directly hit by the kobold's meteor hammer. The remaining four golden knights all looked at the table of orcs with solemn expressions. However, the enchanting woman still made no move at this time, and the four golden knights were still confronting the kobolds. Quick! Go help Kirby! Yes! Master Gasang! Perhaps because he thought it was too troublesome to do it himself, the half-orc Gasang finally spoke and gave instructions to the tower beside him. The tower stood up immediately after hearing the order. He stood nearly two and a half meters tall and exuded a powerful aura. His strength actually reached the level of the Golden Knight. Roar! Arriving next to the kobold, the tower did not take action immediately, but suddenly looked up to the sky and roared. Following this violent roar, a faint blood-red halo suddenly appeared on the body of the tower and the kobold. I wipe it! There is such an operation! Gervais didn't know that the orcs had such an operation, so he immediately stared at the burly tower with wide eyes. I saw that the strength of the Tauren and Kobolds also increased by a level at this moment. The racial talent of the Tauren. The blessing of strength. However, Adela and the others were worthy of being students of the Alliance College of Higher Education. And they immediately told the origin of the Minotaur's skill. Roar! As he said this, the Tauren began to fight with the remaining four golden knights. The Tauren held a thick giant axe in his hand. And without any fancy moves, he charged directly, using his size advantage and tyrannical strength to fight against the human golden knight. The cunning kobold stood behind the tower and, and attacked with a meteor hammer. Soon, the four golden knights were defeated by the tower and, and kobolds. Because the strength of the tower is so tyrannical, the giant axe can directly bend the sword when it hits the mithril sword. Bang bang bang. Quick! Don't kill them! Several golden knights were smashed away by the powerful force of the tower. And. But at this time, the tower with a rather doggy temperament spoke. He actually took the initiative to ask the tower to show mercy. In fact, the reason is very simple. This kobold who has the essence of dog legs knows that his master is interested in human women. So he asked the tower to show mercy. Otherwise, with a Torin simple mind, he would definitely smash the heads of several golden knights. Ugly and beautiful human woman. Our great lord Gesang invites you to come over for a drink. Go quickly. Otherwise, when I get angry, I will swallow all your men. Wow. Go away. Disgusting dog head. Unexpectedly, even though several guards were beaten to the ground, this enchanting woman was not afraid at all, and even poured a drink on the head of the kobold. And everyone in the hotel heard this woman's voice for the first time. 
It was like a fairy voice. It was not only sweet but also full of temptation. And it perfectly matched her enchanting figure. You? The kobold's face was wet, and he wanted to have a fit. But when he thought that his Lord Gesang was still waiting there, he could only suppress his temper and gritted his teeth. It is your honor that the great Lord Gesang has taken a liking to you. If you are still ignorant, then Kirby will go and eat your men alive right now. With that said, the kobold came to a golden knight who fell to the ground and lifted the golden knight up without saying a word. The golden knight originally wanted to struggle, but was hit again by the kobold sparking meteor hammer and fainted. The kobold raised the golden knight to his mouth with one hand, but his eyes secretly looked at the enchanting woman. Unexpectedly, this enchanting woman's face was still expressionless, and there was no sign of any disturbance. Ruthless enough! Gervais couldn't help but sigh in his heart when he saw this, secretly thinking that this woman is not simple. What kind of person can see his subordinates about to be eaten alive and still feel relaxed and content? Especially when the person in front of me is a woman. Faced with such an attitude of the enchanting woman, the kobold was really angry now. And he no longer had any scruples. He opened his mouth wide, revealing a mouthful of fangs. Then he put the golden knight's head into his mouth. As long as he takes this bite, the golden knight's head will definitely be gone. Then, the kobold began to close its mouth and bite. Seeing this scene, Many customers could not bear to look away. This scene can be different from the bloody battle. Purify the holy light. But at this moment, a clear low groan suddenly sounded in the store. And then a white light was seen hitting the kobold's head at a rapid speed. A oh, wow, a oh, wow, a oh, wow. In an instant, the kobold who was about to harvest a human life let out a miserable cry. Just like an ordinary puppy whose tail was stepped on. Poof. Seeing this scene and listening to the puppy-like whining sound, Gervais chuckled unkindly. This scene is too inconsistent. The kobold is more than 1.9 meters tall. And his body shape can be called a devil's muscular man. But the whine he makes is the sound of a puppy. Which no one can stand. Of course, if you can't stand it, you can't stand it anymore. The only one in the audience who can burst into laughter is probably Gervais. He is the only one who has not suffered a severe beating from this other world and lacks all. You are seeking death. The kobold howled twice and recovered after a moment. The kobold's eyes showed bloodthirsty hatred and roared loudly. The golden knight in his hand has been thrown aside. And there is a burnt black spot on his dog's head. With wisps of smoke still coming out. At this time, the eyes of the orcs were also focused on Gervis's table. Because the holy light just emitted from Adela's hand. There was an emergency just now. So Adela directly used the magician's staff and quickly released the magic. Lucky and Dwyer were completely shocked at this time. And they did not expect Adela to take action without saying age low. Although they have status. They are useless against the orcs. And there are no masters around them now. The kobolds don't care if everyone is in a daze. After roaring angrily, he swung the meteor hammer in his hand vigorously. And instantly a huge lightning ball flew towards Gervais and the others. Fireball! Just when Adela was about to continue releasing magic, Gervais took the lead. And a fireball the size of a washbasin flew out instantly and flew towards the lightning ball. Boom! as two balls of light, one red and one white, collided in the air. They exploded instantly, burning the surrounding two or three meters to black. Fireball! But before the bursting flame disappeared, another fireball flew out of Gervais's hand and went straight to the head of the kobold. Chapter 519, Forbidden Curse Scroll. Boom! Just when Gervais's second fireball was about to hit the kobold, the half-orc with Gassang's feet finally took action. He threw an iron plate towards Gervais's fireball at an extremely fast speed. The iron plate was still shining with a faint red light. As the iron plate collided with the fireball, there was another roar in the hotel. Damn! Just a little bit closer! Gervais originally planned to collect the kobold's dog brain in one go to earn some energy points. Now that the half orc Gassang has taken action, his idea has naturally come to nothing. Unless he uses the black kiwi fruit now, it is possible to harvest energy points. It's just that Gervais is really reluctant to let go now. So he can only wait and see what happens next. As the explosion flame of the fireball disappeared, the hotel suddenly became quiet and everyone couldn't help but look at Gassang nervously. At this time, Gassang also stood up from his seat and slowly walked to the kobold. Master Gassang, you have to make the decision for me. Those cunning humans just tried to kill me. Seeing the orcs coming to him, the frightened kobolds began to complain to Gassang. Gassang ignored the kobold's words and looked at Gervais' table. He first looked at Gervais and then looked at Adela. There is actually a beautiful human. 
But if you dare to attack us orcs, no matter how beautiful you are, you must die. But before you die, I will enjoy you. Human beauty. Although Adela did not have as alluring a figure as that enchanting woman, her beautiful face and elegant temperament also aroused the lust of Sanger, the half-orc. Even Sanger was sighing in his heart that he was so lucky to come to Sunset Forest this time. And he could meet two top-notch human beauties at once. Jell sang orcs. Do you want to provoke a war between humans and orcs? My father is the lord of the holy city of Hika. If you dare to touch any of us, I guarantee that my father will make you orcs pay the price. We have reached this point, and it is no longer appropriate to be a coward. Although Lucky looked a little ugly, he still stood up and threatened Gisang. Lucky now regrets why he didn't ask his father for a white flag knight to protect him. Otherwise, he wouldn't be so passive today. And he can still perform well in front of Adela. Yes, my father is the vice president of the Magic Association. If you dare to touch us, you will cause a war between humans and orcs. Seeing that Lucky had expressed his stance, Deborah had no choice but to stand up and agree. If he was compared with Lucky now, it would be impossible for him to pursue Adela. Ha ha! What innocent little guys! Do you think I'm afraid of you like this? Quick! Go over and arrest those two little guys. When the incident in Sunset Forest is over, I will take them back to the royal court. Then we can negotiate a deal with their father. The Lord of Hika Holy City and the Vice President of the Magician Association are the most powerful people in mankind. People. Ha ha. As for the others, except for that beautiful human woman, if anyone else dares to resist, they can be killed directly. When Sanger heard Devere and Lucky announcing their homes, instead of being afraid, it felt like they had seen a treasure. After listening to Gesang's order, the huge tower immediately walked towards Lucky and the others. Seeing this situation, Gervais couldn't help but rolled his eyes. Are these two fools? People may still be afraid of using their reputation within the Alliance. But now in the Sunset Forest, a no-nonsense zone, these orcs are the mortal enemies of mankind. So how can they be intimidated by their reputation? Clang! 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 Seeing Quick approaching, Lucky and several of his golden knights drew their swords and quickly blocked the table. Although they were probably delivering food. As guards they couldn't escape. Do we really want to use that black kiwi fruit? Gervais's face was full of tangles. In the current situation, if the black kiwi fruit were not used to increase the strength by 50 times, his group would probably be in trouble. As for escaping, Gervais also thought about it. But the door of the hotel was already blocked by Gesang. Moreover, Gesang was so powerful that Gervais was sure that none of them would be able to escape. While struggling, Gervais looked at Adela. This woman's attack of holy light just now caused the current trouble. Gervais wanted to see if she had any way to solve the current crisis. After all, Gervais can see that Adela is not a foolish virgin. And she should have some confidence when she dared to take action just now. Stop! Sure enough, when Gervais looked at Adela, Adela also happened to make a move. And there was no trace of nervousness on her face. Adela raised her palm slightly. And for just a moment, a scroll suddenly appeared in her empty palm. The scroll is completely black and covered with complicated patterns. The moment the scroll appeared, Gervais instantly felt a dangerous aura, and the hair on his hair almost stood up, as if there was some terrifying bee sealed in the scroll. Adela shouted to stop, but the tower named Quick was obviously stubborn and would only listen to Gesang's words and continued to move forward. Orc, I told you to stop. Otherwise, don't blame me for being rude. Seeing this situation, Adela directly raised the scroll in her hand high and shouted again. Quick, wait. Gesang was a little surprised when he saw the magic scroll held by Adela and immediately stopped Keek. Human, what do you want to say? Gesang's eyes hesitated and he kept looking at the black magic scroll in Adela's hand. The magic scroll in my hand is a forbidden spell written by a high-level magician the secret of the storm. If you dare to hurt us, I will activate this scroll now. Forbidden curse. Human, do you think I will believe you? There are only a handful of magicians on the continent who can write the Forbidden Curse magic scroll, and it requires a large amount of extremely precious materials. How can you have it? Gesang said with a sneer. If you don't believe it, you can give it a try. This Forbidden Magic Scroll is enough to destroy the entire Sunset Town. Even if you have the cultivation of the White Flag Knight, you can't escape. Adela ignored Gesang's sneer and pressed her other hand on the activation switch of the magic scroll. Human woman, you are great. I look forward to our next meeting. Gesang's expression changed slightly. He looked at the lineup of Gervais and his team, and then at the scroll in Adela's hand. 
It is impossible to capture this group of humans at this moment. Only by restraining this woman when she doesn't take out the scroll next time can we do it with confidence. With this thought in his mind, Gisang finally made up his mind and said to his subordinates, Let's go! Gisang believed Adela's words. Not to mention that the scroll released an aura that made him quite fearful. But just by looking at the lineup of Adela and her group, he knew that she might really have a powerful scroll. Adela and her group were not only guarded by a large number of golden knights, but also had four magicians. Moreover, Lucky and Dwyer have already announced their identities and are considered to be upper-class human beings, so Adela's status is naturally not low either. Of course, Gisang would not be willing to let him risk his own life to read it. Chapter 520 A Gift from an Enchanting Woman Adela, put this scroll away quickly. I think it's so scary. After Gisang left with the orcs, everyone's tense heartstrings finally relaxed. After relaxing, their attention immediately focused on the black scroll in Adela's hand. Anyone present who practices magic and has strong spiritual power can sense the terrifying pressure of this scroll. So Zania couldn't stand at first and spoke immediately. She felt that the magic scroll in Adela's hand made her feel even more oppressive than the Gasang orc just now. Okay, Zania, but as long as it doesn't start, it's still safe. You don't have to worry. Adela smiled sweetly. And then with a thought, the black scroll disappeared in an instant. It wasn't until this moment that everyone felt truly relaxed. I'm really sorry just now. It was my unauthorized actions that put everyone in danger. After putting away the scroll, Adela spoke again and solemnly apologized to the people at the table. At the same time, Adela's eyes stayed on Gervais for a while longer. Apparently because Gervais had also taken action just now, which changed her attitude towards Gervais. It's okay. Adela, you just did a great job and are a role model for us. Xenia has a free and easy personality. And Adela just did something that no one in the hotel dared to do. So she was generous with her compliments. On the contrary, Lucky and Dwyer felt a little hot on their faces and hesitantly echoed Xenia's compliments on Adela and then fell silent. Giggle! Xenia! Am I really as good as you say? Let's eat the food quickly. After eating, we can rest early. We will go to the sunset forest tomorrow. Adela suddenly became happy when she saw that no one meant to blame her. Dear lady. Sir! My lady asked us to give this to you. Thank you for your help just now. Just when Gervais and his group were enjoying themselves again at the table, two golden knights suddenly came to the table. They were the men of the enchanting woman who had just been beaten to the ground by the minotaur. The two of them each held an exquisite jade box in their hands and handed it to Adela and Gervais respectively. After hearing this, Gervais and the others did not immediately accept the gift, but looked in the direction of the enchanting woman. But at this time, the seat of the enchanting woman was empty, and she could no longer be found. Thank you very much. Gervais was the first to retract his gaze and reached out to take the jade box from the golden knight's hand. That woman's identity is not simple, and the things she sends out are naturally not bad either. As the saying goes, don't give up. Don't give up. Gervais is now poor and working hard to make money and prepare to return to Eurasia. Besides, the gift wasn't hot to his hands when he held it. He and Adela had just made a move. Therefore, Gervais acted first to avoid having to wait for Adela, the wealthy young lady, to verbally refuse. After Gervais took over the jade box, the golden knight bowed respectfully and then stepped away. When Adela saw that Gervais had already accepted the gift, she could only say thank you and also accepted the jade box. Harry! Look what it is! After the two golden knights who gave gifts left, Lucky immediately spoke to Gervais in a low voice. Gervais and Adela were able to obtain gifts from that enchanting woman at the same time, which made them envious and jealous. Fortunately, Harry was Lucky's subordinate, allowing him to outdo the three of Devere. So Lucky's jealousy weakened a lot. After all, as the second young master of Hika Holy City, he does not lack any treasures. Okay. Gervais was also worried that he would not be able to recognize the treasure when he got it later. So he nodded, put the jade box on the table, and opened it in front of everyone. It turns out to be deep-sea glass gold. The moment Gervais's jade box was opened, Lucky's eyes widened in disbelief. And he almost drooled. Several other people also had shocked expressions. What is deep-sea glass gold? Seeing the reaction of Lucky and others, Gervais knew that this must be something good. However, this was the first time Gervais had seen the transparent stone in the jade box, which was only the size of a fingernail and had various colors. So he quickly asked, Upon hearing Gervais's question, Lucky immediately raised his head 
and looked at Gervais with painful eyes. He said slowly, Harry, although you are a wild mage, why don't you even know about Deep Sea Legion? Deep Sea Legion is the treasure that every title knight and magician dreams of. As long as you have it, no matter what weapon or equipment you build, it can be upgraded to a higher level. For example, if you want to make a magician staff, the original materials can only create a spirit level staff. But after adding it, you can directly upgrade the staff to a legendary level. After saying that, Lucky looked at the jade box in front of Gervais again, his eyes blazing. I see. After listening to Lachi's explanation, Gervais directly put away the jade box and put it in his arms without saying a word. With such a precious thing, he was worried that if he kept it on the table, Lachi would snatch it away later. The holy continent is rich in products. So weapons and equipment naturally have good and bad distinctions. The weapons and equipment here can be divided into ordinary equipment, spiritual equipment, legendary equipment, epic equipment, and immortal equipment. Gervais even saw a book saying that there were artifacts. But Gervais didn't know whether the artifact existed. Ordinary equipment is naturally those ordinary swords and armors. And even the mithril sword can only be regarded as an ordinary weapon. Spirit enchanted equipment is engraved with runes. Or inlaid with weapons such as Warcraft crystals. For example, Gervais's magic staff is the lowest spirit enchanted weapon. As for the legendary equipment, Gervais has never seen it before. I think Adela's space bracelet can be regarded as legendary equipment. But this deep sea glass gold can directly upgrade the equipment to a level. So you can imagine how precious it is. Seeing Gervais quickly put away the deep sea glass gold. Everyone's face was filled with disappointment. Such things are really rare. As the name suggests, deep sea glass gold appears in the deep sea. Which is extremely rare to see. The deep sea is the territory of the sea tribe. So the chance for humans to obtain this deep sea glass gold is very small. Every time it appears, people will be affected by it. Scramble. Harry. Master Lucky. I don't want to sell it now. If I plan to sell it in the future, I will definitely come to you. Gervais knew what Lucky wanted to say. And immediately blocked Lucky's words. Hearing what Gervais said, Lachi could only shut up. Gervais is now a person recognized by the holy tree of the holy city of Hika. Naturally. He does not dare to have other ideas. So if he wants to get the piece of deep sea glass gold in Gervais's hands, he can only rely on trading. Next, everyone continued to eliminate the food on the table. But at this time, except for Gervais and Adela who had a good appetite, the others lacked appetite and did not eat much food. When the meal was over, Lucky took the lead to settle the bill and also compensated for the losses caused by the battle just now. Then everyone went to the guest rooms on the second floor of the hotel to recharge their batteries. After Gervais returned to the room, he put away the worthless gifts, then found an excuse to talk to Lucky and left the hotel alone. He was still thinking about earning energy points. So he was going to go out and find out the whereabouts of the group of orcs. Chapter 521 Fate is Destined Gervais came to the streets of the small town alone. At this time, the streets were still very busy, and most of the people passing by were wearing weapons and armor. Because we are on the edge of the sunset forest. Those who come here are either adventurers or wanted criminals who cannot stay within the alliance. Gervais first found a shop selling potions. This potion shop was a rare luxury stone house in the town. But the business seemed a bit deserted. And not many people came in and out. However, the pharmacy is a big business. And it basically starts with silver coins. So it is natural that there are fewer people. Dear magician, what do you want to buy? When Gervais walked into the store. He was immediately greeted warmly by a middle-aged man. During this time, there was news that there was a treasure in the Sunset Forest, which made them a huge profit. Moreover, Gervais is clearly dressed as a magician. If this business is done, it can be worth several ordinary night adventurers. Do you have any powerful anesthetic here? Gervais directly explained his intention. Anesthetic medicine? There are some. But the medicine is not very effective. At most, it can only ensure that low-level monsters will have an anesthetic effect after eating it. The shop owner didn't dare to lie to the magician Gervais. Otherwise, he would be in more trouble with the magician than with the adventurer. How many bottles? Your Majesty the Magician. Twenty silver coins per bottle. Good. Gervais nodded. However, Gervais didn't even have a copper coin on him. So if he wanted to buy the potion, he had to find a way to get some money first. So he continued. By the way, shopkeeper, do you accept magic recovery potion here? As he spoke, Gervais took out a bottle of light green potion from his pocket. 
which was one of the three bottles of recovery potion that Lachi had prepared for him. Mr. Magician, how many bottles of recovery potion do you have? The shop owner became interested after hearing what Gervais said, and his smile became even brighter after seeing the light green potion. Just this bottle. Oh, Mr. Magician, if you want to sell this bottle of recovery potion, we are willing to pay you two gold coins. Although there was only one bottle, the shop owner was not disappointed. Anyway, he made a profit. Three gold coins. When I purchased a recovery potion of this quality, I needed five gold coins. Gervais had already learned about the market price of this magic recovery potion and immediately started to counteroffer. Deal. Your Majesty the Magician. The shop owner simply nodded and took the magic potion from Gervais's hand, confirmed the seal, and then handed over three gold coins. There is no need to worry about selling magic potions in Sunset Forest now. His inventory is almost at the bottom. Even if it costs six gold coins a bottle, there will be people asking for it. After all, this thing can be regarded as a life-saving thing, and it can quickly restore magic power in an emergency. Gervais only took two gold coins and said to the shopkeeper, I want a bottle of anesthetic. Soon, the shopkeeper brought Gervais a bottle of black potion, which was only a small bottle the size of a thumb. However, this bottle can make several low-level monsters sleep for an hour. It is the favorite potion for those adventurers who specialize in capturing low-level monsters. They will smear this potion into food to lure the low-level monsters to take it. Putting away the black potion and extra silver coins, Gervais continued to ask the shop owner, Shopkeeper, do you know where the alien orcs in this town usually live? Your Majesty the Magician, the orcs in the town usually live in the west side of the town. There are many orcs there, and there is a hotel owned by the orcs. So if they are orc adventurers, they will usually stay there. The shop owner was very enthusiastic about this customer, who made him three gold coins in one fell swoop, and answered Gervais's question directly. Anyway, Gervais was asking about the orcs, and the shop owner didn't care what Gervais was looking for from the orcs. Okay, thank you, your majesty. Magician, walk slowly. Come back anytime if you need anything in the future. After getting the news he wanted, Gervais simply walked out of the pharmacy store. After leaving the pharmacy shop, Gervais did not immediately go to the west of the town, but went directly to the blacksmith shop. When Gervais came to the blacksmith shop, the bearded dwarf was banging on the newly formed weapon with a giant hammer. Gervais came directly to him and shouted, Blacksmith! Human mage! What do you want to build when you come to Dadak? Dadak is the most skilled blacksmith in Sunset Town. Hearing Gervais's greeting, the burly dwarf, who was less than four meters tall, stopped forging iron and asked Gervais, you seem to be the only blacksmith shop in this sunset town. If you say you are the best, you are the best. Gervais did not expect that in addition to drinking. Dwarves also like to boast. Blacksmith Dodak, I have two things here that I want you to help me build. Let's see how much they cost. As he spoke, Gervais took out a drawing, which showed a hollow tube and a Mitsubishi thorn. In fact, Gervais really wanted to buy a long sword. But now everyone thinks that they are magicians so the long sword must not be equipped. After all, the character cannot be destroyed. However, he was going to harvest energy points at night, so he still needed necessary weapons. So a bloodletting weapon, like the Mitsubishi Thorn was most suitable for dealing with strong orcs. Well, this stick with three blades is very strange. But what is this iron pipe used for? The dwarf saw the two things on the drawing, took a sip of the wine in the flask, and asked Gervais, No comment. Blacksmith Dodak. I want to forge this three-edged sword with mithril. The iron pipe can be made of ordinary iron. How much does it cost, and how long does it take? They are two small items. They can be completed in an hour. Please give me one gold coin and twenty silver coins in total. Come pick it up at this time tomorrow. Dadak still has several weapons that have not been forged yet. Hearing Gervais's flat refusal, the dwarf said nothing and directly quoted the price and time. The price is quite expensive. Mithril is more abundant in this world than in Eurasia and there is no monopoly by forces like the church. So it costs about two or three gold coins per gram. This Mitsubishi thorn does not require much mithril. So the rest is basically the dwarves crafting expenses. I'll give you ten more silver coins. Give them to me before dark. Gervais needed these things tonight. So naturally he was not prepared to wait until tomorrow. Make a deal. Dwarves are not blind. Apart from being more upright and shorter, they are actually no different from ordinary humans. After confirming the matter of weapon forging, Gervais headed to the west of the town. The west side of the town is indeed the living area of the orcs. 
There are many more orcs than humans here. Gervais came to a huge stone house. Where many orcs with weapons came in and out. After just watching Gervais for a moment. He left. The location has been determined. And now of course, he will go back to the hotel to have a good rest. That night. The weather is clear tonight, and the moon is bright. Gervais changed out of the magician's robe and wore an ordinary linen gown. With a half-old leather armor on top. Which Gervais bought from the blacksmith's shop for ten silver coins. Although this leather armor is secondhand. The iron pieces on it are forged from mithril. So the defense is pretty good. Gervais was walking on the streets of the town at this time. Having restored his true appearance. If it weren't for the long sword missing from his waist. He would be no different from an ordinary adventurer. Soon. Gervais arrived at the Orc Hotel in the west of the town. At this time. The door of the Orc Hotel had been closed. And the surroundings were quiet. Gervais did not plan to enter through the gate. But went directly to the backyard of the hotel and reached the courtyard wall with a slight jump. After looking around to make sure there was nothing unusual, Gervais came to the eaves of the hotel and started climbing. One advantage of a stone house in another world is that there are many places where you can use your strength to climb. Soon, Gervais climbed directly to the second floor of the hotel. After arriving on the second floor, Gervais moved to the nearest window and looked inside through the gap. As the saying goes, fate is destined, and the kobold named Kirby lived in this house during the day. Chapter 522 System Upgrade At this time, the kobold had already fallen asleep, and the half of his head burned by Adela's holy light was particularly conspicuous. I let you escape the disaster during the day, and I'll take the knife on you first at night. Gervais gently took out a hollow iron pipe from his waist. The iron pipe was about half a meter long, with a very small hole in the middle. After taking out the iron pipe, Gervais turned out an anesthetic wrapped in rags and a pack of fine needles at his waist. This thin needle was bought by Gervais from an ordinary grocery store. It is used by ordinary people to repair rags. However, Gervais has slightly modified it and wrapped a little cotton on its tail. This thing was thought of by Gervais on a whim. In addition to being generally physically stronger than humans, orcs also inherit the vigilance of beasts. Therefore, Gervais was not sure whether he could sneak into the room quietly without being noticed. So he remembered the scenes in the movies in his previous life and used this blow dart to lead the attack and there happened to be paralysis potions prepared by alchemists on the holy continent. As for why Gervais didn't buy the highly toxic potion, one was that it was too expensive and Gervais couldn't afford it. Otherwise the cheap potion would not poison orcs with vitality comparable to low-level warcraft. The second is that many highly toxic potions are not meant to seal the throat with blood. It is impossible to quietly kill the orcs, as long as one of them makes a big noise. Gervais's plan to harvest energy points will be ruined. Whoosh! As Gervais inserted the thin needle coated with paralysis into the iron pipe, he blew hard. And with a pop, the needle flew towards the back of the cobalt's neck several meters away, because the anesthetic was applied. When the fine needle penetrated the cobalt's skin accurately, the cobalt didn't notice anything and still slept peacefully. Seeing this scene, Gervais finally felt relieved. The next step was to wait for two minutes for the anesthetic to take effect. Two minutes later, Gervais carefully lifted the boards on the window and slipped inside. After arriving at the house, Gervais quickly took out the three-edged thorn, and then slowly touched the kobold lying on the wooden bed. Just when Gervais came to the kobold's bed, he suddenly saw the kobold's ears moving, as if he noticed something. Then the kobold slowly opened his eyes, and looked at Gervais. When Gervais saw the scene, he didn't dare to be negligent. He quickly grabbed the quilt on the side, and stuffed it into the mouth of the kobold, who was opening his mouth to scream. Puff! 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 although the anesthetic could not completely put the cobalt into a coma due to the dosage. It also made the cobalt's reaction slower. After being covered by Gervais, the cobalt still wanted to struggle, but he felt weak and weak, just when its eyes widened in fear. It felt a chill on its body, and then three slight pops came from the room. After dozens of seconds, the cobalt's eyes lost their luster. Ding! Get one energy point. Phew! It seems that buying anesthetic medicine is the right choice. Ha ha. I got the energy points. Hearing the prompt from the system, Gervais knew that the kobold was absolutely freezing. So he simply let go of his hand pressing the quilt. And then became very happy. Well, keep up the good work. The holy continent is really a treasure. And I'm a little reluctant to leave. Thinking to himself, Gervais carefully climbed over the wall again. And then went to another window. Gervais glanced inside and found that the person sleeping in this room was a pig-headed man. So Gervais followed suit, firing a shot at the pig-headed man first, 
and then waited for two minutes before carefully tipping into the house. Puff, 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 ding, at one system energy point. Next, Gervais became more and more proficient in assassination. He didn't care whether the people living in the hotel were Gassang's men. Anyway, he would kill anyone he saw who could, because the people staying in this hotel are basically foreign orcs. That is, they come from the orc royal court. These orcs are not friendly. They are absolute mortal enemies of mankind. If they meet in the wild, most of the time it will be life and death. So Gervais does not have any psychological burden. Phew! It's 9 o'clock energy point. The harvest tonight is good. One more vote and then go back. Gervais looked at the anesthetic potion in his hand. There was not much left. Only enough for a little more than one injection at most. So he thought about rounding up the energy points and went back. After making up his mind, Gervais quietly came to the next window again and looked inside. However, after seeing the situation inside, Gervais hesitated slightly. The orc in this room turned out to be the tower named Quick. Do you want to take action? Gervais was a little confused. The strength of this minotaur was that of a golden knight. He was not sure whether the same dose of anesthetic could anesthetize the minotaur. If one shot doesn't work, I'll give you two shots. After thinking about it, Gervais finally decided to make one. Although there was not much anesthesia, it was a dose of one and a half shots. Gervais thought he could give it a try. But he always felt uncomfortable if he couldn't round up the sum. As for finding another target, you need to climb to the front of the street. One or two pedestrians will pass by on the street from time to time. And Gervais is worried that he will be bumped into. Whoosh. Whoosh. Soon, two thin needles coated with anesthetic were nailed to the torrent's skin. Two minutes later, Gervais climbed into the room carefully and then moved towards the Minotaur's bed. Puff! Roar! When Gervais came to the Minotaur's bedside, the Minotaur did not notice Gervasi's arrival. It was not known whether the dose of anesthetic was increased. So Gervais used all his strength to pierce the Mitsubishi thorn into the Minotaur's neck. But just when Gervais thought everything would be completed smoothly, the Tauren suddenly woke up due to severe pain. Gervais was originally on guard. The moment he stabbed the Tauren, he covered its mouth with a quilt. Unexpectedly, the Tauren's strength was surprisingly strong, and it was not comparable to the Cobalt's. So the huge roar of the Tauren was still heard. Miscalculation! Gervais cursed secretly, and began to ignore it. He gave up blocking the Minotaur's mouth, and instead quickly waved the three-edged thorn and stabbed the Minotaur's neck three times in a row. Ding! Add two energy points. Ding! Congratulations to the host for taking the initiative to earn energy points to meet the upgrade conditions. The system starts to upgrade. Developed. Just when Gervais was about to turn around and escape, he suddenly heard two system prompts. The previous depression was instantly filled with excitement in my heart. The system has been upgraded. This is what Gervais has been looking forward to. But now was not the time to check the system panel. Because he could already hear huge noises coming from the hotel. So Gervais quickly ran towards the window. Boom. Boom. Only then did Gervais fly through the window and escape. The door to the room of the tower and quick was also broken open. And the person who broke in was none other than the half-orc Jersang, who had the cultivation of a white flag knight. The Gesang orc glanced at Gervais who jumped out of the window. And then at the tower and on the bed covered with blood. And his heart suddenly burned with anger. Quick! Damn it! I'm going to kill you! With an angry roar, Gesang quickly jumped out of the window and chased Gervais, who was running wildly not far away. Chapter 523 Good Samaritan Go to H. L. Gervais was only a silver knight at this time. How could he possibly outrun Gesang? In just a few seconds, Gesang had caught up to Gervais more than 10 meters behind him. Then Gesang raised his sword and slashed at Gervais. Gervais sensed the danger behind him and suddenly screamed strangely. He quickly dodged to his side. In an instant, a red light struck Gervais's original position and a deep ditch suddenly appeared there, filled with dirt and gravel. Splash. Although Gervais narrowly escaped Gesang's blow, due to this delay, Gesang had once again approached six or seven meters behind Gervais. Damn it! I'm going to lose blood this time! Feeling that Gesang was getting closer and closer, Gervais cursed secretly. He didn't dare to exaggerate, and immediately prepared to open the system panel and eat the black kiwi fruit that increased his strength by fifty times. After all, life is the most important thing. But in this way, tonight's work is in vain. The system is being upgraded. Please wait. Damn! This cheating system will cost you your life. But when Gervais used his mind to open the system panel, he was shocked to find that the cheating system was still being upgraded. 
Gervais suddenly started to curse. Was this system obviously trying to trick him? He was in a critical moment now. Cutting human. Die. Gassang didn't care what Gervais was talking nonsense now. When he saw Gervais dodge his first blow, he became even more angry and slashed out the second knife without hesitation. I saw another frightening red light slashing towards Gervais. I'll dodge. Gervais also noticed Gassang's second slash and quickly dodged sideways again to avoid Gassang's second slash even more thrillingly. You cheat the system. If you cheat me again, I'm going to screw you. The system is being upgraded. Please wait. It's just that although Gervais once again escaped Gassang's attack, Gassang had already completely caught up with him. If this continues, Gervais will definitely lose his hair in the next second. Gervais used all his strength to rush forward and tried hard to open the system. Unfortunately, the system seemed determined to trick him and the upgrade was still not completed. Cutting human, you exceeded my expectations, but this time you will definitely die. A silver knight evaded his attacks again and again, which made him feel that he had lost all face. It would be difficult to relieve the hatred in his heart without breaking Gervais into thousands of pieces. Gassang almost exhausted his whole body power let out this roar, and then slashed at Gervais's back again. Grass, hearing Gassang's roar and feeling the whirring sound of a long knife slashing from behind. Gervais felt that he was about to confess here. When? But at this moment, I suddenly heard the collision of iron tools. And then I saw a middle-aged man walking out of the road. Asshole! Who are you? His fatal blow was blocked. Gassang's anger could no longer be described in words. And he felt that he was on the verge of going berserk. The people who came to kill you! The middle-aged man ignored Gervais, who ran past him. But slowly walked towards Gassang. His steps were like strolling in a garden. Who are you exactly? After hearing the middle-aged man's words, Gassang's face became solemn, because he could feel that this middle-aged man was much stronger than him. No one can survive that night after insulting my young lady. Orc, you have provoked the wrong people, and tonight is the day you die. With that said, the middle-aged man pulled out the long sword from his waist and walked towards Gassang unhurriedly. If you want my life, then you must die first. Gassang instantly remembered the two beautiful human women he had seen in the hotel during the day but he was not sure which of them were subordinates. But this is no longer important. Gassang is very confident in his own strength. Even if he cannot kill the opponent, escaping should not be a problem. So he took the lead and wanted to see the true strength of this middle-aged human being. Don't overestimate your capabilities. When the middle-aged man saw Gassang coming towards him, his expression showed no signs of fluctuation and his expression remained calm. Just when Gassang rushed in front of the middle-aged man, preparing to chop the damn middle-aged man to death, Gassang felt that his eyes suddenly blurred, and he actually lost sight of the middle-aged man. How can it be? The middle-aged man's speed was so fast that he actually appeared behind Gassang. The knife falls from the hand. Puff! When Gassang reacted, his green head with fangs had already flown into the air, and blood spurted out from his neck onto the street. Knight of the Black Flag! This was Gassang's last thought before his head fell to the ground. Huh? Good luck and good fortune. Fortunately, a kind-hearted person came. At this time, Gervais had already run near the hotel where he was staying, seeing that there was no figure of Gassang chasing behind him. Gervais finally breathed a sigh of relief. He didn't stop to see the result just now, because he knew that since the middle-aged man dared to take action and could easily block Gassang's killing blow for him, it meant that the middle-aged man's strength was definitely no worse than Gassang's. So Gervais left there directly. After all, not only would he not be able to help by staying there, but he might also become a scapegoat. Change your clothes and sneak over to take a look. Arriving in front of the bushes where he hid the magician's rope, Gervais quickly changed out of his clothes and armor. After packing the leather armor and other clothes and hiding them, Gervais's face turned into Harry's again. And then, he hurried towards the original route that Gassang was chasing after Gervais in disguise. So as long as he was careful, there should be no problem. And at this time, his system was finally upgraded successfully and he could take out the black kiwi fruit immediately when necessary. Three minutes later, Gervais carefully came to the place where the middle-aged man had just appeared. From a distance, Gervais saw a body lying on the ground with its head missing. Who's? Just because the road was a little dark, Gervais, who was standing far away, was not sure who the body on the street belonged to. So he was suddenly shocked. If it belonged to that middle-aged man, Gervais would naturally not want to see it. If it were Gassang, Gervais would also be surprised by the strength of the middle-aged man, who could actually kill Gassang, who had the strength of a white flag knight. After carefully observing from a distance for a while, 
and making sure that no ambush was found. Gervais cautiously moved towards the body. It belongs to Gassang. What kind of strength does that middle-aged man have? When Gervais got closer, he immediately saw that it was Gassang's body. He had only left for a few minutes. But Gassang was already dead and dismembered. And there were no signs of a violent fight nearby, indicating that Gassang died very quickly, which further demonstrated the terrifying strength of the middle-aged man. No matter what his strength is, it will be fine if Gassang dies. After being surprised for a moment, Gervais stopped thinking about it. Gervais came to the side of Gassang's body, squatted down and groped around on his body. So poor. Gassang fumbled for a moment. And Weiss cursed secretly. Gassang didn't even have a money bag on him. Which disappointed Gersang. Gervais didn't know that the orcs were already poor. And Gassang was chasing in a hurry. He only saluted in the hotel. So naturally, he didn't have anything with him. The long knife in Gassang's hand had obviously been taken away by the middle-aged man. There was nothing gained from touching the corpse. So Gervais stopped staying and turned back to the hotel. He was worried that some orcs would come later. This Gassang obviously had some identity. If he was discovered by other orcs, it would be troublesome. Chapter 524 Surprises Come One After Another When he returned to the hotel, Gervais also did not go through the main entrance because the hotel door was closed. After taking a look and seeing that there was no one around, Gervais climbed up the wall of the second floor, came to his window, and got in. Back in the room. Gervais quickly washed himself and lay down directly on the bed. He is still thinking about upgrading his system. The system is cheating. Everyone in this holy continent is full of talents. You have to work harder. Otherwise you will always be wandering on the edge of life and death. This is not what I want. Only after arriving on the holy continent did Gervais realize how weak he was. Any guard could have the strength of a white flag knight. Although I can defeat two or three of them by myself. It will be quite a struggle if they encounter the golden knight. Lying on the bed and adjusting to the most comfortable position, Gervais muttered silently before opening the system panel. The system has been upgraded again. And the most intuitive thing is of course the appearance of the system panel. Every time you upgrade the system panel will become more beautiful and refined. And the inscriptions on the frame will become more and more detailed. But Gervais no longer cares about the appearance of the system panel. No one else can see it anyway. What he needs is practicality. Gervais first looked at the left side of the system panel to see if there were any new changes here. This site really made Gervais discover something different. Under the original search button for searching for elf bugs, a button appeared again, with the word search marked on it. What's the difference between searching and exploring? Gervais looked at the extra button with some confusion. But fortunately, the system already had a manual after the upgrade, and Gervais quickly put his mind on the exploration button. Exploration, after activation, you can explore for treasures. Note, the type of exploration cannot be specified. And the exploration results are random. Wow ha ha. System. You performed well this time. It's really awesome. I'm going to get rich. After reading the detailed explanation, Gervais immediately started dancing excitedly. This system is so powerful. With this function, he still needs to worry about money. While excited, Gervais suddenly looked at the small words below the buttons. You can choose to explore the level of energy consumption. 1 energy point. 10 energy points. 100 energy points. Huh? There are actually different grades. After seeing a few small words clearly, Gervais was slightly stunned at first. But he was relieved the next moment. After all, there is a difference between treasures and treasures. And it is normal to distinguish them according to the energy points used. After all, this cheating system will not let you have sex in vain. I'm really looking forward to what kind of treasures I can get. Gervais muttered in his heart and then moved his eyes away from the left side of the system panel. There were no other changes here. Only the exploration function was added. As for trying out the search function, Gervais planned to use it tomorrow. It was still in the hotel in the middle of the night. And even if he really found something, he couldn't find it. Anyway, they will enter the sunset forest tomorrow, and it will be much easier to search in the forest by then. As Gervais moved his eyes to the right side of the system, which is the system mall, his eyes suddenly widened. This is a red kiwi. This is an orange kiwi haha. -ha. At this time, there were actually a few more kiwi fruits in Gervais's system mall. They were the permanent kiwi fruits that he had drawn using the cheating wheel. This means that if Gervais wants to get the red kiwi fruit again in the future, he does not need to participate in the lottery again. Although the orange kiwi fruit Gervais is not very cold. After all, it only increases the affinity that cannot be seen or touched. But the red kiwi fruit is different. 
it increases the cultivation speed 15 times for one month, as long as Gervais has enough energy points. One year of practice using red kiwi fruit is equivalent to 15 years of practice for others. Even the sacred tree of the lucky family is not so awesome. Gervais had read in the book that even the most powerful sacred plants could only speed up cultivation by about eight times, and they could only practice in one place. However, Gervais can practice wherever he is as long as he takes the red kiwi fruit. Today, the system gave Gervais one surprise after another. He felt that it was really worth it for him to work half a night and almost belch. Otherwise, without tonight's busy work, he really doesn't know when he will be able to complete the system upgrade conditions for earning energy points. After all, before the system informed him, Gervais had no idea what requirements were needed to upgrade the system. So he would not deliberately pursue this aspect. At the same time, Gervais discovered another thing tonight. That is, killing the tower indirectly allowed him to earn two energy points. The strength of the kobolds is equivalent to the silver knight, but the strength of the minotaur is equivalent to the golden knight. So, does it mean that the higher the level, the more energy can be obtained after killing this orc? Gervais already had a guess in his mind. We have to work hard to improve our strength. Gervais was full of motivation when he thought that if he could kill a powerful orc like Kasang, he might be able to obtain more energy points. So with a thought, Gervais immediately exchanged it for a red kiwi fruit. After redeeming the red kiwi fruit, Gervais looked at the energy tank that still had 25 points, gritted his teeth and looked at the big turntable. Now that he had a way to earn energy points, he was going to draw one more kiwi fruit. Whether it is black kiwi fruit or kiwi fruit of other colors, it can strengthen his current strength. The big cheating turntable. Start. After making up his mind, Gervais thought, and instantly the pointer of the cheating wheel began to rotate, and the energy points he possessed also dropped to 15 points. After a while, as the speed of the big turntable's pointer slowly dropped, it finally settled on a brown kiwi fruit. Hey! Could it be that because I killed a few more orcs today, my luck has improved? This time, Gervais did not dislike black kiwi fruit as before, and had the mentality that both were acceptable. But this cheating system just gave him a brown kiwi fruit with permanent effect. This made Gervais himself feel a little uncomfortable. Today's surprises came one after another, making him feel as unbelievable as winning the lottery in a row. But the fact was right in front of him. And of course, he chose to accept it happily, and hoped that the cheating system would remain so powerful in the future. Next, Gervais quickly looked towards the frame above. And the brown kiwi fruit had already appeared in the frame. As Gervais thought, the explanation of the efficacy of brown kiwi fruit also appeared in front of him. Brown kiwi fruit. This is a magical kiwi fruit. It is a treasure that foodies dream of. When you take brown kiwi fruit, your digestion ability will be strengthened and the energy absorption of any food can be greatly enhanced. Strengthen digestion ability. Ha ha. Very good. Although Gervais is not an experienced foodie, he was very excited to get this brown kiwi fruit. As a time traveler, Gervais certainly knows that only a small amount of energy can be absorbed from the food eaten by humans. And there are still many nutrients that will be wasted. But if the digestive ability is strengthened, it will be different. The energy that used to take a big bowl of food can now be obtained in just one bite. Of course, it's not getting nutrients from ordinary foods that really excites Gervais. What he was thinking about was how strengthening his digestive ability would help him increase his strength. For example, if Gervais eats a mouthful of Warcraft meat in the future, it will be worth a pound of meat he eats now. Wouldn't this greatly increase the speed of his cultivation? Human appetite is only that big. Even if there is endless world of Warcraft meat for Gervais to use. But he can only eat so much every day. And the little energy he absorbs is better than nothing. But it will be different now. At least the Warcraft meat can really speed up his cultivation in the future. Chapter 525 Using the Search Function Early the next morning, Gervais was awakened by Lucky's knock on the door. Harry! It's time to get up! We'll set off after breakfast! Okay! Gervais usually gets up very early in the morning. After all, as a titled knight and magician, he must have more energy than ordinary people. But it was already midnight when he went to kill the orcs last night. And he messed with the system panel for a long time when he came back. It was almost dawn when he fell asleep. After being woken up, Gervais immediately got dressed, washed up and headed to the first floor of the hotel. At this time, Lucky, Adela and others were all sitting at the dining table. And breakfast was also ready. Harry, come on. We'll set off as soon as we finish eating. And we'll stay in the sunset forest for the next few days. When Lachi saw Gervais coming down, he greeted Gervais over very warmly. 
yesterday. Gervais gave him a lot of shame. Comparing him to Dever's three magic apprentices. He is becoming more and more satisfied with the wild mage he recruited. Okay. Master Lucky. Gervais was not polite and responded directly to the empty seat in front of the table. Sat down. And then began to eat the food on the table. Although this is a no-nonsense zone. It only relies on the mountains to eat. The sunset forest is extremely vast. And there are naturally a lot of monsters. So even breakfast is mainly based on Warcraft meat. Gervais picked up the knife and fork. Cut himself a large piece of Warcraft bacon. And then started to feast on it. He was looking forward to the effects of the brown kiwi he drank last night. As Gervais chewed slowly. When the piece of meat was completely swallowed into his belly. He immediately felt the changes in his body. It's really developed this time. Gervais's eyes lit up. Because the effect of the true color kiwi fruit was even better than what he had imagined last night. This piece of Warcraft meat was worth the energy he could get from eating half a meal. Harry, is this barbecue delicious? Lockie had almost finished eating at this time. Seeing Gervais's eyes suddenly light up. He was a little confused. So he asked. Very good. Mainly because I'm a little hungry. When Lachi asked this question, Gervais quickly calmed down his expression and then began to eat in silence. Next, Gervais ate a total of more than a pound of monster meat, which was enough for him to practice for a day. This makes Gervais particularly excited. Even if he just eats, drinks and has fun every day in the future, it will be equivalent to practicing in the elf bug space for a day. After finishing the meal, everyone packed up their ritual equipment and set off again to the Sunset Forest. Let's go! Sunset Forest, as its name suggests, is in the direction where the sun sets. As the guards of the Silver Knight, who had been living in the backyard arrived, they and more than a hundred people headed directly along the main street towards the west of the town. The group of them walked through the crowded streets of the town and soon passed in front of the Orc Hotel where Gervais harvested energy points last night. I saw hundreds of Orc warriors gathered here at this time. Each of these Orcs had murderous eyes and fierce eyes. Passers-by all took a detour nervously after seeing them. What's going on? Why do these orcs look like they're looking for someone to fight for? Seeing that the atmosphere here was obviously not right. Lucky muttered to Gervais in a low voice. Of course Gervais knew what was going on. Ten orcs including Sanger died last night. Sanger also had the cultivation of the white flag knight. It would be strange if these orcs didn't go berserk. But on the surface, Gervais pretended not to know why. I don't know either. But orcs are inherently ferocious. So it's not surprising. After listening to Gervais's words, Lockie just nodded. As long as there is no strong man like Kasang, their group is not afraid of anyone. Then Gervais and his party walked out of Sunset Town along the street. The edge of Sunset Forest can be reached three miles away from the town. And just after Gervais and the others left, there was a pig-headed man at the door of the Orc Hotel, looking in the direction they left and rolling his eyes. This pig-headed man is also one of Kasang's subordinates. He escaped death last night, because he slept in a guest room near the street, although he didn't know who killed Kelsang. Kelsang's eldest brother told them to look for all the clues they could find and avenge Kelsang. And this pig-headed man had a deep impression on Adela. Yesterday, this female human scared off Kelsang with a scroll. Thinking about this, the pig-headed man walked into the hotel. More than ten minutes later, Gervais and his party finally arrived at the Sunset Forest. Their first target is where the Tulip family and several other families are according to the two guards who were inquiring about the information. It would take about half a day to get to the location of the Tulip family. So the group of them started to rush on their way non-stop. Although the trees in the Sunset Forest were dense and the roads were difficult to navigate, their progress was not slow because there were many guards opening the way. After half a day of driving, they were finally about to arrive at the location of the Tulip family because they had already seen signs made by several nearby Tulip families. This was a warning to others not to intrude. To be on the safe side, Lucky discussed and asked everyone to stop by the creek where they were, preparing to finish lunch, recharge their batteries, and then enter the area of several tulip families. After all, this is the Sunset Forest, and the treasure is touching people's hearts. They are not sure whether there will be danger later. Seeing the team stopped, Gervais found a clean place to do it, and then couldn't wait to open his system panel. He now needs to try out the new functions of his system panel. As Gervais pressed the search button, a prompt box quickly popped up on the system panel. The options shown above are 1 point, 10 points, and 100 points. This was the first time Gervais used the exploration function, so he naturally chose to spend a few energy points conservatively. When he determined the number of points to spend, a small radar immediately appeared on the system panel. 
exactly the same as when he was looking for elf insect amber. Gervais suddenly became excited. He wanted to see what treasures he could find. Master Lucky, I'll go over there for convenience. After determining the direction of the red dot, Gervais stood up and said H, low to Lucky. Okay, Harry, don't go too far. Be careful. Lachi didn't pay attention. But this was deep in the sunset forest. And Gervais was a magician. So he reminded him with concern. After all, the treasure hunt was about to begin. And he was still counting on Gervais to help. But he didn't want Gervais to be in any danger. Okay, Master Lucky, he replied quickly. And then Gervais slipped into the woods. After running a certain distance and making sure that no one could see him again. Gervais took out the Mitsubishi thorn from under his magic robe, then used his fighting spirit to fly towards the red dot. The scope of this search function seemed to be much further than the search for elf bugs. Gervais's fighting spirit was at its peak. After running for seven or eight minutes, he finally reached the location of the red dot. There is a mountain stream terrain with a drop of seven to eight meters, and the red dot is located right in the middle of the mountain stream. Gervais came to the edge of the cliff and looked down for a moment and soon saw a small tree in the exposed place in the middle of the mountain waterfall. There was a solitary tomato-sized fruit hanging on this small tree, and Gervais could even smell the fragrance coming from the fruit. First level magic potion? Gervais's eyes immediately brightened. It is extremely difficult to find a wild potion in Eurasia. As for the holy continent and the land of God's fall, because there is sufficient spiritual energy, there are a lot of magic potions in the wild, but it is not that easy to find them. The people of the Holy Continent also divided potions into six levels. First level potions. Second level potions. Third level potions to sixth level potions. Level six potions are the most precious potions. Not only are they powerful, they are also rare. The magic grapes and magic coconut palm trees owned by Gervais in Eurasia are only first class magic medicines. After confirming that the red fruit was the treasure he had spent some energy points to find, Gervais stopped delaying and landed steadily in the center of the mountain waterfall with an easy jump. It's not a bad loss. After smelling the fragrance of the red fruit in front of him again, Gervais was about to reach out and pick off the red fruit. Whoosh! But at this moment, Gervais suddenly noticed a sound breaking through the water next to him, and saw a big white fish in the water spraying water arrows at him. Gervais quickly turned aside to avoid the water arrow, and then stabbed the big white fish directly with the Mitsubishi thorn in his hand without thinking. Puff! The mithril forged Mitsubishi thorn pierced the head of the big white fish hard. The big white fish just flopped in the water a few times, and then its round white belly turned up. I almost forgot what the book said. After dealing with the weak monster white fish, Gervais remembered the reminder recorded in the storybook. Not only can magic plants be consumed by humans or used to refine potions, they are also of great benefit to Warcraft. Therefore, magic plants in the wild are often occupied by monsters. And this is exactly the case with the magic plant in front of Gervais. It's just that this potion is only a first level potion. So the level of the monster it protects is not high. After taking care of the big white fish, Gervais quickly put away the red potion fruit and then pulled up the big white fish's body. Good guy. He weighs at least 40 pounds. Gervais waited a little and felt that the big white fish was heavy. Although the strength of this Warcraft fish is a little weaker, it is still the same size as Warcraft flesh so Gervais is naturally prepared to carry it back. More than ten minutes later, Gervais returned to the camp carrying a big white fish. Harry, why have you been gone for so long? I just sent people to look for you, but couldn't find you. Seeing Gervais coming back, Lachi immediately asked Gervais. He was really worried that something had happened to Gervais. Whoa, what a big fish. Adela, look. Xenia's attention was focused on the big fish that Gervais carried back. Adela also kept looking at her with her beautiful eyes widened. But her character and upbringing prevented her from jumping and screaming like Xenia. Master Lucky, I just saw this monster fish in the river. So I thought about catching it and roasting it. I didn't expect it to run very fast. It took me a lot of time to catch it. Hey, it's really a swordfish. Now you're in for a treat. After Gervais said this, everyone reacted and immediately recognized that this was really a low-level Warcraft swordfish. Among the world of Warcraft, the meat of birds and fish is the most delicious. Everyone's eyes were shining brightly, and they were obviously looking forward to it. You know, except in the sea, there are very few monster fish in fresh water, so even Lachi and the others rarely eat them a few times. Seeing them like this, Gervais happily handed the big fish to the guards on the side and asked them to clean it up. On the way back, 
Gervais had already eaten the red potion fruit. Gervais has read in books that as long as it is a magic potion fruit, if it can emit a refreshing fragrance, it means it is non-toxic. If it emits other strange odors, be careful to identify it because it is likely to be highly toxic. As for plant-type potions, generally no matter whether they are poisonous or not, people will not eat them directly because plant-type potions can only be truly effective after they are sent to the magician to be mixed into potions. After Gervais ate the red magic fruit, it directly increased his energy equivalent to half a month of practice, which made Gervais very want to use the exploration function again. If he could find the magic potion fruit every time, he would only need to spend more than 10 energy points to quickly break through and become a silver intermediate knight. However, after thinking about it, he had already made an excuse to leave once. So Gervais gave up the idea and prepared to use the exploration function again when he had the opportunity. Chapter 526 Licking the Dog Soon, the world of Warcraft Whitefish was killed and cleaned by the guards and brought back. Lucky and others are considered to be young men from the upper class. And they also bring cooks with them. So they only need to wait for the cook to cook. Such a large monster fish was divided into two halves. The head was used to make soup. And the body was roasted. Just over ten minutes later, under the busy work of the two cooks, bursts of fragrance wafted over from the fire. At this time, Lucky moved surprisingly quickly. He quickly picked up a dinner plate and came to the cook and handed the plate over. Cut me the best piece of meat. Lucky pointed at the ventral fin of the grilled fish and said to the cook, Okay, master. The cook didn't hesitate after hearing Lucky's words. He cut off the meat from the pelvic fin of the grilled fish and carefully put it into the dinner plate handed over by Lucky. Only then did Lucky take the plate with satisfaction, turn around and walk back. Just after turning around, he suddenly remembered something and then said to Gervais, Harry, come and eat too. You caught this swordfish. You have to eat more. Ha ha. Okay. Gervais smiled and didn't mind. He thought Lucky was hungry. Anyway, this fish is so big that just a few of them can't finish it. But the next moment, Gervais realized that he had thought wrong. Lucky was so impatient not because he was hungry, but because he was trying to please. It turns out that this girl took the fish and meat to Adela to show her courtesy. Adela, come and try it. This kind of swordfish is rare. Fortunately, Harry I brought here caught one. I picked out the best piece of fish for you. I guarantee there will be no fine spines in it. Although Lachi mentioned Gervais, he only emphasized the tone of the three words he brought, which meant to highlight his own merits. Thanks. Adela has been traveling all morning, and she is indeed hungry after smelling the smell of fish. Moreover, Lucky did contribute a lot in this expedition, so he did not refuse his kindness in front of everyone. He politely replied and took the plate. This scene fell into the eyes of the three young men at Dever, making them secretly resentful. No, we can't let this idiot Lucky act alone. Devere changed his eyes and immediately came to the fish soup with a small bowl, then scooped up a bowl of fish soup and carefully brought it to Adela. Adela, I'll give you this bowl of fish soup. You can try it later when you get tired of grilled fish. This Harry is really good. He was able to catch this swordfish. We should all thank him for letting us taste it. This is a rare delicacy. Dwyer was not a stupid person. So he could naturally tell that Lucky was taking credit for himself. So he directly mentioned Gervais. Preparing to let all the credit fall on Gervais. After all, the identity of the wild mage Gervais is there. No matter how excellent he is. He will never have any communication with Adela. Thanks. Adela still thanked her politely. To be honest, she really didn't like any of these classmates. If it weren't for this adventure, she wouldn't be so close to the boy. It's just that now that we have become companions, we naturally can't put on airs. Otherwise, it will be disrespectful to others. Adela, this is fresh fruit. As soon as Devere put down his fish soup, two other young men came over, making Xania and another girl stare with big eyes. Wouldn't it taste good to eat more fish? There is an old saying, if you lick a dog, you will lose everything in the end. Young people, remember this. Looking at the people who were courting Adela, Gervais smacked his lips and walked directly to the grilled fish with the plate in hand. After traveling for so many days, he could tell from his experience as a veteran driver that Adela was not interested in these people. So she would probably have nothing in the end. But these guys still don't know it. And they keep pushing forward. As if they can win if they can compete with the other three. Well, it's really delicious. I'll catch more of these monster fish to eat if I have the chance in the future. As soon as he took the fish into his mouth, Gervais was instantly conquered by the delicious taste.
This swordfish not only tastes sweet, but also has a smooth and tender texture. It is countless times more delicious than those monsters on land. In this way, we ate lunch for more than an hour, and then continued to rest in place for a while before getting ready to set off again. After setting off, they only advanced for more than half an hour before they finally saw a human figure. Look! There's a camp there! At this time, their location was at the foot of a mountain, and there was a large camp halfway up the mountain in front, and many figures could be seen walking around in the camp. That's the Tulip family's camp, and their flag is still hanging there. Let's go quickly. They set up camp here. They must have discovered something. Everyone didn't want to delay for a moment, and then quickly walked along the road towards the mountainside. The mountain in front of them was not high, only about 300 meters. Within a few minutes, the group reached the halfway point. Who are you? How dare you break into our designated area? If it's too late to leave now, otherwise no one will be able to leave. There were more than a hundred people in their group, so naturally they had been discovered by people halfway up the mountain. At this time, there were already hundreds of knights with various names in the camp halfway up the mountain, looking at them eagerly with various weapons. Utrisan, you are so majestic. Why didn't I know that this sunset forest is occupied by your base city? As the guards in front moved out of the way, Lachi Adela and his group walked to the front. Senior Adela? Why are you with Lucky and the others? If you want to come, tell me earlier. We will bring you here. The leading young men who were still murderous just now changed their expressions immediately after seeing Adela. Adela can be said to be a popular figure in Alliance High School. So naturally there are many suitors for such beauty. Naturally. These young men from the holy city are the most prominent among the suitors. They want money and power. Student Utri, my classmates in the same grade are also planning to come. So I won't bother you, Adela replied politely, which was enough to save her face. Utri was a well-known playboy in the academy, and Adela never paid attention to them. If Utri and the others hadn't arrived here first today, she wouldn't have paid attention to these people. Adela, you are so polite. What's the trouble? You must be tired from the long journey. Come to our camp and rest for a while. Boom. At this moment, a loud noise came from behind the camp. Utri and others were also stunned. But after they reacted, expressions of great joy appeared on their faces. Master, the magic circle has been broken. At this moment, a guard came quickly from behind to report. Okay, let's go over and take a look. Classmate Adela, do you want to come and see us? Utri and others were beaming with joy and were about to turn around when they suddenly thought of Adela and asked. Okay. Thank you, Ugly San. With that said, Adela, Lachi and others prepared to step forward. Sorry, Rachi San. We only invited Adela San. But others are not welcome. Uter immediately spoke up to stop it. You won't let it go if you don't want to. This sunset forest is not owned by your family. How about I insist on going in? How could Lucky and others agree? Utri san they are all my partners. Let us go in together. Adela also spoke, and she made it clear that she was not going to go alone, but had to go in with companions such as Xenia and Lucky. Adela, it's okay if you go in, but others, if anyone dares to take a step closer, don't blame us for being rude. Clang, clang, clang. Utri's words were categorical. There was a magician's tower behind them. How could they let Lucky and others enter? If one more person entered, they would get fewer treasures. So he immediately drew his sword. And the scene instantly became tense. Chapter 527 All Parties Appear If you have the guts, just give it a try. Do you think we will be afraid of you? Lucky was also a playboy. At this time, he no longer cared about pretending to be a gentleman in front of Adela. And immediately drew the long sword from his waist. Then Lucky and the more than a hundred people on his side also drew their swords. And Gervais also raised the staff in his hand. He really felt the murderous intention coming from the other side. This is not an ordinary young master's bluff. It may be a fight to the death later. After all, money touches people's hearts. Not to mention it involves the magician's tower. Uter, what's going on? Just when the two sides were about to take action, several people came up behind Utri and the others again. The leader was a young and beautiful woman. And it was she who raised the question. Mesa. Lucky and Deborah from the holy city of Hika want to force their way into our camp. Utri immediately turned around and replied to the woman. It was obvious that their group was led by this woman named Mesisa. Misa Tulip, this sunset forest is a no man's land. You have no right to stop us from entering anywhere. Lucky and Deborah frowned unconsciously, 
when they saw the two old men following Mesisa. They had sensed a dangerous aura from the two old men, who at least had the cultivation of the white flag knights. However, the magic tower is ahead, and they still want to continue fighting for it. Raj. Right. Although this is a no man's land. But for the moment we are here, it belongs to our Tulip family. If you want to force your way in, you can give it a try. Although I can't kill you, I will kill the men you brought with me. I believe your father will not come to trouble me. Although Mesisa is beautiful, she does not have the appearance of a lady like Adela, who is a wealthy lady. Instead, there is a lot of murderous intent in her words. After hearing Mesisa's threat, both Lucky and Devere turned pale. Mesisa was right. As the young lady of the Tulip family, killing several guards during a conflict would certainly not lead to a violent conflict between the two families. And the most important thing is that the opponent is stronger than them at this time. Especially the two old men behind Tulip. At this time, Adela also frowned slightly, thinking about something. Hey! Is it so lively here? Just as the stalemate between the two sides continued, a group of people walked on the road down the mountain again. The number of people in this team was not large. Only 20 or 30 people. But the moment they appeared, the attention of everyone present was attracted to them. Because the person leading this group of people was the enchanting woman Gervais, and the others had seen in the hotel that day. Today, this woman is still dressed in revealing and sultry clothes. And her face is still veiled and makes people think about it. The only difference is that she has brought a lot of subordinates today. It's actually her subordinate. Gervais's eyes only stayed on the enchanting woman for a moment and then moved away because he was attracted by another figure. It was a middle-aged man, riding a war horse and following the enchanting woman without saying a word. To Gervais's surprise, this man was the good Samaritan who saved his life last night. Who are you? This is the area designated by our tulip. I advise you to leave immediately. Otherwise you will be responsible for the consequences. Before Lockie and others could drive them away, a group of people came again, and the faces of Mesisa and others became ugly. He! Show them! Today, this enchanting woman did not cherish her words like she did yesterday. She smiled charmingly and confessed behind her without turning her head. Then, a subordinate behind her immediately raised a colorful flag and raised it above everyone's heads. This colorful flag is overall blue, and there are no complicated patterns on it. Only a few simple words Holy Trading Company. It turns out to be someone from the Holy Trading Company. After seeing this blue flag, Everyone present except Gervais was shocked. So you are from the Holy Trading Company. I wonder why you are here today. Mesisa frowned slightly, although her tone was still unkind. But there was no murderous intent like before. The Holy Trading Company is the largest trading company in the Holy Continent. Their shops are located in every corner of the Holy Continent. Whether it is a human city or a gathering place of other races. This is why they use the word, sacred, as the name of their business. The Holy Trading Company can be said to be a well-deserved behemoth in the Holy Continent. Although they do not have a holy city of their own, their strength is no worse than any holy city. At that time, there were some holy cities and races that coveted the wealth of the Holy Trading Company and wanted to violently seize it. But in the end, they did not end well. It has strength and money. So even if the holy city has disputes with other holy cities, it is not willing to offend the Holy Trading Company. Because if you offend them, you will not only be hit financially, but it will also be difficult to truly compete with them in terms of strength. Of course I'm here for the Magician Tower. The second young master of the Hika family just said it is right. This sunset forest is an unknown land, and your tulip family has no right to monopolize it. The enchanting woman spoke bluntly and without mercy. And suddenly the faces of Mesisa and Uter were uncertain. Ho! Oh, ha ha! So many humans! Have you discovered the treasure yet? But while the dispute here continued, a huge roar came from behind again. Then I saw a dense team of nearly seven to eight hundred orcs approaching slowly. Disgusting orcs? The enchanting woman obviously had a bad impression of the orcs. When she saw the orcs below coming towards her, she cursed in disgust. What did you say? Human woman! What do you think? Puff! Among the orcs below, there was a kobold who heard the words of the enchanting woman and was just about to curse. However, before the curse words could be uttered, a bloody hole suddenly appeared on his head. Then he looked up and fell to the ground. Dead. Can't die again. And no one even saw what was going on. Only Gervais could see clearly that it was the middle-aged man behind the enchanting woman who made the move. Alonzo! What do you mean? You dare to kill my people in front of me. Do you? The Holy Trading Company. 
Still want to do business in our orc royal court? Seeing an orc behind him being killed. The middle-aged half-orc, who had laughed heartily just now became furious and roared at the middle-aged man behind the enchanting woman. If you dare to offend this Lolita, you will die. The half-orc spoke loudly. But the middle-aged man named Alonzo remained calm and calm. He only answered briefly, with endless coldness in his words. Does your holy trading company really no longer want to do business in our royal court? Adman, there are eight major races and one royal family in the orc royal court. Can you represent all the orc races? Hearing such threatening words again, it was the enchanting woman named Lolita who spoke. You? The half-orc leader was furious and didn't know what to say. Although his status in the royal court was not low, he really could not represent all the orc races. Just when Ardman didn't know how to save his face, Suddenly a young orc behind him ran over with a pig-headed man. The two came to him and whispered a few words in his ear. And then Adelman instantly turned his attention to Adela and the others. Gervais frowned immediately when he saw the scene, already guessing whether these people were related to Gassang. Chapter 528, Picking the Soft Persimmon Sure enough, the next moment the group of orcs bypassed the people of the Holy Trading Company and came to Gervais and others. Did you and Gassang have a conflict in the hotel yesterday? Adelman's sister is married to a prince in the royal court. Although he has no power, he can still be regarded as a person of status. And Gassang was a nephew of his wife. He arrived two days earlier than them. But he didn't expect to be killed on the street last night. Therefore, whether it is to find a way out for himself at this time, or to avenge Gassang, Adman needs to attack Gervais and his party. So what? Locky and others did not know that Gassang had been killed. So they did not show weakness when they heard Adman's question. Now that there are families like Tula present, if they lose face, they will become a laughing stock in the academy. Very good. Now that you admit it, then let Gassang be buried with him. When Adelman heard Lucky and others reply, a bloodthirsty and fierce light suddenly appeared in his eyes. What did we admit? When Lucky heard Ardman's words, he felt something was wrong and quickly continued to ask. Admit that you killed Gassang. In fact, it can be said that Kelsang died without evidence and Adman has already seen the group of humans in front of him. There is no strong person among them, and it is impossible to have the strength to kill Kelsang. However, in order to go back and give an explanation to his wife, he had to make some gesture. After all, the group of humans in front of him had conflicts with Gassang, and they were not very strong. In fact, Adelman didn't know that the pig-headed man also hid one thing from him. That is, the conflicts between Gassang and and the people in front of him were all caused by the enchanting woman Lolita. But seeing the tragic end of the talkative orc just now, the pig-headed man's little brain made him understand that it was better to pretend that he didn't know. Otherwise he would definitely die miserably. Although we had a conflict with Kelsang. Kelsang left immediately afterwards. We have never seen him again until now. At this time, Adela took over the words and already took out the black scroll from yesterday. Although she is not worried about her own safety, it is best if she can avoid conflicts. Otherwise, she can guarantee her own safety. But others may not. Besides you, I can't think of anyone else who would kill Gassang. So, you must be buried with Gassang today. Hey! That orc. Actually, the one named Gassang also had a conflict with me yesterday. At this moment, Lolita interrupted. However, Adman in front turned a deaf ear and did not turn around to pay attention to her. Instead, he waved his hand to the orcs behind him and surrounded them. Lolita frowned and was about to continue speaking. But Alonso behind her whispered, Miss, although this Adelman has no real power in the orc royal court, his sister is the wife and concubine of a prince. If let him know that we killed Kelsang, and it will definitely have a big impact on the trading company. Those two people helped me yesterday. I'm not going to let them be killed. Lolita thought for a moment, but finally did not shout out that she sent people to kill Gassang. Then she gave an order to Alonso expressionlessly. It was obvious that she was very unhappy at the moment. Yes, miss. They are really in danger later. I will save those two people. Alonzo responded respectfully. If you dare to touch anyone, I will open this scroll now. Still doing the same operation as yesterday, Adela raised the black scroll in her hand. There is actually a forbidden magic scroll. Is this the scroll you used to scare away Gassang yesterday? But do you think he can hurt me? Adelman didn't show any fear when he saw the black scroll in Adela's hand. Instead, he narrowed his eyes and looked at Adela. Then you can give it a try. Adela was calm on the surface, but she was extremely anxious inside. She saw that the expression of the orc named Adderman did not seem to be fake. 
and it seemed that he was really not afraid of the scroll in his hand. At this time, Adela was already in a dilemma. She took out this scroll originally to threaten these orcs. But if Adela was really not afraid, should she activate it? If there were no Xania and others here, maybe she would open this scroll without any scruples. But now besides herself, there are hundreds of companions beside her. The Black Scroll's attack is a large-scale indiscriminate attack. Although it can kill many orcs, all of her teammates will also die. Ha ha! Human girl! If you have the courage, start it now! Everyone listen to my order and kill all these humans to avenge Kelsang. Kill! In an instant, hundreds of orcs surrounded Gervais's team and fought with the guards. Adela, let's retreat quickly! Seeing the orcs swarming up, Lucky and others immediately withdrew towards the mountain. The current situation is obviously unable to compete with the orcs. Naturally, these dandy boys are not really prepared to fight to the end. The reason for not escaping alone is because they have to hold on in front of Adela. It's not that easy to run away! After hearing Lucky's words, Adelman flew towards the middle of their team. Seeing this scene, Gervais' pupils shrank instantly. This man's aura was countless times stronger than Gassang's, and he could compete with the middle-aged man behind the enchanting woman. Even if I take the black kiwi fruit, I can't fight it. Right. Gervais's mind was full of thoughts. But even if his strength increased 50 times, he still couldn't fight him. But he couldn't just watch Lucky being killed. So Gervais released a fireball directly towards Ardman. Boom. And. How dare you stop me? Ardman, who was flying in the air, saw a small human trainee magician dare to release fireballs at him. And swung a knife at Gervais in the air without thinking. Puff. I saw this random knife directly chop the war horse under Gervais into pieces. And Gervais rolled on the ground for several meters in extremely embarrassed state. This is because of Gervais's calculation before releasing the fireball technique. Otherwise his fate would be exactly the same as that of the war horse beneath him. Lachi, this is a favor I'm returning to you. After Gervais stood up from the ground, he didn't move towards Lucky anymore. After all, that Ardman was really like crushing an ant when he killed him. He had just risked his life to resist for a moment, which was considered as repaying Lucky's favor. On Lachi's side, because Ardman was delayed by Gervais, he had already ran out of the battle circle and rushed towards Tulip's camp. But there was no way their speed could match Ardman. Seeing that Ardman was about to catch up, Adela gritted her teeth, took out another scroll in her hand, and threw it directly towards Ardman. Imprisonment scroll? The forbidden scroll is different from the offensive forbidden curse scroll in Adela's hand. Although the Forbidden Curse scroll is powerful, it takes a moment to activate the magic power between heaven and earth and exert its strongest power. The Confinement scroll did not require much magic power, so it was triggered instantly, and Ardman was caught off guard and trapped. Human girl, you clearly only had one scroll in your hand just now, but now you have taken out a Confinement scroll. It seems that you must have storage space on your body. Right. Ha ha. It will be mine in one minute. Although Adelman was imprisoned by a red aperture, he still smiled ferociously because this confinement scroll could only be effective for one minute. Adela and the others also ran into trouble at this time. They were actually blocked by Uter and the others. Uter! Masisa! What do you mean? Lucky and the others looked livid. But they didn't expect that Uter and the others would add insult to injury at such a time. Our territory is already in front of us. If you want to escape, just run down the mountain. You wait. Lucky and the others gritted their teeth and could only return the way they came. Time is running out at this time. Although there are many orcs on the way down the mountain, it is better than being dragged by Uter and others. After all, there are two old men with extraordinary strength behind Mesisa. You can't run away. It took a lot of time to go back and forth. And when they rushed to the orc encirclement, the gloomy words of Adman from behind came. I will kill them all first. And then I will kill you. A human girl. As he spoke, Adman rushed towards them quickly, and the long knife in his hand had already begun to wave. Who dares to hurt Miss Adela? But at this moment, a huge roar suddenly came from outside the orcs. The sound was so loud that even the killing cries of the orcs and the guards were drowned out. Puff! 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 Ah! 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 As the shouts fell, the orcs who were fighting with the guards let out shrill screams one after another, and the nearby orcs fled in both directions like a tide. Uncle Waddington. Adela had already recognized the person who had just shouted. And immediately shouted in surprise. And Adelman had stopped at this time. Because he had noticed that the man was not weaker than himself. But was actually much stronger than himself. Chapter 529 Two Rich Women. Miss. 
Your loyal guard is here. After holding two raised swords and directly cutting down dozens of orc warriors, Waddington finally came to Adela. The terrifying aura that was originally filled with murderous intent immediately subsided. And he saluted to Adela with great respect. Uncle Waddington, you're just in time. Adela didn't stupidly ask Waddington why you are here. On the contrary, I am very lucky that he can appear here in time. Otherwise, my group may really suffer heavy losses. Miss, you came to Sunset Forest alone to explore. When the Duke found out, he was very worried about your safety. Let me ask you to go back. Miss, although the Holy Continent has changed from a kingdom system to a holy city system, the title system still remains, and all the original kings of the kingdom were automatically reduced by one level. For example, the king of the empire became a duke, while the kings of the weaker kingdoms became marquises, and the kings of smaller subject countries became counts. For example, Lucky's father is an earl, and from the title duke, Gervais finally understood that Adela was indeed a rich young lady. If it weren't for the catastrophe 200 years ago, the holy continent would still be full of kingdoms, large and small, and Adela would be the princess of a huge empire. Uncle Waddington, this is my first time to go on an adventure alone. Please let me complete the adventure. When I go back, I will promise to my grandpa that I will never do this again. To be honest, Adela really felt the dangers of taking risks alone this time, even though she had many means to save her life. But it is unable to protect teammates like Xania. So this kind of adventure is not as exciting and novel as what has been seen in dramas before. As you command, my respected Miss Adela, Waddington once again bowed respectfully towards Adela and said, Okay, as an aristocratic gesture, and then turned to look at Ardman. Orc, were you trying to hurt Miss Adela just now? Waddington's aura exploded instantly, and his eyes revealed a terrifying gleam. They and their group killed my nephew and his subordinates. So they must pay with blood. Ardman also has a burst of momentum. Although his strength may be weaker than Waddington, it doesn't necessarily depend on his level when it comes to fighting. Moreover, he has many more subordinates than Adela and the others. So the chance of victory is better on their side. Blood debt must be paid with blood? Are you worthy of it? Waddington's giant swords flashed in both hands, and the momentum of both sides surged. And the battle was about to break out. Adela and others also quickly ran to the side to avoid being affected by the battle later. What's going on here? It's so lively. Just when the two were about to take action, voices came from behind again. I saw a middle-aged man leading a team of dozens of people to the mountainside. The aura of this middle-aged man was no worse than that of Waddington and others. It turns out to be Ardman and Waddington. Are you preparing for a life-and-death battle? Now that the door to the magician's tower has been opened, you still have time to fight here? The middle-aged man walked towards the two of them with a smile, not paying any attention to the impending battle between Waddington and Ardman. Laird, this orc is trying to harm Miss Adela. Seeing that the person coming was Laird from the Golden Shield Holy City, the Golden Shield family's status in the Alliance was also one of the best. So Waddington opened his mouth to explain. Oh, Adelman, is there really such a thing? Are you so brave that you dare to hurt little Princess Adela? Sir Laird, it was this human girl and his companions who killed my nephew and his subordinates last night. So I sought revenge on them. Although the relationship between humans and orcs is tense, humans have rich lands, while orcs occupy vast jungles. Therefore, the two sides will still conduct some trade, which can be regarded as each getting what it needs. And this Laird had gone to the Orc King's court to discuss trade on behalf of the Golden Shield family. And this was how Laird and Ardman got to know each other. Really? Ardman, do you have any evidence? Laird would not have cared about such a thing originally. But seeing that it was Ardman, he stepped forward to mediate. Because he and Ardman had reached many shady secret trades. If Ardman died, the Golden Shield family would have to spend a lot of effort to find other orcs to trade with. Of course there is. Fart, you have no evidence at all. Just because Gasang had a conflict with us during the day yesterday. You want to frame it on us. At this time, Lucky saw Adela's subordinates coming down. And there was also the Golden Shield family, one of the best families in the Alliance. He immediately felt confident and cursed at Adela. Human boy. Orc, please come on and have a duel with me today to determine life and death. Otherwise, your offense against Miss Adela today cannot be resolved. Ardman became furious when he was scolded by Lucky, a human boy. Just when he was about to raise the sword to make some move, Waddington held the sword in front of his chest with both hands and said coldly, Waddington, this Adman is an important target of the Golden Shield family's trade in the Orc King's court. So I hope that for the sake of the Golden Shield family, 
You will allow me to help mediate and resolve this matter peacefully. Ardman didn't know Adela's background or Waddington's power, but Laird did. So he understood that Ardman was definitely no match for Waddington. So he quickly came to the two of them and tried to persuade them again. Ardman, what evidence do you have that Miss Adela and his companions killed your nephew? Audi man, our Golden Shield family has trade relations with the prince. I am helping you solve your trouble now. So you must answer truthfully. After persuading Waddington, Laird immediately asked Ardman, and his words had a different meaning. I, Ardman was speechless, but Laird's words were clear, let yourself tell the truth. Moreover, the reason why he has his current status is actually related to the help of the Golden Shield family, so he dare not talk nonsense anymore. He had no evidence at all, and was immediately speechless. Gesang died on the street. No one knows who killed him. He just wanted to pick a soft persimmon to kill, and then return to the royal court to give an explanation to his wife. But he just killed many of my subordinates. How should we solve this matter? Since the matter of Gesang could not be brought out, Adelman could only change one thing immediately. He would definitely not admit defeat. If it weren't for Laird, he would have wanted to have a fight to the death with Waddington. So what if I kill you? If it weren't for Laird, besides those orcs, I would have killed you. Waddington spit out coldly. Human, come on then. Roar. At this moment, a violent roar suddenly came from the sky. Everyone looked up and saw a dozen figures suddenly appearing in the sky not far away. They were clearly human griffins. The black dots moved from far to near. In just over ten seconds, the black dots in the distant sky flew over. More than ten griffins kept circling in the sky, scaring the orcs halfway up the mountain to tremble. In previous wars with humans, griffins were the nightmare in the minds of these orcs. They just hovered for a moment. And then the griffins swooped down and landed directly in front of Adela. My subordinate has met Miss Adela. Well, get up. Thank you for your hard work. Adela nodded slightly and gave instructions softly. Yes, miss. Even the griffins were sent out. It seems that your Lord Marquis really loves little Princess Adela. Laird was also extremely surprised when he saw the dozen griffins and the rider wearing silver armor holding a giant hammer. Laird is very sorry. Things have reached this point. Since this orc wants to die, then I will help him. Seeing that the griffin had arrived, Waddington could finally let go and apologize to Laird. My sister is the wife of the prince of the royal court. If you kill me, it will cause a war between humans and the royal court. When Adelman saw the arrival of these griffins, his expression changed slightly. He wanted to retreat. More than a dozen griffins came. He had no chance of winning at this moment. So he immediately revealed his identity. So what if there really is a war? Waddington didn't take this trick and replied coldly, which immediately made Ardman's face freeze. The Waddington in front of him is just a subordinate of this human girl but he can say words to promote the war without hesitation. This is how much confidence and confidence it takes. Ardman finally began to regret why he chose this girl to be the weakling. Now he regretted even more why he didn't ask the royal court's priest to calculate the good or bad luck of his trip before going out. The orcs have a royal family, and the eight major races all surrender to the royal family. But humans do not have a royal family. They are an alliance composed of 108 holy cities. There are only five forces in the human alliance that can directly replace 108 holy cities and directly call the shots to launch a war. And Waddington can have the confidence to say such words. It means that the family behind the girl in front of him is obviously one of them. There must be some misunderstanding in this. There is no big loss for either of you now. Waddington, please wait a moment. I will go and tell Ardman that if he persists in his obsession, I promise not to care about this matter anymore. Seeing that Waddington was really ready to take action, Laird quickly said something to Waddington. Then, regardless of whether Waddington agreed or not, he quickly came to Ardman and told him about Adela's background and Waddington's strength. After a while, Ardman's face turned a little pale. And then, he started talking to Laird. Waddington, I already know why this happened. It's all a misunderstanding. Adelman relented. He already knew Adela's background. The Pearl of the Sky City. Even if his prince brother-in-law came, he would have to consider it. Let alone him. Moreover, Although it was true that his sister was married to a prince. The orc prince had more than a dozen wives and concubines, which made it even more conceivable to see the gap between the two parties. His identity can scare ordinary adventurers, but it cannot scare the great forces of mankind. Laird, can't a misunderstanding offset their offense against Miss Adela? Waddington said coldly. Of course. Laird nodded in agreement. If Ardman didn't make some remarks, today's matter would definitely not end. So Laird winked at Ardman. 
Ardman gritted his teeth and looked at his subordinates. Baz! Bring Gurton and the pig-headed man here! Soon! The pig-headed man who reported Adela just now and Gasang's brother Gutan were dragged over. At this time, the two people may have known what they were about to face. And their legs were so frightened that they were trembling. Uncle! It was only after I listened to the provocation of this pig-headed man and Keaton that I took action against this young lady and her group. Now I will deal with him. Puff. Puff. Edelman's hands were very fast. And he raised and lowered his knife as he spoke. Before Gurdon and the pig-headed man could even wail, their two huge heads had already fallen to the ground. It's not enough. Miss and their group have already lost several guards. And you only lost two of your subordinates. Do you think it's enough? Waddington asked coldly. Are these just subordinates? One of them is my nephew. Ardman's mouth twitched, and he roared in his heart. I can still make compensation. Ardman gritted his teeth and replied. One thousand gold coins. As a compensation for those humans. Five thousand gold coins. If you lose a penny, today's affairs will not be finished. Walton doubled his words when he opened his mouth. And the threat in his eyes became even stronger. I didn't bring so much money with me this time. When Ardman heard the offer of five thousand gold coins, his heart ached immediately and he opened his mouth to continue bargaining. Orcs, our holy trading company can provide loans and only charge 1% interest every month. At this moment, Lolita, who was not far away, suddenly smiled and said, Adman's face suddenly turned pale after Lolita's words. But after thinking about his hundreds of subordinates and his own comfort, he gritted his teeth and agreed. Ken! Next, Ardman wrote a note and borrowed 5,000 gold coins from Lolita and her party but with just a thought from Lolita. A wooden treasure box appeared in front of everyone. When that treasure box was opened, a golden light was revealed inside. Ardman then carried the wooden treasure chest of gold coins to Waddington. After everything was done, Ardman walked up to Laird without saying a word. Miss, I don't know if you are satisfied with the result of this treatment. At this time, Waddington turned around, changed his expression, and respectfully asked Adela. Well, Uncle Waddington, I'm very satisfied. Adela remained silent throughout the whole scene. Because she knew that Uncle Waddington would handle such matters well. He was her grandfather's most capable person. As she spoke, Adela also thought. And the wooden treasure box in front of her was put into the storage space. Two super rich women. Gervais was envious of Adela and Lolita's slutty moves. He was salivating over the fact that they could put away items with just a thought. But he also knew that even Lachi didn't have such a thing and it was probably impossible for him to get it. Chapter 530 Teleportation Array Seeing Adela's approval, Ardman and Laird over there finally breathed a sigh of relief, and the matter was considered over. Adela, Messisa, and Uter have already gone to the entrance of the tower. Let's go in quickly, otherwise they will finish getting all the good things later. Ardman breathed a sigh of relief, and Lucky and the others were relieved. Although Ardman could not be killed, Armand was forced to kill his other nephew and paid 5,000 gold coins as compensation. It was a massive hemorrhage. In addition to Armand, Lucky and others also remembered a few hateful people, namely Misha and Uter. When they were chased by Admin just now, those guys actually blocked their way to escape. Later, when Waddington arrived, and more than a dozen griffins arrived, Mesisa and Utri hurried towards the entrance of the magician's tower at the end of the camp, because Waddington had been confronting Ardman just now. Lucky did not dare to speak out. Now that the matter here is over, he immediately issued a warning. Then let's go to the entrance quickly. Upon hearing Lachi's reminder, both Adela and the others, and later the Golden Shield family members, began to move and quickly headed towards the entrance. Ardman and Laird looked at each other and followed silently with the orcs. When the group of them felt the entrance to the magician's tower, they saw two old men waiting in front of the entrance. This made everyone narrow their eyes slightly wondering if the two old men wanted to prevent everyone from entering. Don't get me wrong. There are restrictions on this entrance. As long as you reach the strength of the White Flag Knight, you will not be able to enter. So the two of us can only wait here. Of course, the two old men were not here to prevent everyone from entering. So they quickly explained after seeing everyone's expressions. Although they were not worried about their lives, he did not want to offend the Golden Shield family and the two girls with great connections at the same time. There are still restrictions? Laird was surprised, and then walked to the entrance. When he put his hand into the entrance, he found a resistance blocking his arm from the entrance. It is indeed a tower worthy of being a wizard, but it seems we cannot enter it. Magicians are noble, and the tower is their home base. Of course, 
They will set up defensive arrays to prevent powerful enemies from sneaking in and causing harm to themselves. Even in a realm like a magician, it is very dangerous to be approached by a powerful enemy. Miss Adela. Uncle Waddington, you just promised me. Adela knew what Waddington wanted to say, so she quickly interrupted Waddington's words. Miss, please be careful. Waddington thought for a while. People above the white flag knight could not enter, so Adela's risk factor was not high, so he could only accept it. Uncle Waddington, don't worry. I know. Adela smiled slightly and immediately became happy. Then Adela, Lucky, and their group walked into the entrance first. Then came the people from the Holy Trading Company. And then the people from the Golden Shield family. Adman, let your men go in, but let them be honest and not conflict with others. Laird and Ardman looked at each other and then said it loudly. He was giving a favor to Ardman in disguise. Because if he didn't speak, Waddington and others would probably block the orcs from entering. Laird, don't worry. I will tell them. Soon Ardman selected 50 orcs and headed towards the entrance. Although Waddington and others frowned, they did not say anything to stop them. Now that Laird of the Golden Shield family has spoken, it's hard for him to say anything in public. After all, this is a no man's land. The entrance looked like a cave. Gervais had never seen a magician's tower before, so he thought he had entered the tower after stepping into the cave entrance. What he didn't expect was that as soon as he entered the cave, he felt dizzy. When he returned to normal, he found himself in an unfamiliar wilderness. Teleportation array? Although he has never seen a teleportation array, Gervais already has a guess. Sure enough, it is the necromancer's magician tower, and it actually has a teleportation array. Lucky and the others immediately exclaimed, confirming Gervais's guess. More than 200 years ago, necromancers were illegal and despised by the world. Because necromancers always do weird magic and deal with skeletons and dark creatures all day long. They have become synonymous with evil. Therefore, the necromancers on the mainland can be said to be street rats. Almost all of them hiding in Tibet. Even if you are as powerful as a magician. If you want to build a magic tower. It will be a cunning rabbit hole. The entrance will be used as a magic circle to prevent the true location of the magician's tower from being exposed. Although necromancers are not likable. It is undeniable that the necromancy system is really powerful. Even the lowest level training necromancer can summon skeletons or dark creatures to fight for him. At this stage. The most magicians of other departments can do is release flames and condense small water balls. Even geniuses can only cast one or two small fireballs or simple healing spells, which are simply incomparable to the necromancer. Since that catastrophe, people have completely changed their views on the necromancer. Because in that catastrophe, the necromancer saved countless lives and made outstanding achievements. The invading undead creatures are almost endless and fearless of death. Faced with such enemies, the army of skeletons and other dark creatures summoned by the necromancer became the main force blocking the undead. Because the skeleton army and dark creatures also have no fear and are not afraid of death. As long as the necromancer's magic power is not exhausted. More armies can be summoned almost continuously to fight. It is precisely because of such outstanding achievements that the necromancer, who originally represented evil, became a heroic existence. The necromancer, a magic sect, has become the most popular magic profession among humans for 200 years. Light magicians, who also have natural restraints against undead creatures, have become the two most popular magician factions in the Holy Continent. The reason why Adela is called a dual system genius magician is precisely because she possesses two magic systems, light magic and necromancy magic. Adela, which direction do you think we should go? Everyone looked at Adela. Among them, Adela was probably the one who knew the necromancer best. Let's go forward. Although the moon in the sky may not be real. What the necromancers like most is the moonlight. I think the real location of the magician's tower should be in that direction. Adela looked at the surrounding environment. Then looked at the sky and said, Okay, let's go. Now that Adela had made her decision, everyone immediately started walking in the direction of the moon. Shortly after they left, the Holy Trading Company, the Golden Shield family, and the Orc team also arrived one after another. After everyone came to this strange environment, they immediately chose the direction they recognized and rushed forward. Chapter 531 Skeleton Soldiers This place is so big! I don't know where the teleportation array will teleport us! As Adela said, although she didn't know whether the moon in the sky was real or fake, the visibility here was really like in the dark night. Only by relying on the bright moonlight could she see the surrounding scenery clearly. After traveling in such an environment for more than half an hour, 
What I saw was still a wilderness. Lucky looked left and right, perhaps suffocated by such a silent environment, and let out a sigh for no reason. Raj, you don't have much knowledge at first glance. The largest of the necromancer's magic towers is the size of a principality, and the smallest one is as big as one or two small towns. We have only been walking for more than half an hour now. Maybe we haven't even entered the confines of the magician's tower yet. Here, apart from the occasional buzzing of insects in the surrounding grass, there was only the sound of their march. So Lucky's words naturally fell into Dwyer's ears. At this time, Devere's pursuit of Adela became even more intense. Although I knew that Adela had an extraordinary status when I was in the academy, no one knew how big her background was. But since the appearance of Waddington and the dozen or so griffins earlier, Dwyer dared to conclude that Adela's family was definitely beyond his imagination. Lucky is the biggest threat to him among his peers in the academy. So he must seize every opportunity to suppress Lucky in front of Adela. Since you have read so many magic books, you should tell me how wide the scope of this necromancer tower is and which necromancer it belongs to. Lucky's face darkened instantly when Devere scolded him to his face like this. And he choked angrily. Stop arguing. Look ahead. There is light. Just when Lucky and Dwyer wanted to continue arguing, Xania, who was walking in front, interrupted their conversation and pointed to a high slope ahead. Following her shout, everyone looked in that direction. And sure enough, they saw the faint light coming from the high slope. Is it Masisa and Uter? Let's go over and take a look. These bastards dared to stop us just now. We must avenge this. Dwyer immediately shouted. They were all in a panic when they were being chased. Now it was time to show off. So they couldn't wait to speak first. It's not like firelight. The light is too weak. Gervais shook his head. As Lord Seigneur who had experienced hundreds of battles. He knew very well the characteristics of fire in the wild. Ha ha. Did Dever hear that? That's not the light of fire. Didn't you say that you are well informed? You can't even recognize the light of fire. Lucky immediately burst out laughing, retaliating for Dwyer's earlier taunt. Although he didn't know whether it was fire or not. Gervais was a fire magician. So he naturally chose to believe in Gervais. Whether it's a fire or not, we need to go over and check. Everyone, be careful. The necromancer's magic tower may have many traps. Adela turned a deaf ear to the quarrels of Lachi and others, stared at the light over there for a while, and finally put forward her own opinion. Lucky and others naturally followed Adela's words and immediately followed Adela's reminder to their guards, and then rushed towards the direction of the light. After walking for about ten minutes, everyone finally arrived near the high slope. At this time, everyone also saw clearly what was emitting the light. As Gervais said, it was indeed not a fire, but a big tree, and it was the fruits hanging on the big tree that gave off the light. Second level magic potion. Moonlight spirit fruit? So many? Ha ha. We are rich. Adela, you need to eat more later. When everyone saw the fruit hanging on the tree, they immediately recognized the origin of the fruit and couldn't help but feel happy. This moonlight spiritual fruit is a second level magic potion. And it is a spiritual fruit that has a great effect on necromancers. The moonlight spirit fruit takes 10 years to bloom. 50 years to bear fruit. And another 50 years to truly mature. The mature moonlight spirit fruit will emit a reddish halo in the dark night. If no one picks the fruit within a month, it will fall off and lose its effectiveness. When a mature moonlight spirit fruit is sold in the market, it can be worth at least a thousand gold coins, and it is still priceless. The reason why this moonlight spirit fruit has such a high price, apart from the long growth cycle, is that it can increase the necromancer's affinity towards dark creatures. The necromancer's main attack method is to summon dark creatures to fight. Increasing affinity will not only enable him to better command these dark creatures, but will also most likely increase the number of summoned dark creatures. I have counted, and there are ten moonlight spirit fruits on this tree. When the time comes, each of us will have one, and the rest will be given to Adela. What do you think? Lucky suggested generously. Of course everyone had no objections to this, and even if they had any, they wouldn't be able to raise them. Thank you all so much. Adela did not refuse. She was the only one present who knew necromancy. And this moonlight fruit was indeed of great use to her. She thought that if she found something valuable later, she would share less. Or she could directly use gold coins to compensate her teammates after she left. After the few people determined their allocation, they immediately and cautiously walked slowly up the high slope under the protection of the guards. Soon they arrived at the top of the high slope without incident. There are stone tables and chairs here. It seems that this moonlight fruit tree was planted by the owner of the magician's tower. 
Please be careful. There may be traps. This magician's tower is old. And it obviously existed long before the catastrophe occurred. At that time, the necromancer was still a symbol of evil. So the necromancer not only knew how to be cunning, but also set traps within the tower to prevent intruders. After hearing Adela's words, everyone naturally did not dare to be careless. They first ordered the guards to throw stones at the moonlight fruit tree. After throwing stones for a long time without any abnormality, two guards were sent to approach the moonlight fruit tree. Master Lucky, there is nothing abnormal. The two guards carefully came to the fruit tree. Nothing happened. The two immediately breathed a sigh of relief and turned back to shout to Lucky and the others. You guys should go and help too. Remember to pick the moonlight fruit and put it in a jade box. Upon hearing this, Devere and others immediately sent out several of their own guards. At the same time, they were reminded to use a jade box to store the moonlight spirit fruit. This jade box had been prepared before arriving. It was specially used to store the magic potion plants to ensure that the potion's efficacy would not be lost. It had been stored in Adela's storage space before. But now most of it has been taken out and distributed to everyone. If any potions are found next, they can be saved directly. Even Gervais was given too. Yes, master. The guards responded and then quickly headed towards the fruit tree. When Lucky's two subordinates saw this, they immediately started climbing the tree neatly. This moonlight fruit tree is not high. Only seven or eight meters. Soon, a guard climbed up to the moonlight fruit at the bottom using his hands and feet. After arriving in front of the moonlight spirit fruit, the guard first opened the jade box and then carefully reached out to collect the slightly red fruit. Good! Everyone was slightly excited to see the moonlight spirit fruit harvested so smoothly, which was a good sign. No! There's something on the ground. Something is crawling out of the ground. But just when everyone looked up at the fruit trees, thinking that everything was fine, a guard on the outside suddenly screamed loudly. Puff! The guard shout stopped abruptly. When everyone looked at him in shock, they saw not only something slowly crawling out from the ground in front of him, but also a complete animal crawled out from behind him. Dark creatures. It was a skeleton with green eyes. Although this skeleton had no flesh and blood, it was also equipped with armor and swords. Although the armor and weapons were rusty after countless years of corrosion, the skeleton soldier used this rusty long knife to pierce the guard's chest. It's a skeleton soldier. Everyone, retreat first. Seeing that skeleton soldiers continued to appear on the ground. In order to prevent being surrounded, the group immediately retreated towards the rear. Chapter 532 Skeleton Mage As the order was given, the guards held up their swords and shields and retreated dozens of meters away. And in just over 10 seconds, Densely packed skeleton soldiers appeared near the moonlight fruit tree. At least three to four hundred in number. Most of these skeleton soldiers rushed towards their group. Only a few dozen of them were spinning around the moonlight fruit tree. Four or five skeleton soldiers, who looked like longbowmen were making bow and string movements, trying to shoot the guards in the book. Unfortunately, although the longbow's body was not completely rotten, the bowstring was long gone. So the longbow skeleton soldier could not shoot any arrows at all. The few guards who were picking moonlight spiritual fruits on the tree did not dare to move, clinging to the trunk for fear of falling. You continue to pick the moonlight spirit fruit carefully and don't fall. We will come back to pick you up later. Seeing hundreds of densely packed skeleton soldiers approaching, Lucky and the others quickly discussed and shouted at the guards on the tree. Although there are some dangers, it seems to be controllable for now. So they are not ready to give up the moonlight spirit fruit. Anyway, they will have to rescue several guards when the time comes which does not conflict with picking the spirit fruit. The guards over there listened to the orders of Dealaki and others and realized that the skeleton soldiers could not attack them. So they immediately began to carefully continue picking the moonlight spiritual fruits. Kill! The picking over there continued, and hundreds of skeleton soldiers on their side finally rushed forward. With everyone shouting loudly, they held up their shields and collided with the skeleton soldiers. Although the guards brought by Lucky and others were all silver knights and gold knights. The skeleton soldiers were actually not weak. Not only did they have helmets, armors, and bucklers for defense, but these were obviously forged by Mithril. Without vigorous chopping, it would be impossible to destroy these skeleton soldiers. The necromancer is really awesome. I want to learn it too. Gervais quickly released two fireballs and eliminated two skeleton soldiers who wanted to sneak attack the guards and shouted in his heart the power of the necromancer. This is really much stronger than ordinary human soldiers. Gervais has seen many skeleton soldiers chopped off with arms and legs missing. But they are still alive and kicking. Some even had their wrists cut off and had no weapons. 
so they stab the guards directly with their sharp hand bones. There is only one way to kill these skeleton soldiers, and that is to smash their heads or cut them off directly, because the energy source of the skeleton soldiers is the green flame in their eyes. If the green fire is not extinguished, they will not die. Die! These skeleton soldiers are not afraid of death and are numerous in number. As long as they are equipped with excellent weapons and armor, Gervais feels that they can crush the elite legions of the great nobles in Eurasia. Purify the holy light! At this moment, Adela, a beautiful young lady, also caught the attention of Gervais. Because Adela's holy light skill is too effective against skeleton soldiers, Gervais's fireball can only destroy the target it hits by explosion. But Adela's holy light purification is different. A beam of holy light can actually penetrate two or three skeleton soldiers. Although these skeleton soldiers who were hit by the holy light appeared intact. The faint green light in their eyes would immediately dissipate. Then the entire skeleton soldiers would fall apart. And their helmets and armor would make a clanking sound when they fell to the ground. They retreated. The fierce battle lasted for more than a minute. Gervais and his team paid the price of the death of two guards. Serious injuries of seven or eight guards. And the lives of most of the skeleton soldiers. Originally, everyone wanted to kill these skeleton soldiers in one go. But they did not expect that the skeleton soldiers, who were not afraid of death, actually started to retreat. The people who chased and killed us wanted to run away. But there was no way out. Kill! Don't let them escape. When lucky, Dwyer and others saw the skeleton soldiers escaping. They immediately shouted louder and louder than the others. For fear that Adela would not know their bravery. Adela frowned slightly. But in the end, she didn't say anything to stop him. And also followed behind. Although I don't know why these skeleton soldiers suddenly escaped. This place has a history of two to three hundred years ago. The owner of the magician tower should have died long ago. So there is no need to worry about fraud. When the skeleton soldiers retreated to the bottom of the moonlight fruit tree. They stopped. As if they came here specifically to join the dozens of remaining skeleton soldiers. After the skeleton soldiers stopped. Lucky and others were already chasing them. And then the two sides fought together again. Gervais and three trainee mages stood together with Adela and the others. More than ten meters away from the battlefield ahead. They did not immediately release magic to attack the skeleton soldiers. But controlled the field from behind. This is also the most important role of the trainee magician in the battle. The situation of the war is now clear. And they will not take action if there is no emergency. Because even if a trainee magician holds a staff. The ability to release five or six fireballs is already the limit. If you want to continue casting spells. You must either drink a potion to restore magic power. Or start meditating immediately to restore magic power. Therefore. Unless one of the guards is in danger. They will immediately release magic to rescue them. The battlefield ahead attracted everyone's attention. But no one expected that just over four meters behind them. The soil there was slowly rising. As the bulge in the soil grew larger and larger. A skull head suddenly emerged quietly from the soil. The fire in the eyes of this skull's head turned out to be red which was obviously different from those green skeleton soldiers. After the skull's head emerged from the ground, it first looked at Gervais and others with empty eyes and found that no one noticed him. Then he slowly climbed out with his hands on the ground. This skeleton soldier with red flames in his eyes is not tall and is obviously a head shorter than other skeleton soldiers. He didn't have any armor on his body, only a staff held in his skeletal palm. The staff has a wooden structure. Only the top of the staff is inlaid with a skull which is exactly the same as the one brought back by Lackey's two pathfinding men. This is a relatively rare red bone skeleton. And it is also a skeleton mage. After the skeleton mage stood firm, the red flames in his empty eyes began to beat inexplicably. And the arm holding his staff began to wave regularly. Hmm? What's the sound? Gervais was not only a magician, but also a silver knight. So as the skeleton mage waved his arm, he immediately noticed the movement. In addition to the sound of the skeleton mage waving his staff, there are actually many green skeletons making clicking sounds behind him. Although those green skeletons were scattered and maimed, the green fire in their heads had not been extinguished and they were still struggling. Lucky and others were in a hurry to pursue, so they didn't have time to take care of the battlefield. At this time, Gervais found that the bone sounds he heard now were too rhythmic, so he turned around and looked behind him in confusion. Careful! When Gervais turned his head, he saw the red mage skeleton holding a staff. He was suddenly shocked and loudly reminded Adela and others. He really didn't know that the skeleton soldiers also had magicians. At this time, the skeleton mage had finished casting his spell. And in front of him was a fist-sized light green nether fireball. And the moment before he shouted to be careful, 
The Netherworld fireball was already shooting towards everyone. Adela and the others heard Gervais shouting and subconsciously turned their heads to look. When they saw the Netherworld fireball flying towards them, they were startled. The three trainee mages were stunned on the spot. Obviously not yet reacting. Adela wanted to dodge because the fireball was aimed at her. But it was obviously too late. This red skeleton mage obviously has a little intelligence. And the light mage is the most annoying existence of all dark creatures. So this skeleton mage deliberately planned a sneak attack just to deal with Adela. The Light Magician. Chapter 533 Return the Favor. This time, let's pay back the favor of accidentally seeing you bathing that day. Seeing that the netherworld fireball was about to hit Adela, Gervais sighed secretly in his heart. He really couldn't bear to see Adela, the beautiful young lady, get hurt, especially this netherworld fireball. Although it is only the size of a fist, if it is really hit, Adela's white jade-like skin will be destroyed. So Gervais immediately secretly circulated his own fighting spirit. The spiritual light flashed invisible under the mage's rope. And then Gervais suddenly pounced on Adela at an extremely fast speed. The moment before the netherworld fireball was about to hit Adela, Gervais jumped on Adela. Due to the huge inertia, the two of them instantly rolled into a ball. After the roll, Gervais pressed on Adela, supported the ground with one hand, and protected the back of Adela's head with the other to ensure that Adela would not hit the ground. And the netherworld fireball just passed through Adela's original location and shot straight towards the bottom of the fruit tree. Boom! Ah! The netherworld fireball did not miss, but hit a golden knight who was fighting a fierce battle with a skeleton soldier. The golden knight let out a cry of pain the moment he was hit, and then his whole body was covered in light green flames. The golden knight rolled hard on the ground, trying to extinguish the flames on his body, but it was all in vain. The light green flame slowly burned through his skin, then the flesh and blood inside, and finally even the bones were exposed. Puff! A team member next to him couldn't bear to see his miserable appearance, so he finally gave him a slap in the face. It was only at this moment that the golden knight stopped wailing in pain, but the green flames on his body were still burning, looking extremely penetrating. Fireball! After Gervais knocked down Adela, he did not dare to delay, and quickly got up from the dazed Adela, and then without thinking, he released two large fireballs the size of a wash basin at the skeleton mage. Boom! Boom! Although the skeleton mage has powerful attack power, his own defense is also very fragile like a magician. After being hit by two fireballs from Gervais, he was instantly engulfed in red flames, and then turned into a pile of skeletons scattered on the ground. Are you okay? Seeing that the skeleton mage was dealt with, Gervais breathed a sigh of relief. The fate of the golden knight was really shocking. The fist-sized nether fireball didn't look very powerful, but it was clearly the same as the white phosphorus bomb in the previous life. As long as it got even a little bit on it, it couldn't be shaken off, and it would burn directly to the bones. I'm fine. Thank you. Adela calmed down after hearing Gervais's inquiry, and her face looked a little unnatural. After all, he has never been in such close contact with a man since he was a child. In fact, even if the netherworld fireball hit her just now, she would not be hurt, because the sapphire blue necklace around her neck is a high-level protective equipment that can protect her from any damage. Of course, this protective equipment can only be effective once in a short period of time. If you have just used it once, you will not be able to use it for the next 10 days or so. Therefore, this sapphire blue necklace is a life-saving trump card for her. And it is very important to the safety of the next adventure. It's okay. Gervais didn't know what was going on in Adela's mind. Seeing that she was in a daze, he thought she was scared. So he naturally stretched out his palm to signal Adela to get up. Adela was a little hesitant when she saw Gervais's outstretched palm. But she only hesitated for a moment and finally stretched out her slender palm to rest on Gervais's hand, and then stood up with Gervais's strength. After standing up, Adela immediately retracted her hand and turned her head away, not daring to look at Gervais. She only felt that her face was a little hot. Gervais did not pay attention to Adela's reaction, but walked towards the golden knight who was hit by the nether fireball. Brother, go with peace of mind. Your family will definitely receive a lot of compensation. At this time, the golden knight had been burned to bones. Gervais came close and whispered to him, then saw the mithril sword beside him. So he picked it up. Adela, are you okay? Adela, you are not hurt. Just when Gervais finished checking the golden knight, the green skeleton soldiers were almost killed. Lucky and Dwyer immediately ran to Adela impatiently and began to inquire with concern. I'm fine. 
Adela responded politely to the concern of several people, then looked at the body of the golden knight next to Gervais and walked over. Holy light purifies. The netherworld green fire on this golden knight has almost burned out, with only a little bit still burning. But when Adela released the holy light for purification, the last little flame that was still burning was extinguished. Lachi, this is your guard. Let's bury him properly. I will compensate his family when we go back. Although the Golden Knight was hit by the Skeleton Mage's fireball and died, if Adela had not dodged at that moment, the Golden Knight would definitely not have been hit. This made Adela, who had not experienced many such experiences. There is some compassion. Of course, if the Golden Knight was not hit, but Adela was hit, the people next to her would also feel uncomfortable, because Adela's protective necklace is a protection similar to a protective shield. After the protective shield blocks the netherworld fireball, the explosion and splashing of sparks will definitely hurt Xania and the training magicians around her. At that time, their line of magicians would suffer heavy losses. Even if they couldn't burn anyone to death, they would still make several people lose their fighting ability. Adela, you don't have to worry. When I go back, I will ask Butler Bog to support his family. I guarantee you that the families of every guard who comes and sacrifices this time will receive proper arrangements. When Lachi heard Adela's words, he immediately patted his chest and promised. Adela didn't say anything more when she saw Lucky saying this. After returning, regardless of whether Lucky would compensate these guards or not, she would give her a piece of her heart. The next step was to clean the battlefield, and the three dead guards were buried directly on the spot. Everyone also used the surrounding stones to build an unnamed tombstone for them. Of course, these things were naturally handled by the guards, while Lucky and others rested aside. Taking advantage of this time, Lucky proudly began to praise Gervais, saying that he had done a good job in rescuing Adela. After returning this time, in addition to the promised revenge, he would also be rewarded with an additional hundred gold coins. By the way, he secretly mocked his competitors a few words. Lucky spoke very loudly, just what he wanted to say to Adela and Devere, because it was clear that the three trainee magicians were getting closer to Adela just now. But in the end, they just stood there and did nothing. Dever was sitting not far away, and his face turned blue and white as he listened. But he couldn't say anything to fight back. He could only lower his head and gnash his teeth. Master! When we were cleaning up the skeleton mage, this thing fell out of his head. Just as Lucky became more and more excited as he talked, a guard quickly ran over and handed over a gray transparent chip. Soul Crystal! Lucky immediately recognized the origin of the gray transparent chip, and then ran to Adela without caring about what to say to Gervais. Adela, look at this as a soul crystal. With that said, Lucky handed the chip to Adela. Adela took the white chip and looked at it. Surprised, it's really soul crystals. Soul crystals can appear in red bone skeleton soldiers. It's really rare. There are five levels of skeleton creatures. Namely gray, green, red, purple, and gold. The lowest among them is the white skeleton. With no soul fire visible in its eye sockets. Skeletons of other levels that follow will not only have soul fire of the same color, but the skeletons on their bodies will also show corresponding colors. The skeletons they just killed had been covered in dirt for hundreds of years, so their colors were obscured by filth. Generally speaking, most of the soul crystals that appear after being killed are purple skeletons. Soul crystals dropped from red skeletons are extremely rare, which is why Adela, Lachi and others were extremely surprised. Chapter 534 Shock in the Ruins He. I guess we are lucky. Adela, just keep this soul crystal. You are the only one among us who can use it as a necromancer. Many dark creatures do not actually have bodies, such as skeleton creatures, and their power comes from the fire of the soul within their bodies. The stronger the soul of the dark creature, the more powerful it is. So the soul crystal they picked up can be used to feed the dark creature, which can enhance the soul strength of the dark creature. If Adela can summon a lowest level white bone skeleton at this moment, then as long as she feeds this soul crystal, there is a high chance that the white bone skeleton will be directly promoted to a green bone skeleton. Of course, the higher the level of the skeleton creature, the more difficult it is to advance. If you want to increase the level later, you can only use more soul crystals to fill it. Adela was a little moved by Lucky's proposal. Although as long as she opened her mouth after returning, she could still find a lot based on her family background. However, what you get through your family and what you get by taking risks have different meanings. This skeleton mage was killed by Mr. Harry. Lucky, go and ask for me. I want to buy it with him with gold coins. Is it okay? Miss Adela, 
Although I killed this skeleton mage, I was hired by Master Lucky. And the loot belongs to Mr. Lucky. So since he gave it to you, then you accept it. Gervais listened to Adela's words and praised her for her self-restraint. She even knew how to ask her own hired mage. Therefore, Gervais did not need Lucky to come over to ask and directly gave the result to Adela. Of course, this is not to say that Gervais is generous. He signed an employment agreement with Lachi when he was in the holy city of Hika, which can be regarded as contractual employment. Naturally, the distribution of spoils is also mentioned. As written above it was clear that he had no right to share in the spoils of the adventure. Gervais estimated that Adela had never been exposed to this before. So he asked Lachi to ask him. Thank you, Sir Harry. Hearing Gervais's answer, Adela smiled and nodded to Gervais to thank her. Next, after the battlefield was cleaned and the moonlight spirit fruit was harvested, everyone headed towards the moon again. The seriously injured guards were left behind and three more lightly injured guards were left behind to take care of and protect them. After all, these people have lost the ability to move. Taking them on the road is not only dangerous, but also a burden. After walking through the high slope, the terrain ahead slowly began to change. After walking for more than half an hour, what they saw was no longer the endless wilderness, but what gradually began to appear. Everyone be vigilant. The risk factor of traveling in the wilderness is actually not high, but with the dense woods, everyone's spirits began to become tense because no one is sure whether there are dark creatures or other ferocious monsters hiding in these woods. In this way, everyone marched again for about two hours under the moonlight. Two hours later, they finally saw some building ruins again. Besides the ruins, they also saw a faint light coming from there again. Harry, is there a fire there? This time, Devere and the others learned to be honest and did not say anything immediately after seeing the light. Lucky also asked Gervais in a low voice. Gervais couldn't help but rolled his eyes when he heard Lucky's question. These people have become stupid in order to show off in front of Adela. Is this something that can be seen at a glance? Why are they not confident yet? Woke up, this time, due to terrain problems. They were not far away when they saw the ruins of the building. Although no flames could be seen in the light in the ruins. Judging from the flickering light, it must have been fire. It's fire! Gervais replied. It's fire! It's probably Messisa and Uter. Everyone, be careful. Let's touch them and teach them a lesson. After getting Gervais's confirmation, Lachi immediately felt confident. So he whispered a few words with Adela and the others. And everyone finally agreed that they wanted to go over and teach Messisa and the others a lesson. After all, Messisa and Uter had conflicts with themselves and others again and again. When we first reached the mountainside, everyone was approaching the entrance. When Adelman chased them, he went even further and directly blocked their escape. If Waddington hadn't arrived in time, they might have died halfway up the mountain. This revenge must be avenged. After making the decision, everyone took advantage of the darkness to draw their swords and weapons, and then slowly moved forward. This ruins was originally supposed to be a large manor, but it was destroyed for unknown reasons and is now reduced to ruins. After several minutes of careful marching, Gervais and his party finally arrived at the outskirts of the ruins. Something's wrong. Yutter and the others have two to three hundred people. Why don't they even have a sentry guard? Cautiously at the edge of the wall, Lachi Adela and the others gathered together, wondering in their hearts. They approached all the way, but didn't see even a guard on guard. This was very unreasonable. Maybe not Yitter and the others, Dwyer mentioned quietly. No matter who it is, let everyone be more vigilant. We will know the answer if we touch it and see. Everyone looked at each other. Although people from the Holy Trading Company and the Kington family came in late. But it's not impossible to take a detour and pass them. After all, they were delayed a lot of time at Gopa. After the discussion ended, everyone continued to move towards the interior of the ruins. Several golden knights were in charge of leading the charge while Gervais and others were in the middle. As he got closer and closer to the place where the fire came from, Gervais suddenly frowned because he smelled a faint smell of blood. Gervais looked at Lackey and the others. There was nothing strange about them, and they obviously couldn't smell the smell of blood. He was too close to the fire at this moment, and Gervais did not warn him. Everyone would know it later. Then Gervais touched the long sword on his waist. If there was a hand-to-hand -hand encounter, he would be able to pull out the long sword immediately. This long sword was exactly what he picked up when he was on the high slope. Lucky just asked strangely why Gervais was hanging a long sword. Gervais explained that if a skeleton crawled out at his feet, it would be best to respond immediately. Lucky felt that Gervais's words were very reasonable. 
So he immediately transformed into a licking dog and gave Adela a short blade. Then she plagiarized Gervais's words openly, causing Adela to put away the short blade for self-defense. Ten meters, eight and five meters. At this time, they were only separated by a wall from the fire, and they could even hear voices on the other side of the broken wall. To their surprise, the people next to the fire were not Yuter, Mesisa and others, nor were they members of the Holy Trading Company Corps and Golden Shield families, but more than a dozen orcs. These orcs were sitting around the fire, eating food and talking and laughing, and the food in their hands turned out to be human limbs. Adela just took a sneak peek. Her face turned pale, and she almost vomited. Bana! Human meat is still delicious. I don't know if the leader and others can catch the escaped humans. I haven't eaten human meat for a long time. It's indeed more delicious than monster meat. I heard from the leader that there are at least a thousand humans entering here this time. Ha ha! We must eat enough. Just when everyone was about to vomit, the orcs beside the fire continued to eat and chat happily, unaware that they were surrounded. Lucky and Dwyer barely suppressed the desire to vomit, looked at each other, and then made gestures to wipe their necks at the surrounding guards. This group of orcs actually feeds on humans, and there are other accomplices, so we can only capture them quickly and see if we can find out what is going on. You must know that there are Waddington and others at the entrance of Sunset Forest, and these orcs dare to be so rampant. Chapter 535 The Second Entrance Seeing the gestures of Lucky and others, Gervais suddenly became excited. In his eyes, those dozen orcs were not only damned orcs, but also shining points of energy. Kill! Almost in an instant, all the guards lurking around crossed the broken wall in front of them, and then rushed towards the group of orcs with their long swords raised. At this time, you can see the endless anger in the eyes of these guards. As human beings, if they see other races killing their own kind, they may ignore it and ignore it. But when they see their own kind being eaten as food, no one will hesitate to eliminate these offending races. Because this has risen to the ranking of the position of the food chain. Humans have always regarded themselves as being at the top of the food chain. And it is impossible to tolerate other races treating themselves as food. It's a human! Enemy attack! Several orcs were enjoying their rare taste of human meat. But suddenly a group of murderous humans appeared around them. They were instantly frightened and yelled. They dropped what they were holding and picked up the weapons beside them to prepare for an attack. Fireball! Fireball! Gervais fired five fireballs in succession, blasting towards the five orcs respectively. Boom! Boom! These orcs had no time to hold onto the weapons beside them, when Gervais's fireball had already arrived in front of them, and hit them directly in the face. In an instant, the fireball as hot as lava enveloped them, and the five orcs only had time to let out a cry. And then, they lay on the ground like dead corpses. Kill! The guards who were originally full of murderous intent saw that half of the orcs fell down in an instant. Their shouts became louder, and they rushed harder. They swarmed up and surrounded the remaining orcs, and began to chop with all their strength. Ha! Huh? Harry! Don't be so excited. It will be bad if there is an emergency after the magic is released. The guards only focused on charging towards the orcs. But Lucky and others stood beside Gervais. Adela and others originally wanted to release two magic spells to help protect them. But when they saw him release five fireball spells in one go, killing half of the orcs instantly in a very short period of time, they all stopped and looked at them in surprise. To Gervais, they wondered whether Gervais was firing out fireballs so crazily because the orcs' actions aroused murderous intentions. Lucky even offered words of comfort to Gervais. After all, using up all his magic power at once was a taboo for magicians. How could Gervais explain to them that it was an energy point? If he didn't do it quickly, he wouldn't even be able to get the soup later. Moreover, with the staff in his hand, he can release ten fireballs. If he wasn't afraid of arousing suspicion from Lucky and others, he would have taken away all the orcs in one wave. Okay, Master Lucky. Gervais nodded and responded to Lucky. After hearing the answer, Lucky breathed a sigh of relief. He was afraid that the excellent mage he hired would do something irrational. After all, there would be many places where magicians would be used in the future. Since Harry can listen to advice, then it's not a big problem. Lucky thought to himself. However, this thought of Lucky was still in his mind. And he saw Gervais pull out the long sword from his waist with a clang, easily cross the broken wall in front of him, and rush towards the melee crowd in front. Hey! Harry! You? Lucky suddenly became anxious. Gervais was a magician. Those orcs could seriously injure or kill Gervais with just one hammer. However, his words were covered up by the sound of slashing in front of him. 
Let me kill this one. You go deal with those orcs who are still healthy. Gervais turned a deaf ear to Lucky's words and came to the side of several titled knights with his sword raised. At this time, the four of them were besieging a jackal. And the jackal had been stabbed more than a dozen times and was dying. Gervais dared to delay. So he quickly squeezed in while shouting loudly. If he let the guards insert one or two more swords, his energy points would be wasted. The four guards naturally recognized Gervais and immediately stopped after hearing his words. Anyway, the jackal was already dying and had lost its fighting ability. Since the magician wanted to kill him, let him give it to him. After all the guards left, Gervais raised his sword high, pretending to be unfamiliar, and then slashed hard at the knoll's neck. Puff! Ding! At one energy point, hearing the sound coming from the system, Gervais looked at the other orcs with satisfaction. Soon he saw that another orc was also dying and about to be hacked to death. So he didn't dare to delay it all and ran over again, shouting. Two of the guards were the ones who had just killed the jackal. When they saw Gervais coming over again, they gave him a strange look. But the movements in their hands still stopped. Puff! Ding! At one energy point, Gervis once again gains a little energy point. Next, Gervais followed the same pattern. Whenever an orc was chopped to death, he would run over quickly and then gain another two energy points. This was because there were too many guards, and several weaker orcs could not withstand the attacks of the guards. By the time Gervais called to stop, they had all turned into pulp. Then there was only one half-orc left in the audience. This half-orc had the strength of a golden knight. So even though he had been chopped bloody, he still had the last bit of strength to continue resisting. Don't kill him! Keep him alive! Seeing that there was only one orc left, Lucky and the others finally spoke out. If this one was also hacked to death, there would be no one left alive for torture. The guards naturally stopped after hearing the order, and then several golden knights swarmed him and pushed him to the ground. Seeing this, Gervais could only stand aside reluctantly, resisting the urge to take action. After seeing that the orcs had been dealt with, Lucky and the others also climbed over the broken wall and came to the field. Several people looked at Gervais with strange eyes when they came over. They really didn't know that the wild mage, who usually seemed harmless, could have such a crazy moment. Especially Adela. She also looked at Gervais with complex eyes. When she was in Gopa, Gervais flew to save her. Her feelings towards Gervais had changed. And she forgave Gervais for his unreasonable behavior. And even thought he was pretty good. But she didn't expect Gervais to behave like a murderous god at this time. Which made Adela, who had rarely experienced bloody battles, a little afraid of him. Facing everyone's gaze, Gervais just showed a warm smile. He is in a very good mood now. He has gained 9 energy points in just a few minutes. He doesn't care what others think of him. As long as his personality is not broken. After all, he is taking advantage of the guards. After seeing Gervais's smile, Lachi and the others didn't say anything, but walked towards the orc who had been tied up. Why do you eat humans? Everyone was very confused. Ardman surrendered to Waddington in public outside the entrance. Why did his subordinates dare to be so cruel? Not only killing humans, but also eating them as food? Aren't they worried about being discovered and then unable to walk out into the sunset? Forest? Bah! Dirty humans! If you can, kill me! I tell you, none of you can escape! Ha ha! The orcs were obviously not lacking in blood. They spat out a mouthful of blood at Lucky and the others. And then laughed wildly. Snapped. The orc just laughed twice before the guard next to him hit him hard on the face with the spine of his sword. Soon a large horizontal stripe-shaped lump appeared on his face. Lucky Adila and the others looked at each other, winked at the guard, and then turned around. Then the orc's painful wails came from the ruins for more than ten minutes. Lucky and the others were pampered and had no way to deal with the tough-minded orcs. But the guards they brought were different. These guards hated these orcs so much that they tortured the orc in various ways for more than ten minutes. After more than ten minutes, the dying orc finally couldn't hold on any longer and began to answer honestly. It was Master Kara who asked us to do this. He took us to this strange place and said that as long as we kill all the humans inside, everyone will be rewarded with 50 gold coins afterwards. Kara? Didn't Adman ask you to do it? Who is Ardman? The orc had a confused expression on his face. When everyone saw the orc's reaction, they were all shocked and had a bad premonition. Where did you enter this strange place? Everyone quickly asked. Rotten Swamp. Master Kara led us from the Rotten Swamp into a hidden cave. When we entered the cave, we just felt dizzy. And when we woke up, we appeared here. The orc answered truthfully. When Lucky and others heard this answer, 
They were all shocked. They originally thought that these orcs were all Ardman's men. But now it seems that this is not the case. These orcs came to the tower from other entrances. How could it be such a coincidence? Other entrances have also been discovered? Everyone's expressions were solemn, feeling that something was wrong. In the past, necromancers were public enemies. So when building a magician tower, they would reserve several entrances and exits to facilitate their evacuation at any time. However, these entrances and exits are very hidden and unrelated to each other. Now, two entrances and exits were discovered and opened at the same time. No one is sure whether this is a coincidence or someone did it deliberately. Chapter 536 What are you afraid of? How many people did you come in this time? There are more than 5,000 people. And we were all recruited in Kokara City. After entering this place, we were divided into teams of 500 people. Our team was led by Captain Khan. It was obvious that the orc had suffered enough and still answered truthfully. After hearing such an answer, everyone present was frightened. These orcs just made it clear by the fire that their main purpose of entering here is to kill all the humans here. That means they are likely to face thousands of orcs next, putting aside the strength of these orcs. In terms of numbers alone, if they encountered this group of orcs, it would be impossible for them to fly even with their wings. Let's get out of here quickly. When they were talking just now, they said that other orcs were tracking the escaped humans and might be back soon. After learning the detailed information about the orcs, everyone was filled with uneasiness. Dwyer even vaguely wanted to retreat and immediately made a proposal to everyone. He went on the adventure to pursue Adela, but he was not willing to really die for love. Wait until I ask again. After that, let's leave here immediately and then consider whether to go on the next adventure. Although there are all kinds of extremely tempting treasures and magic potions in the magician's tower, life is more important than life. After replying to Dwyer, he pulled up and continued to ask the orc, Where did you meet the humans? How many did you kill? We met them in this ruined building. There were about two to three hundred of them in total. We killed more than thirty people and the rest ran away. Which direction did you run in? There! Then the orc raised his hand with difficulty and pointed. And everyone looked in the direction pointed. When they saw the direction in which the orc was chasing, their expression suddenly changed, and they couldn't wait any longer. That direction was the direction they came from, which meant that there were orcs behind them. This half-orc said that there were two to three hundred humans they met, and they were probably Masisa and the others. Adela, we need to evacuate immediately. The orcs must have been chasing Masisa and the others in the woods just now, so we didn't encounter them. If we continue to stay here, we will probably encounter them later. Yes. We must retrace our steps before they notice us. Back to Sunset Forest. The tone of conversation among several people became urgent. And their faces were full of worry. Okay. Let's go back the way we came. Since there is danger. Let's end this adventure. From then on. Everyone agreed and immediately prepared to evacuate. Leave him to me. Gervais saw that they had finished asking and was about to leave. A guard was also ready to end the orc's pain. And Gervais quickly took two steps forward to take over. Lachi and others were now worried about the safety of their group and paid no attention to Gervais's actions. However, the guards beside the orcs looked at Gervais a little strangely. To be honest, they have never seen any noble magician who likes to kill people with a long sword. However, since Gervais made the request, several people stepped aside in recognition, leaving room for Gervais to slash. Puff! Gervais's movements seemed unfamiliar, but the long sword that struck the orc's neck was surprisingly fast and accurate. With just one sword blow, the orc was sent back to the embrace of their beast god. This scene even made several guards speculate whether this magician usually has such a terrible hobby. Gervais didn't care what the guards thought. After dealing with the orcs, he happily walked towards Lucky and others. This time he gained a total of 10 energy points, which is equivalent to earning a kiwi fruit again. And the energy points he now has have become 25 points. In his heart, he felt that the holy continent was a good place. How could he earn so many energy points in Eurasia? Everyone, follow up and watch your surroundings. Lockie and the others didn't waste any time. After he dealt with the orc, he immediately led his guards and began to retreat quickly towards the original road. No one wants to encounter the orc team in the magician's tower. After all, there are thousands of orcs. As long as they are blocked, everyone will be a turtle in a jar. But it seems that their luck is not very good. Everyone didn't expect to encounter something. But something happened. Just when they had been traveling for about three or four minutes, there was a sudden noise in the woods on both sides of the road ahead. After discovering this situation, 
The guard walking at the front immediately raised his palm to signal everyone to stop. Seeing this, the teams behind them all stopped and looked ahead warily. Wow! Wow! As everyone watched nervously, and with the sound of branches and leaves being pushed aside, they saw a tall orc walking onto the road. Then two, ten, a hundred. In just a moment, hundreds of orcs appeared densely packed on the not-so-wide road ahead. The orcs who were chatting and laughing out of the woods also discovered Gervais and his party, and immediately stayed on the spot. The orcs did not expect to encounter humans here, and there were hundreds of them. The silent confrontation between the two sides only lasted for a moment. The orcs leading the team were the first to react and roared loudly at all the orcs. It's humans! Kill them! Don't let them escape! Lachi and the others finally reacted to the orcs' words. Everyone clenched their weapons and waited for the orcs' impact. Quick! Everyone retreat! Back to the ruins! But at this moment, someone in the crowd shouted to retreat. All the guards looked back subconsciously, because the voice was not someone they were familiar with. Although they wanted to retreat, they did not dare to do so without their young master's order. Stop looking! Go to the ruins and fight against the wall! Hurry! It was Gervais who gave the order, and the orcs began to take action. However, Lucky and Dwyer did not give any effective orders, and just prepared to stay where they were and fight. Having gone through many battles, he couldn't stand it anymore. So he shouted loudly, There are dense woods on both sides, and there are no rocks at all. The number of orcs is four times theirs. They can surround them in a moment of hand-to-hand -hand contact. And no one can escape by then. Now run to the ruins and rely on the ruins to prevent the orcs from besieging them. Only then will everyone have a chance to survive. Although Gervais didn't want to reveal his true identity, he was still a zero-time teammate. So just shouting Gervais didn't feel like a big problem. Did you hear that? Execute the order quickly! At this time, Lucky and others also spoke. Although they had little combat experience, they were not stupid. They immediately reacted after hearing Gervais's words and quickly urged the guards to retreat. Then everyone started to move and ran towards the ruins behind. Gervais, on the other hand, looked at the charging orcs and released five fireballs again without hesitation, before turning around and running wildly. While running, Gervais poured a bottle of magic recovery potion into his mouth. Not to mention, although this magic power restoration potion is expensive, it is really effective. Gervais's originally consumed magic power began to recover visibly with the naked eye. And he would be able to recover all his magic power in more than 10 seconds at most. When the group of people quickly ran to the center of the ruins, the guards with combat experience immediately found a defensive position and began to defend. Lachi and others are in the center of the defensive circle. Kill! Not long after they stopped, the orcs behind them finally caught up. All the orcs attacked the guards with murderous intent. And the two sides were fighting together in an instant. Chapter 537 I'll cut off the queen. The battle between the two sides was very fierce. Although the guards brought by Lachi and the others were at least the silver knights and there were more than 10 golden knights. Compared to the orcs, the number was still too small. Fortunately, due to the ruins of the ruins, the orcs' numerical advantage cannot be reflected yet. However, as the battle continued, a burst of red light suddenly appeared behind the orcs. With that red light, the orcs seemed to have been beaten to death and their attacks became more fierce. One goes one with another. And slowly, even if the guards have ruined walls as cover, they are being beaten back by the orcs. And their defense circle is being continuously compressed. No! It's the orc shaman! He gave the orc a fanatical blessing! Lucky and the others knew more about orcs than Gervais. And they instantly recognized what was going on. Orc shamans are like human magicians. They can release all kinds of strange spells and they are best at giving various strengthening blessings to orcs. Seeing this situation, Adela and Xania did not dare to retain their magic power at all. They used magic to attack the orcs one after another, and finally suppressed the orcs pressing step by step. However, they are only junior magicians after all, and the magic they use can only attack individuals. So before long, the orcs will continue to push back the resistance of the guards. What should we do now? There are too many orcs, and we can't hold on for long. Looking at the fierce battle outside, everyone understood that it was not safe to hide here. There were too many orcs, and it was only a matter of time before they invaded. It's definitely not possible to go back the way we came. We can only continue to go deep into the magician's tower. It's best to look for people from other families. Only then can we hope to break out when we get together. Although Adela is a wealthy lady, she didn't panic too much at this time, and instead calmly put forward her opinions. This made Gervais couldn't help but look at her. 
it was obvious that Adela was not a vase. This is the only way. There are many golden knights among this group of orcs. We can only evacuate before they are surrounded. Lachi and the others thought for a moment, and immediately agreed to Adela's proposal. The orcs have blocked their way back, making it impossible to break out. Now they can only have a chance of survival by walking inward and getting rid of the orcs' pursuit. But if we escape now, the orcs will still pursue us. Xenia suddenly interrupted. After hearing Xenia's words, several people looked a little unnatural. In fact, they had thought of such a thing for a long time. But it was difficult to say it directly. Only a heartless person like Xenia would ask such a question. Someone must stay to break up the queen. In the end, Lucky pursed his lips and said it. He came with the largest number of guards this time. More than 80 people. Therefore, at this critical juncture, the only choice for Duanho is among his guards. Isn't this too unfair to them? How about I break the queen? I have a scroll that can release the forbidden curse. Hearing such words, Adela and Xenia's expressions became complicated. Adela hesitated for a moment, as if she had made a decision, and then slowly spoke. No! Adela, we know you must have life-saving equipment, but this is too dangerous. Let the guards stay and give birth to their wives. I will definitely take good care of their families after I go back. Lachi immediately objected, not to mention how many people thought about Adela. Even with Adela's background, they did not dare to leave Adela behind. Otherwise, if something happens to Adela, they will definitely be in big trouble even if they can go back alive. Yes, Adela, you can't stay here. Davir, Xenia and others also offered words of advice. But Adela still couldn't bear it. She had protective equipment like a sapphire blue necklace and a scroll that could release forbidden spells. She was obviously the most suitable person to do it. But everyone obviously wouldn't let her do it. The cheating carousel. Start it. Give me something good. Just when Adela, Lachi and others were arguing, Gervais quietly opened his system panel and then spent 10 energy points to draw a lottery. He has already coveted these orcs. But unfortunately, he is reluctant to use the kiwi fruit that increases his strength by 50 times. After all, this is his only life-saving trump card at the moment. So Gervais reluctantly used the 10 energy points he had just earned to draw a lottery to see if he could draw a useful kiwi fruit. If he could win, maybe he could take advantage of this opportunity to make a fortune. Pen. If you want to gain something, you must know how to pay. Boss, please don't lie to me. This cheating system. You have to be as good as last night. Watching the hand slowly stop turning. Gervais kept praying in his heart that the cheating system would be more powerful. The next moment, the pointer finally stopped on the black kiwi fruit icon, which actually made Gervais breathe a sigh of relief. Instead of being disappointed, he was actually looking forward to it. What he needs now is a kiwi fruit that can instantly enhance his strength. So drawing a black kiwi fruit is just in line with his wishes. But next, he has to see what function this black kiwi fruit has. Black kiwi fruit. This is an energy spirit fruit that contains huge energy. After taking it, you can squander the fighting energy, magic power, in your body without worrying about consumption. The time limit is one hour. It will take effect immediately after taking it. Damn it. Why is it an energy fruit with infinite fighting spirit? Gervais remembered that this was the third time he had drawn a black kiwi fruit with this function. Although the infinite fighting spirit kiwi fruit played a big role in him in the first two times. In comparison, Gervais hopes to get the kiwi fruit that can instantly enhance his strength. I have no choice but to make do with it. Although it did not meet his psychological expectations, it was not the worst result. Gervais closed the system panel silently. Why don't you let me give it a try? Safety shouldn't be a problem. Just wait for me at a distance later. After all, Adela still can't get over the hurdle in her heart. If she can't do anything, it's okay. She won't be so stupid that she will die to help others. But now that she is clearly capable of breaking up, but she is still holding back. This is not in line with her bottom line. I'll do it. Just when Lucky and others were about to continue to reject Adela, a lazy voice suddenly came from the side. It was Gervais, who had just closed the system panel. Harry, what did you say? Everyone was a little confused and thought they heard it wrong. I said I would break up the rear, and you should evacuate quickly. If we delay any longer, the orcs will surround us. Gervais replied seriously. Harry, don't talk nonsense. Even if you are asked to cut off the queen, you don't have the ability. In Lockie's mind, Gervais, the wild mage, was much more valuable than the guard. He was also recognized by the holy tree of the holy city of Hika. So how could Lockie let him cut off his queen? Moreover, 
Gervais does not have the strength to block the queen. If he cannot resist the orcs for more than 10 minutes, it will make no difference whether he blocks the queen or not. Don't Miss Adela have that scroll? Give him to me. I will buy you at least 10 minutes later. If not, I will activate the scroll directly. Gervais had already planned his words and immediately spoke them to everyone. Chapter 538 Wong's Performance Master Harry, you cannot escape and survive if the scroll is activated. Do you understand? Adela looked at Gervais in disbelief and told him the consequences of activating the Forbidden Curse scroll with great seriousness. The attack range of the Forbidden spell is very wide. So even if they escape immediately after being activated, it is impossible for them to do so based on their strength. I understand this very well. Miss Adela, you don't have to worry. Gervais nodded without any hesitation. Adela, since Harry is willing to stay and break up the queen, then you should give him the scroll and we should evacuate quickly. Otherwise, we will really be surrounded by orcs later. Devere rolled his eyes and immediately urged Adela. To be honest, Gervais' current actions can be said to be selfless and sacrificial for others. But Dwyer didn't care. After all, if such a wild mage hadn't been hired by Lucky, he would have had people from the Magician's Association catch him or kill him directly if he encountered him. Now that Gervais can sacrifice himself for others, he can make the best use of everything. What's more important is that he lost a lot of face because of Gervais in the past two days. Now Gervais is preparing to seek death. And Dwyer is very happy to see it. Master Harry, have you made your decision? Adela ignored Devere's urging and looked at Gervais seriously to confirm again. The decision has been made. You can leave with peace of mind. I may not die. Gervais also looked at this beautiful young lady and couldn't help but think of the beautiful scenery. Not to mention, it was really unforgettable. Then it's up to you. I wish you good luck. This may be the best choice. Sacrificing the least number of people to save everyone. And Gervais was still voluntary. So after Adela confirmed that Gervais was serious. How is this possible? Is he a high-level human magician? Seeing that the orcs in front were hiding behind the ruined walls and not daring to come forward. The shamans in the rear were also getting closer. Seeing that Gervais fired at least 10 fireballs in a row. The shaman opened his mouth in surprise. That's not right. If he is a high-level human magician, then he can release more powerful magic. Why use the fireball technique, which consumes the most but is not very lethal? Is it just a new junior magician who has not learned other skills? Magic? Everyone, stand up and rush over. Kill that human mage. Although the shaman couldn't figure out why Gervais could fire so many fireballs, he could still guess his realm. If it was a high-level magician, the shaman would immediately start escaping with the orcs without saying a word. But if Gervais could only shoot fireballs, the threat would not be great. At most, he would lose some orc warriors. He didn't want those humans to run away. Kill! The shaman has a high status among the orcs. And no one dares to disobey him. The orcs who were originally suppressed by Gervais and could not lift their heads roared to their feet and raised various weapons to attack Gervais. Swift blessing! The orc warriors began to charge again. And the shaman did not pause. He immediately blessed the orcs at the front with a blessing spell which instantly made the orc warriors run half a minute faster. Let's see if you can run faster. Or my fireball technique is faster. Gervais had noticed the shaman priest a long time ago. But the shaman priest was too thief and kept observing from a distance. He had no way to attack. At this time, he saw the orcs blessing the aura and rushing towards him quickly. He estimated that Adela and the others should have gone far. So he let go. As Gervais cast spells without any scruples, the fireball in his hand became faster and faster. Boom, boom, boom. Although the fireballs were sometimes blocked by the orcs' shields. The orcs were poorly equipped and only a few had shields. In a moment, Gervais still harvested more than 10 energy points. Time passed like this, and the orcs wanted to rush to Gervais. But Gervais was not a brainless wild monster. Seeing that the orcs were about to approach, he immediately used his fighting spirit to run back a certain distance. After a safe distance was reached, Gervais began to release fireballs again. Of course, Gervais' kite-flying style won't last long. Because although his magic power is unlimited, the problem is that his mental power is limited. A magician can not only rely on magic power to release magic, but also rely on mental power to build a magic matrix in the mind and inject magic power to release a complete magic. At this time, Gervais had realized that his mental power had reached the bottom. The speed of building the magic matrix became slower and more difficult and the speed of releasing fireballs also slowed down. But in general, Gervais has released no less than hundreds of fireballs from the beginning to now. 
even compared to other magicians. They are still monsters. His mental strength is not comparable to even a junior magician. It looks like it's tough. Then, let you have a taste of the power of the sword in the king's hand. Speaking of which, cutting each other face to face is my favorite way to fight. Gervais silently retracted his staff, and then slowly pulled out the mithril sword from his waist. He cannot wait until his mental power is completely exhausted before stopping. Otherwise his mental power will be exhausted and his close combat effectiveness will also be affected. Ha ha! This human magician has no magic power. Capture him alive! The shaman kept watching Gervais's every move from behind. When he saw Gervais put away his staff and drew out his mithril sword, he immediately guessed that Gervais had no magic power. Although it cost the lives of dozens of orc warriors, it was all worth it if they could capture Gervais alive. Chapter 539 Harvesting Energy Points The orc priest also wanted to know why this low-level human magician could fire so many fireballs. The shaman even regarded Gervis as a junior magician. If he were told that Gervais was actually a trainee magician, his jaw would probably drop. Yes! Lord Sacrifice! After hearing the shaman's words, the orc warriors responded one after another and charged towards Gervais aggressively. A magician without magic power is like a beast without fangs. So he could only be slaughtered by others. When Gervais heard the words of the orc shaman, a smile suddenly appeared on his lips. You want to capture me alive? I'm afraid you will die miserably. Holding the slightly loose iron helmet on his head, Gervais took a deep breath, then raised his sword and rushed towards the orcs rushing towards him. Kill! Seeing Gervais rushing towards him without knowing his strength, the orcs in front showed a joking smile and charged straight towards Gervais. I saw that both Gervais and the orcs were extremely fast, and they collided with each other in an instant. Boom! Click! Ah! The orcs originally dismissed Gervais's thin body. But the moment they collided with Gervais, they realized what a big mistake they had made. The seemingly skinny human in front of him had the strength of a bull, instantly knocking two tall orcs backwards. At the same time, there was a cracking sound of bones breaking from one of the orcs. One can imagine how powerful the impact was at that time. If there weren't other orcs behind them blocking them, they might have all flown out. Kill! Puff! Puff! The two orcs over there were knocked away, but Gervais stopped firmly in place. Next, something even more surprising happened to the orcs. A layer of white spiritual light suddenly appeared on Gervais's body, and the fighting spirit in his body was driven to the extreme by him. Gervais doesn't have to worry about running out of fighting spirit. What he needs to do now is to release his greatest power without any scruples and harvest these walking energy points in front of him. As the mithril sword continued to strike, two orcs instantly became the dead souls under his sword. No! He is a titled knight! This human magician is the silver knight! Is he crazy when he practices fighting spirit and magic at the same time? Why can he still release so many fireballs? Instantly, the orcs screamed in surprise. They felt like they had encountered a monster today. No matter how slow the orc warriors are, they now know that Gervais possesses both fighting spirit and magic power. When the shaman behind him heard this, his head buzzed, and endless questions arose in his mind. There is no shortage of people who want to learn magic and fighting spirit at the same time in the holy continent. And they can indeed practice. However, this situation only occurs during the trainee magician or trainee knight stage. If you once break through and become a real magician or titled knight, you can only choose one of the two and choose one of them to practice. Because the human body is like a water tank. There is a limit to how much water a water tank can hold. If you want to practice Do Chi and magic at the same time, then this person is destined to never be able to break through to a higher realm. After all, cultivation is constantly breaking through the limits of the human body. If there is fighting spirit and magic power in the body at the same time, both powers will not be able to reach the standard of breaking through the limits. This is the consensus that all humans have concluded over a long time. And even the orcs know something about it. But the human in front of him broke this consensus. Not only was he a magician who could release hundreds of fireballs in one breath, but he was also a knight with the title of silver. This made even the most knowledgeable shaman among the orcs very confused. Everyone retreat and let the orc warriors with golden strength deal with him. We must capture him alive at all costs. Surprised. But in the eyes of the shaman, Gervais is just a silver knight after all. So he still fantasizes about continuing to capture Gervais. Does the golden knight really work? Gervais laughed ferociously. If normally, he could only run away. But now that he has been blessed with infinite fighting spirit, even the golden knight might not be able to help him. Breaking wind slash. Gervais did not hesitate and used the secret book directly. In an instant, 
a hurricane appeared within five meters of Gervais's body. The hurricane carried endless sand and dust, which instantly made the surrounding orcs unable to open their eyes. Kill! Puff! Puff! When the orcs were blinded by the sand and dust, Gervais's killing began. Facing the beast Gervais of the same level, it can be easily dealt with with just one or two swords. The Golden Knight was a bit more troublesome. There was a Golden Knight next to Gervais. Even with his eyes closed, Gervais had to chop dozens of swords to kill him. Ding! Get two energy points. When Gervais killed this orc with golden strength, a system prompt sounded in his mind. An orc with golden strength is really rewarded with two energy points. Which shows that the two energy points I got from assassinating the tower named Quick last time was not an accident. Ha ha! Let my energy points hit harder. At this time, the scene on the field completely changed. The orcs who were still murderous began to flee one after another. Because they had no way to deal with the 5 meter hurricane around your base. As long as you enter 5 meters around your base's body, there will be endless sand and dust. So how can you fight? Even if you force yourself to squint your eyes, it won't help. The weak ones are no match for Gervais. The orcs don't know yet that Gervais can only use the second level of Breathless Slash due to his strength. If Gervais now had the cultivation level of a Golden Knight, then what they would encounter would not be sand and dust, but sharp wind blades. No! This human must be captured alive. If he cannot be captured alive, he must die here. Otherwise, he will become a disaster to the royal court once he grows up. The shaman saw the scene at the scene and Gervais's performance completely subverted his previous understanding of human warriors. Even if he can release dozens of fireballs at once, the problem is that he is still a knight with the title. And as a silver knight, his release secret can last for several minutes. You must know that the humans he has seen in the past can only last for more than 10 seconds after the secret is released. Is this human being in front of him still justified? It is difficult for the orc shaman to imagine how terrifying the man in front of him will be when he truly grows up. Seeing that it was impossible for the orc warriors to kill Gervais, the shaman no longer hesitated, waved the staff in his hand, and began to pray. As his prayer ended, a translucent green owl suddenly appeared above his shoulder. Greenling, go find Captain Khan and tell him that there is a big enemy here. Come back quickly. Captain Khan must be quick. The shaman saw the translucent owl on his shoulder appearing and immediately explained to it. As the shaman finished explaining, the transparent owl, which seemed to be projected, rushed into the sky with a croak and headed towards the direction where it had just pursued the human. Khan was the captain of their team of 500 people. In order to check if there were any humans who had slipped through the net, he did not return with the team. The shaman felt that if the human in front continued to unleash his secret skills, only Khan could deal with him. When the shaman released the green spirit to move the reinforcements, Gervais also noticed the strange bird. In fact, he had been paying attention to the shaman, and at this time, he kept approaching the shaman. However, while the ruins and ruins hindered the orcs, they also hindered his own actions. Fortunately, the effect of the black kiwi fruit can last for an hour, and Gervais is not in a hurry, so he harvests energy points while approaching the shaman without leaving any trace. Puff! Puff! A few minutes later, after once again dealing with the two orcs standing in front of him, Gervais's eyes flashed coldly because the shaman was already less than 10 meters away from him. The shaman did not run away but was praying and wanted to use magic to attack Gervais. Roaring Blade! As the shaman roared violently, an illusory tiger appeared in front of him. The tiger roared violently in the direction of Gervais, and its bloody mouth was mixed with dozens of sharp slashes. The wind blade slashed at Gervais one after another. This is the biggest killing move of the Roaring Blade shaman. He didn't run away when Gervais approached. Just to wait for this moment. With so many wind blades, let alone the Silver Knight, even the low-level gold knight would not feel comfortable encountering them. Chapter 540 Birdman Critical Three Sword Slash The moment he saw dozens of wind blades appear, Gervais also moved. He immediately put away the storm breath slash and then used the critical strike three sword slash that he had not used for a long time. Although the critical strike three sword slash has many shortcomings, it also has a unique advantage. That is, if you practice to the extreme, as long as you have enough fighting spirit, you will be able to form a strong wind-like existence in front of you when you cut out. And this strong wind is also lethal. Enough to break through the lazing wind blade. First cut. White light flowed all over Gervais's body. And then he strode forward one meter. And slashed out with his long sword like a catastrophic force. Boom. Boom. As the strong wind formed by the three-sword strike collided with the blasting wind blade. A banging sound came from in front of Gervais. 
This was the sound of the strong wind colliding with the wind blade. Second cut. Gervais did not feel contempt for blocking the first wave of wind blades. Instead, he became faster and walked again. Then with a roar, he slashed out the second of the three critical strikes. This wave of wind blades was much more numerous than the first wave. And when Gervais slashed out his second sword, it had already shot in front of him. Boom. 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 Puff. The energy of the second slash still blocked many wind blades. But as the strong wind was slowly offset, at this moment, a wind blade slipped through the net, breaking through Gervais's defense, and directly it hit Gervais on the shoulder. Although Gervais has put on the armor of a guard and has a layer of shoulder pads on his shoulders, the power of the wind blade is really not small, and the shoulder pads forged from Mithril cannot compete with it. There was only a pop sound, and the wind blade cut open the shoulder pad, leaving a bone-deep wound on Gervais's shoulder. After being injured, Gervais did not panic. His originally calm eyes showed infinite murderous intent at this moment. Third cut. When Gervais called out the third slash, he jumped up to a height of more than three meters, raised his sword high, and slashed straight towards the shaman's face. Puff. Puff. Although Gervais had jumped more than three meters high in the air, two wind blades still slashed across his calves and thighs, causing blood to flow immediately. Go to H. L. Gervais still ignored the new injuries and shouted loudly. At this time, he had reached the head of the shaman. Madman. The shaman's eyes widened. He didn't expect Gervais to be killed by two roaring blades. Puff. As a horrifying sound of penetration came, the shaman could no longer say any words. His eyes were full of doubts. Even if Gervais killed him, Gervais's own legs were also severely injured. He would only be surrounded and killed by other orcs later. Why would he choose to die with him? But he would never know the answer. Ding! Add two energy points. TSK! TSK! It's not worth it! How can it be counted as a golden knight's points? If I had made an oversight just now, I would have spent the rest of my life in a wheelchair. Oh no! I don't even have a chance to use a wheelchair. He barely managed to hold himself up with his long sword and didn't fall down. After looking around at the stunned orcs around him, Gervais muttered angrily. He was hit by two wind blades. If he hadn't calculated it in advance, if the cut was deeper, it wouldn't be a flesh wound and it would be possible to cut off half of his legs directly. The priest was killed! The priest was killed by that human being! Kill him and avenge the priest! Seeing the shaman priest, who had been transformed into two halves, the orcs who were still stunned finally reacted. They instantly felt as if they had seen the enemy who killed their father, and their red eyes were ready to fight Gervais. When Gervais saw such a scene, he did not dare to neglect it all. He quickly conceived a magic matrix in his mind. Healing! Healing! After releasing two healing spells in succession, the bleeding from the wound on Gervais's leg finally stopped, and the wound had actually become scarred, and it looked like it would be intact as before in a short time. If the orc priest, who had been split in half in front of Gervais was still alive, he would definitely jump up and shout, You are a dual-type magician. Isn't this justified? He raised his long sword and raised his legs to the left and right. After realizing that there was nothing serious, Gervais was about to roar and continued to use the breath of the wind to harvest the lives of the orcs. But at this moment, he suddenly felt a creepy feeling, and the hairs all over his body stood up instantly. Whoosh! Just after Gervais had this feeling, he immediately heard a very fast sound breaking through the air from behind. Gervais didn't even dare to think, and flew directly towards the ground ahead. Boom! When Gervais stood up again, a huge pit half a meter wide appeared two meters behind him. There was also a gray metal fork inserted in the huge pit. This big pit was exactly where he was standing just now. Location. Chirp. Birdman? Gervais looked up at the sky and saw a slender orc with wings on his back flying towards him at a height of 100 meters. The iron fork he just threw at Gervais. Captain Colin! Captain Colin! The priest was killed by this human! As soon as the birdman landed on the ground, all the orcs greeted him one after another. After the ceremony, he couldn't wait to tell him about the death of the shaman. At this time, the birdman's eyes were also focused on the shaman, who was split in half on the ground. And his face was terrifyingly ugly. However, the birdman did not take any immediate action. Because the orcs were still describing all kinds of strange things about Gervais. At this time, Gervais also recognized the type of birdman in front of him. This flying orc was called a winged orc. Because the winged orcs have two wings. They can fly in the sky and their speed is no slower than ordinary birds. Therefore, they are very valued by the orc royal court. 
and they are usually used as a scout team to detect the enemy's situation. The winged orc in front of Gervais has reached golden strength, and is probably still a peak golden knight, because Gervais can feel a strong sense of oppression on his body. Looks like we have to find a way to escape. Gervais narrowed his eyes. This winged orc was not something he could fight against. Moreover, he had successfully delayed this group of orcs for at least 15 minutes, which could be regarded as completing the task of breaking up. There was no need to stay and fight. Gervais was thinking about escaping. And the winged orc had also finished listening to his subordinate's report at this time. And his eyes flashed at Gervais. No wonder the priest wants me to come back. It turns out that so many strange things have happened to you. Human, I won't kill you. I will capture you back to the royal court. And you will definitely get a lot of bounty by then. The winged orc picked up the iron fork in the pit. And an ugly smile appeared on his nondescript. Bird-like head. Chapter 541 The Real Knight. Facing Khan's joking and ugly smile. Gervais's face was full of disdain. And then he said in a more joking tone than Colin. Ha ha! Birdman, do you think I am still planning to leave alive? To tell you the truth, since I dare to be here to block your pursuit, then I am ready to die with you. Just now, I just want to experience the last just a hearty killing. As he spoke, Gervais quickly put the long sword in his hand into the scabbard, then reached into his arms with one hand, and took out a black scroll under the gaze of the winged orc Colin. Scroll of Forbidden Curse. When he saw the black scroll that Gervais took out from his arms, the winged orc's eyes twitched. He served in the royal court army back then, and was lucky enough to see such a powerful weapon. Even though it had been several years apart, it had such a deterrent effect. The memory was still fresh in his mind. So after seeing the black scroll in Gervais's hand, Khan's hair stood on end immediately. He felt that this scroll contained terrifying power. It was definitely a genuine forbidden curse scroll. Congratulations! You guessed it right! It's a pity that there is no reward. Do you still want to capture me and bring me back to the royal court? Gervais showed a crazy smile and then slowly raised his other hand and pressed the opening switch of the black scroll. Maybe he would activate the forbidden curse scroll in the next second. Crazy! You crazy! Khan, the winged orc, naturally did not want to die with Gervais. At this time, he could only curse a madman and the wings on his back spread out instantly. Then he saw the wings suddenly waved and the winged orc suddenly floated into the air, sweeping towards the horizon at the fastest speed. Ha ha! I am a madman! Do you think you can escape? My scroll is a forbidden spell the secret of the storm. No living thing within two kilometers can survive? Seeing the winged orc Khan flying higher and farther, Gervais's maniacal laughter became louder and louder. Even Khan, who was escaping, was frightened when he heard it. Now! Let us accept the forbidden spell together the baptism of the secret of the storm. Goodbye, ugly orc. As he spoke, Gervais waved his arm rapidly and then threw a scroll into the air. Human, you deserve to die. Khan heard the sound of breaking through the air behind him and only had time to glance with his peripheral vision. When he saw a scroll-like thing flying towards him, he immediately cursed. Then he turned pale and waved his wings with all his strength and ran away without looking back. The orcs who were originally beside Gervais were frightened when they heard Gervais's words and saw their Captain Khan running away in embarrassment. They all dispersed and fled in all directions. Go. With my acting skills, I can't even win a small gold medal. Right. Fortunately, we have also been seniors. I have learned a lot about the cultivation of nobles. Seeing the orcs around him disperse in a rush, Gervais rolled his eyes, and then the fighting energy in his body was running to the extreme, and he quickly ran towards the direction where Lucky and the others evacuated. Gervais hasn't had a baby with his cheap wife Alice yet. How could he be willing to die? What he just took out was indeed the forbidden curse scroll given to him by Adela. But he had already dropped it when he threw it out. The scroll he threw out was picked up when he entered the entrance of the magician's tower. It was the remains of the imprisonment scroll that Adela used on Adderman. The imprisonment scroll has no attack power. So even after the scroll is used, only the magic and mana on it disappear. But the empty SH L remains intact. Gervais was curious at that time. So he picked it up and saw that there were some inscriptions on it. So he planned to keep it for further study. After all, he is also a magician. If he can make magic scrolls, he will be great. He is a person with pursuits and ideals. Unexpectedly, he has not yet started his studies. But it will come in handy here. Adela, come on. That Harry's strength is too low and he may not be able to hold it off for long. We must get rid of the orc's pursuit as soon as possible. A few miles away from Gervais, 
Adela, and a group of more than a hundred people were running towards the depths of the magician's tower. However, Adela would often turn her head and look behind her from time to time while running, which made Devere feel dissatisfied. Although he knew that Adela was probably just feeling pity for a wild mage like Harry, even if Adela felt a little pity in her heart, Dwyer would find it intolerable. At this moment, he was extremely looking forward to hearing the explosion of the Forbidden Curse scroll being used from behind. And then the wild mage named Harry would die without a burial place. Dever. What do you mean? Harry resisted the orc's pursuit and won the chance to escape for all of us. But that was at the risk of his life. You think Harry's strength is low. So why didn't you choose to stay and break up the queen just now? But now you are saying bad things about Harry behind his back? After hearing what Dwyer said, Lucky, who was already in a bad mood, was unhappy and retorted loudly to Dwyer. I... Okay. Stop arguing. Everyone. Don't let down Harry's efforts for us. Adela changed from her previous dignified and elegant temperament. Her expression became a little cold, and her tone of voice was full of dissatisfaction with Devere. Of, to be honest, Adela had always thought that Devere was an ordinary classmate, so she didn't like or dislike him. However, after experiencing this adventure, Adela found that she began to hate Dever. Selfishness, aloofness, and small-mindedness are the manifestations Adela sees in Dever. Even Lucky, the dandy young master, is more pleasing to the eye than the hypocritical Dever. At this time, the person whom Adela admires most is Harry. When Harry first saw him, he was very rude and stared at her whole body. At that time, Adela hated him. However, after arriving in Sunset Town, Adela's feelings about Harry began to slowly change. Because except for the first meeting, Harry never looked at her with that rude look before. In addition, yesterday in the hotel, when the orcs wanted to harm humans, Harry was the only one who dared to join her in attacking the kobolds. This shows that Harry's heart is not actually bad. And Harry's performance today made Adela completely change her view of him. First, he came to save her from the skeleton mage's sneak attack. And just now, he risked his life to help everyone stop the orcs' pursuit. You must know that the chance of survival in this task of stopping the orcs is very slim. But Harry did not hesitate at all. At this time, in Adela's heart, although Harry was a lowly mage, his moral character was noble. His soul was noble. And he was a truly chivalrous person. Although Harry was a magician. That's why Adela turned her head frequently and looked behind her while she was running. Just not wanting to see Harry activate the Forbidden Curse scroll. At this time, the 10-minute minimum obstruction task had been completed. As long as Harry did not activate the Forbidden Curse scroll, it meant that he still had a chance to survive. Chapter 542 Breaking Two Levels in a Row Adela praised herself to the sky in her heart. And Gervais naturally didn't know about it. He was now using all his fighting spirit to the extreme, running wildly on the road with all his strength. Because at this time, Khan's birdman had already reacted and was chasing him in the air. No matter how stupid Khan was, he realized after running away for dozens of seconds. After knowing that he had been deceived by cunning humans, he immediately flew into a rage, turned the bird's head, and quickly chased Gervais. Cunning human! You can't escape! You will pay for what you have just done. I will chop off all your limbs and roast them before eating them. Then I will escort you back to the royal court to receive your reward. Khan was less than a hundred meters away from Gervais, and the roaring sound clearly reached Gervais's ears from midair. Hearing Khan's arrogant words, Gervais fired three large fireballs without thinking, instantly frightening the arrogant Khan to dodge quickly. At this time, Gervais shouted loudly, Birdman, don't be proud. Sooner or later, I will pluck out your wings, roast you and feed you to the dogs. After saying that, Gervais directly changed his running direction and got into the jungle beside the road. Originally, he wanted to run wildly to catch up with Lucky, Adela and others. After all, all the orcs were scared to pieces by him. And only Khan, the birdman, could possibly catch up. No matter how powerful Khan is, there is only one person, and he is no match for their group. It's just that Gervais underestimated Khan's flying speed. The original distance was two miles, but Khan only took less than a minute to catch up with Gervais. So now Gervais's only choice is to get rid of Khan first, and then find a way to find Lucky and others later. So Gervais had to get into the jungle, with dense trees and branches blocking the way. Even if Khan has extremely fast speed, it will be of no use if he cannot find traces of Gervais. As for being on the ground, he still has more than 40 minutes to rely on infinite fighting spirit. Gervais is confident to get rid of him. After getting into the woods, 
Gervais did not dare to stop at all and continued to run wildly. He would run wherever the woods were dense. After running wildly for half an hour, Gervais looked above his head to make sure that Khan had not noticed him. So Gervais went straight into the hole of a big tree. As expected, Khan, who was still tracking in the sky, did not realize that Gervais had hidden himself and continued to fly forward quickly. Finally got rid of this birdman. It should be safe now. Seeing Khan fly away with his own eyes, Gervais was slightly relieved. He really didn't want to use his trump card unless he had to. Let me see the harvest this time. After waiting quietly for two or three minutes and finding that there was no trace of Khan in the air, Gervais couldn't wait to open his system panel. He had been fighting all the time before and had no time to count how many orcs he had killed. Now that he was free, he was naturally very concerned about his gains. He risked his life just to gain energy points. 143 energy points. Ha ha. You can be considered rich this time. When Gervais opened the system panel with great expectations, he was not disappointed by the results of this adventure. After seeing the unprecedented three-digit energy value, I almost wanted to laugh out loud. Fortunately, he finally reacted and quickly silenced himself, secretly enjoying himself in his heart. Of these 143 energy points, 15 were originally left over, and the rest was Gervais's harvest today, which was more than the total energy points he had obtained in the past. Gervais released a total of hundreds of fireballs this time, harvesting the lives of at least 40 orcs, and the rest were obtained by actual killing with fighting spirit. This time I have developed a lot. I must increase my strength as soon as possible. I must avenge myself for being chased by this birdman, barely suppressing the excitement in his heart. Gervais began to think about his next plan. There seem to be many magic plants in this magic tower, which can be seen from the moonlight fruit trees. When Gervais wanted to improve his strength, in addition to practicing with red kiwi fruits, the magic fruit gave him the greatest boost. As long as I get a dozen more potion fruits, I can definitely break through to the silver intermediate level. If there are dozens of them, then I... The more Gervais thought about it, the more excited he became. Now that he was wealthy, he had already planned to use energy points to find magic potions and then quickly increase his strength. Anyway, the most indispensable thing in the holy continent is the orcs who can give him energy points. As long as his strength improves, Gervais will not worry about the lack of energy points in the future. He acted as soon as he thought of it. Next, Gervais walked out of the tree hole and then climbed up the big tree neatly. He observed the tree for half an hour to confirm that Khan was really missing. Gervais opened his system panel again. Exploration function. Activate. As Gervais thought, a circular radar immediately appeared on the system panel with a flashing red dot on it. Next, Gervais no longer hesitated and quickly moved towards the red dot with his fighting spirit running. Four days later, in a secluded valley, Gervais's closed eyes suddenly opened slowly, his eyes full of excitement. Ha ha! Ha ha! I finally broke through and became a high-level silver knight. At this time, Gervais's clothes were in tatters, and the armor on his body was already pitted and even had many damaged places, as if he had gone through dozens of cruel wars. However, Gervais felt that it was all worth it, because his strength had been greatly improved, and he was promoted from silver elementary to silver advanced in just three days. This is a very terrifying improvement speed. You must know that it is simply impossible for others, even geniuses and monsters, to break through to the silver stage without one or two years of hard training. But Gervais has done it now. Although he has paid dozens of energy points for this and has walked between life and death several times, this can really be said to be a miracle. Since escaping Khan's pursuit that day, Gervais has been searching for potion plants since he turned on the search function. When he found the magic potion, he immediately put it in his mouth and consumed it to improve his strength. Although most of the potion plants he found were not spiritual fruits, but potion plants that needed to be formulated into potions to be most effective. However, Gervais gave up the idea of configuring it into a potion after thinking for a moment, because he was now within the scope of the magician's tower, and there were many dangers here. He continued to improve his personal strength first. Moreover, Gervais had taken brown kiwi fruit, which permanently strengthened his digestive function and increased the energy he obtained from any food, which naturally included magic plants. When Gervais ate the magic potion plant like lettuce, he immediately discovered that the medicinal effect on the potion plant really did not disappear much and most of it was absorbed by him, confirming that magic plants can also improve one's strength like spiritual fruits. Gervais searched even harder. On the first day, after Gervais took 13 magic plants, 
The fighting spirit in his body had reached its limit. Gervais quickly found a safe place and began to cross his legs and circulate his fighting energy to temper his body. Just a few hours later, Gervais successfully broke through and became an intermediate silver knight. Everything fell into place without any bottlenecks. Feeling the sense of full strength coming from his body, Gervais naturally kept up his efforts. I once again spent 60 energy points and spent three days collecting magic plants to take. Finally, I achieved the feat of breaking through two levels in just three days. Chapter 543 Glowing Treasure If I want to increase my strength to the peak of silver, I'm afraid these remaining energy points won't be enough. After washing himself comfortably in the stream in the valley, Gervais immediately regained his original, handsome and majestic appearance that belonged to a king. At this time, Gervais was walking along the rugged path toward the outside of the valley. But he was thinking about the energy point in his heart. In the past four days, he had spent a total of 73 energy points looking for magic plants. And the remaining 70 energy points were no longer enough for him to continue to break through. So Gervais is now going to find Lucky and others. Join them first. And then see if there is a chance to get more energy points. After all, there is strength in numbers. And the reward Lucky promised him has not yet been paid. If Lucky dies, his loss will be huge. That was an auditor seat in a college worth 5,000 gold coins. Gervais was still waiting to sell it and then find a way to get to the coast of the Holy Continent. After walking vigorously in the valley for more than an hour, Gervais finally walked out of the mountains. As long as he walked forward for half a day, he would probably be able to get out of the jungle. Through continuous exploration in the past few days, Gervais finally saw how broad the scope of this magician's tower was. It would take at least several days to cross the jungle where Gervais is now. And this is when the tidal knight is running with all his strength. After walking out of the valley and finding the direction, Gervais began to walk non-stop. After another half a day of driving, Gervais estimated that it would only take more than half an hour to leave the jungle. So he simply stopped and set up a fire next to a lake, preparing to start the journey first. Fill your belly. Who knows what is going on outside now? If he encounters orcs again later, Gervais doesn't want to fight on an empty stomach. After setting up the fire, cleaning up the rabbits, he caught on the way and putting them on the fire rack. Gervais sat leisurely on the bluestone by the lake and slowly waited for the barbecue to mature. Because he was busy looking for potion plants in the past two days, Gervais had not eaten a bite of food. Although the energy of the potion plants could replenish the various nutrients consumed by his body, Gervais's mouth really felt like it was about to fade away. The birds are coming. After watching the rabbit being roasted for a while, Gervais opened his system panel to kill time. First, he looked at the remaining 70 energy points, and Gervais smiled slightly. As the saying goes, having money in your hands makes you more confident and he has energy points in his hands, which makes him more confident. After looking at the energy points, Gervais turned his attention to the button of the exploration function. Nowadays, this exploration function can be said to be one of the most helpful existences to Gervais, even as much as Kiwi. However, Gervais is currently only using the exploration function, which consumes a few energy points. If I spend 10 energy points on exploration, I wonder what kind of treasures I can find. The more he looked at the search button, the more Gervais had the urge to give it a try. All he could find with one energy point were first level magic plants. What if it's 10 o'clock? Will it be a level 3 potion or a level 4 potion? Or can we find other precious treasures? The more he thought about Gervais, the more his heart moved. As if that incredible treasure was waving to him. His grandma is a jerk. She only has 10 energy points left and right. If she finds an opportunity to kill 10 orcs in the future, she will come back. As a man, you should be cruel to yourself. Not to mention that I am the man who will become the king. Until the rabbit meat was roasted and he started to eat it. Gervais was still struggling. The struggle made him feel that the rabbit meat no longer tasted good. In the end, Gervais slapped his thigh and decided to use 10 energy points to explore it. He couldn't do that to himself. After thinking about trying a higher level exploration function, Gervais ate the roast rabbit in three attempts. And then couldn't wait to open his system panel. Activate my exploration function. With Gervais's expectant expression, the system deducted 10 energy points from Gervais, and then a radar plus a red dot appeared again on the system panel. Hey! This location is a bit close. Just when Gervais determined the general direction of the red dot, he discovered that the red dot seemed not far from his location. Converted into a real distance, it's only one or two miles at most, which is very close. Immediately, Gervais could no longer sit still. Immediately stood up from the bluestone 
and then quickly swept away in the direction of the red dot. It only took two or three minutes for Gervais to arrive at the location of the red dot. But after arriving, Gervais frowned. Because this is actually a lake, and the area is not small, and the red dot is located in the lake. Is the treasure in the water? The water in this lake is very clear, but it is precisely because of this that Gervais has some difficulties. There is nothing special about the lake's periphery. The water is so clear that you can see the bottom, only five or six meters deep at most. But the problem lies in the center of the lake. There is a dark hole with a diameter of several dozen meters in the middle of the lake. The water in the hole has turned green to black. This is not because the lake water there is not clear, but because the entrance of the cave is too deep. And even such a clear lake water cannot allow Gervais to see what is deep inside. Just like those large reservoirs in previous lives. It makes people's hair stand on end just looking at them. This system is really a trick. My dear, it's only been two days since it was normal, and it started acting like a monster again. He spent ten energy points. But the treasure was in the pool. Gervais didn't want to go down. The pool was bottomless. And who knew what was waiting for him below? Gervais's various encounters when he was looking for potion plants a few days ago were still vivid in his mind. And the pitted armor on his body was the best proof. Of course, he was afraid of returning. After all, the ten-point energy point was there. Gervais gritted his teeth and prepared to go down to explore the situation. At worst, put your trump cards on the table. Then, Gervais pulled out the long sword from his waist, threw the scabbard into the grass beside him, and then jumped into the clear water pool with a splash. Gervais did not take off his armor, because with the fighting spirit in him, the armor would not have much impact on his swimming. On the contrary, because the armor is forged from mithril, it can play a considerable defensive role at critical moments. As soon as he jumped into the water, Gervais felt a biting coldness. Gervais first adapted to the temperature on the water surface, and then swam toward the center of the lake. When he reached the top of the deep pit at the bottom of the lake, which was like a black hole, he took a deep breath, and then straightened his body towards the bottom of the pit. Swim away. With the help of the weight of the armor, Gervais's sinking speed was greatly increased. After about 10 seconds, Gervais had penetrated more than 30 meters. However, at this time, Gervais still could not see the bottom of the pit, which made Gervais feel a little worried. The water in this pool was extremely clear, but as Gervais went deeper, the environment underneath became darker and darker. Coupled with the biting cold, even Gervais, the titled knight, felt very uncomfortable. Fortunately, he has found no danger so far. If you dive another 30 meters and still can't see the treasure, you have no choice but to go up first. Gervais was making plans in his mind. Next, Gervais continued to swim downwards with all his strength. After more than 10 seconds, Gervais suddenly saw a faint green light coming from more than 10 meters below. Is it a treasure? Gervais was immediately overjoyed and hurriedly swam towards the place where the light came from. When Gervais slowly swam not far from the light, he unexpectedly found that he had reached the bottom of the pit. The terrain below was flat, much like it was dug manually. However, Gervais didn't care whether it was manual excavation, and continued to move towards the bright light four or five meters ahead. Huh? You can still blink like this. At this time, the water depth was already more than 70 meters, and the surroundings were dark because of the surrounding environment. Only the round object that emitted a faint light was very conspicuous. Just as Gervais slowly approached, he saw that the green light object was blinking. Then, the next moment doubts arose in Gervais's heart. There was originally only one luminous object in front of him. But suddenly there was another one. The two round luminous objects were more than half a meter apart. And they both began to blink slowly. A moment, Gervais suddenly realized something. His hair stood on end. And he immediately stopped and raised his sword in front of him. Hack you! This is not a treasure. It's clearly a monster. Chapter 544 Monster in the Lake To death. I couldn't sense any breath of its existence beforehand. Gervais's little heart was beating wildly, and the oxygen in his lungs was consuming faster. He wanted to turn around and leave now. But the question was, could he swim past this unknown aquatic creature? The problem is obvious. Absolutely impossible. The distance between the eyes of this creature alone is more than half a meter, and its size can be imagined. So Gervais clearly knew that he could not leave his back to this guy. Otherwise he would really die. At this moment, the inexplicable creature had not taken any action. And Gervais began to look around with his peripheral vision, trying to find a way out or a bunker. However, after a round of inspection, he was extremely disappointed. 
the area was extremely flat and unobstructed, and there was no place for him to hide. Instead, the place where the inexplicable creature was located was a wide cave, much like a passage. The treasure should be in that cave. Right. This is too cheating. Gervais was cursing secretly in his heart. And now, he wouldn't even dare to go near the cave again even if he had ten nerves. Holy shit! It's moving! Perhaps it was because he found Gervais hesitating. Or perhaps because this inexplicable creature lost its patience. Gervais clearly noticed that it moved. Gervais was immediately startled. And he quickly held the long sword tightly in front of him to protect him. His fighting spirit always ready to be activated. At the same time, Gervais was already thinking about whether to take the black kiwi fruit to enhance his strength. Roar! At this moment, the creature in front finally lost patience and stopped pretending. As the roar came, the huge body twisted quickly, turning up a turbulent current and rushing towards Gervais. Gervais only felt a huge black shadow in front of him pressing towards him, and he immediately gritted his teeth and turned his fighting spirit to the extreme, with a little aura of light coming from the movement of fighting spirit. Gervais finally vaguely saw the appearance of the creature rushing towards him. This is a completely black strange fish. Its skin is really ugly with pits and pits. Its body is 5 to 6 meters long. And its mouth full of sharp teeth can make people panic just by looking at it. Ding! In just a moment, the strange fish rushed to Gervais and opened its mouth full of fangs to give Gervais a bite. However, Gervais saw the right moment and dodged to the side. And at the same time, the mithril sword stabbed the strange fish in the eye. But what shocked Gervais was that this strange fish's defense was surprisingly strong. Gervais's sword accurately stabbed the fist-sized eye of the strange fish. The problem was that instead of feeling the weapon entering the flesh, it felt like it was stabbed on a hard glass bead. The shock instantly made Gervais's arm numb. What the HL? Even the mithril sword can't hurt him. So how can we fight him? No matter how powerful any creature is, the eyes are generally the most vulnerable place. This was the first time he had encountered a situation like this ugly strange fish. No, we can't fight anymore. We can't beat him at all. His defense is too strong. Since the mithril sword's dagger was useless, Gervais began to retreat and prepared to find another way out. He first looked above his head, then at the dark cave behind. My illusion can only be effective for two or three seconds. It's probably impossible to swim out of this pit directly. Gervais thought for a moment, and finally set his sights on the cave. In addition to worrying about not having enough time to escape, his other plan was to take away his own treasure which was worth 10 energy points. Seeing that the strange fish in front of him was about to charge towards him again, Gervais immediately made a decision. He immediately mobilized his mental power and then used an illusion on the strange fish. After releasing the illusion, Gervais did not hesitate, turned around and swam quickly towards the cave where the strange fish was guarding just now. What is gratifying is that this strange fish has stronger defense, but the illusion is still effective against it. After being affected by Gervais's illusion, the direction of the strange fish's attack immediately changed, and it quickly attacked upwards, attacking the non-existent figure that was rising rapidly. This also allowed Gervais to find a chance to escape for a moment. After just three or two flying up, Gervais rushed into the dark cave. Originally, if the illusion had no, Gervais would have used his trump card, and it seems that he can still stay for now. After entering the cave, Gervais discovered that there was indeed a deep passage inside, and immediately started to move forward quickly with the help of the aura that appeared slightly on his body. The deceiving fish that had just been deceived by Gervais's illusion finally realized at this time that there was no human in front of it. Just now, he pounced directly on the rock wall of the deep pit and chewed a mouthful of it. A gravel. Immediately, the strange fish turned around violently, its fist-sized eyeballs flickering, and it instantly sensed the sound of Gervais swimming rapidly in the cave. Roar! In an instant, this ugly fish became extremely irritable, and dim blue spots began to appear on its originally dark body. Obviously, this strange fish did not use all his strength just now, but because it was rare to see a prey, he was just playing with Gervais' prey before eating. With a violent roar, the speed of the light-spotted monster fish increased again, and it quickly flew towards the cave. At this time, Gervais also heard the angry roar. Knowing that the strange fish had escaped from the illusion, he didn't dare to neglect it, so he immediately used all his strength to escape. Roar! Holy crap! Can you still transform? It's just that how can humans compete with fish in the water? Just a few seconds later, Gervais saw a huge man from behind, with yellow spots covering his body, chasing after him quickly. It is said that human potential is unlimited, 
seeing this strange fish that was obviously serious about pursuing him. Gervais's speed actually increased by half a minute. Huh? No. It's not that my speed has become faster, but that the water has started to flow. The next moment, Gervais noticed the change in the surrounding water flow and suddenly felt happy. Underground river? Is there a bank around it? Gervais had indeed swam out of the cave passage just now. But because the surrounding environment was pitch black, the range he could observe was extremely limited. So he did not react until the moment the water flow appeared. There's light ahead. When Gervais was making some guesses, he suddenly discovered that there was a faint white light coming from above not far away. Seeing this, Gervais was overjoyed and began to move desperately towards the place where the white light was. Wow! Gervais, who was being chased by the strange fish, moved very neatly. When he came to the position where the light came from, he pushed hard on the bottom of the water. His whole body flew out of the water like an arrow and jumped three to four meters to the dark river. On the platform. Huh? I almost died! After arriving on the shore, Gervais finally breathed a sigh of relief. This time it was really thrilling. At this moment, the strange fish finally caught up with Gervais and stared at him closely with its green eyes on the shore. It was obvious that he hated this human being who was plotting against him. Chapter 545 Magic Array Ugly monster! Stop looking! If I don't think you are too ugly to eat, I will definitely turn you into a dead fish when I use my life-saving trump card. Seeing the strange fish's unwillingness, Gervais cursed angrily. If the strange fish hadn't been too defensive, he would definitely take this opportunity to kill the strange fish. Boom! Just when Gervais was taunting the strange fish, the strange fish had a sudden attack. The blue markings covering its body began to flash rapidly. And then it suddenly opened its mouth wide and spit out a blue ball of light towards Gervais. Gervais did not panic when he saw this ball of light. He had already been on guard and easily dodged it with a sideways dodge. The mist ball of light hit the rock wall behind and exploded. Hey! He's still a bad-tempered man. Let me fire a big fireball! After dodging the attack of the strange fish, Gervais fired a red fire ball with his backhand without even thinking, instantly hitting the strange fish's head that was half exposed in the water. Roar! The strange fish was beaten hard by the fireball and roared angrily. But there was nothing he could do to Gervais on the shore. Then a fish rolled and sank to the bottom of the water without a trace. You can walk fast. After seeing the big fish leave, Gervais withdrew his gaze and began to look around. He worked tirelessly for the treasure. And of course, he was most concerned about where the treasure was. The place where Gervais is now is a very large cave. And there is a straight passage in front of the cave. The bright light he just saw came from the passage. Every five or six meters in the passage, there is a pearl the size of a lychee, emitting a soft light. Looks like the adventure was worth it. Gervais's eyes widened and he immediately forgot about what he had just experienced. This passage is amazing. There are so many deep sea pearls. This pearl is taken from a strange sh. Fish in the deep sea. It can absorb energy from the sky and the earth on its own. And then emit bright and soft light. Although this pearl of the deep sea can only be used for lighting. In this world without electricity. Its value is immeasurable. And because of its origin. This pearl of the deep sea has become rare. It is a symbol of power and nobility. Generally. Only those big families can own it. The reason why Gervais knew this thing was because he saw Adela, Lachi and others carrying it when he was on the road some time ago. This thing is much more effective than a torch when taken out at night. It is not only safe, but also bright enough. Gervais also heard Lucky boasting that his father had rewarded him with more than ten such pearls, which he kept in his study, so that reading at night was like daylight. What Gervais remembers most clearly is the price of this thing. Five hundred gold coins was the starting price. It also depends on its size. The larger the size, and the higher the brightness, the more expensive it will be. And those in the passage are obviously not that bad. Get rich. After seeing such a good thing, Gervais naturally would not let it go. And then he started a great wall-knocking campaign. Master Steward, the lady has been down for more than ten minutes. Four or five miles away from the lake where Gervais is, there is also a crystal clear lake. And there is also a dark, bottomless pit in the center of the lake. A group of people from the Holy Trading Company were standing guard by the clear lake. A manager of the trading company was sitting leisurely on the bluestone nearby with his eyes closed and meditating. Standing in front of him was a guard captain, who reminded him with a somewhat anxious expression. I know. It's okay. Just keep waiting. The manager of the trading company did not pay attention to the reminder from the guard captain, and continued to close his eyes tightly as he replied lightly. Yes. 
Master Steward! Seeing the steward's reaction, the guard did not dare to say anything more. The man in front of him was a big steward in the Holy Company. He said that he could only continue to wait. The eldest lady of the Holy Trading Company, the enchanting woman Lolita whom Gervais and the others saw, dived into the unfathomable pit in the lake more than ten minutes ago and has not surfaced until now. As tidal knights, they naturally knew that with Miss Gold's primary level of strength, being able to stay underwater for 10 minutes was already the limit. But the problem is that it has been at least 15 minutes now. But Miss Lolita has still not been seen back. If the store manager hadn't been waiting calmly, they would have jumped into the lake to look for him. Ha ha! Big profit! Gervais was at the end of the underground cave passage, holding a bulging black leather bag in his hand, which contained more than 20 deep sea pearls. Moreover, the size of this deep sea pearl is much larger than what Lucky held that day. Gervais is sure that these deep sea pearls of his are at least as good as those in Adela's hands. After patting the black leather bag, Gervais tied it firmly around his waist and continued moving forward. Gervais had not taken a few steps when a wider cave appeared in front of him, several times wider than the place where he had just landed. Moreover, Gervais could also see that there were many traces of human activities in this cave, and it was also inlaid with deep sea pearl lighting. Well, the deep sea pearl in this cave is mine too. With this thought in his mind, Gervais walked out of the passage in a few steps and cautiously stepped into the bright cave, having just entered the entrance of the cave. When he saw the scene in the center of the cave ahead, Gervais stopped his original smile, frowned, and began to hesitate. That should be the magic circle. What is the red liquid in the pool in the middle of the magic circle? The reason why Gervais did not dare to move forward was because he sensed a dangerous aura. There is a small high platform in the center of the cave, which is as tall as half a person. There are six thick pillars standing on the corners of the high platform. The most peculiar thing is that there are dense purple inscriptions engraved on the pillars. Although Gervais has never seen a real magic circle, he did some brainstorming on his own and compared it with what he read in the books. He immediately confirmed that there is one on the high platform. Magic circle. And judging from the shimmering inscription, it is obvious that the magic circle is still functioning normally. In addition to the magic circle, there is a one meter square pool in the center of the high platform filled with boiling red liquid. Originally, when encountering such a weird scene, Gervais could go around a little further to pass. But the problem was that the red dot displayed on his radar happened to be where the high platform was. This is going to be difficult. The magic circle set up by the magician is not a joke. It will be over if you don't get it right. Looking at the high platform, Gervais fell into pain. After all the hard work, he finally arrived here. But he did not expect to encounter such a thing. The cheating system cheated him, and it was really out of the question. Tap. Tap. How come there is someone? Just when Gervais was in a dilemma, he suddenly heard the sound of tapping from ahead. The sound was crisp and fast. So Gervais was sure it was the footsteps of a living person. The direction from which the sound came was from the other side of the high platform, where there was also a wide passage. When such a situation occurred, Gervais did not dare to neglect, and quickly climbed behind the stone that was half a person tall. Then he leaned down and carefully looked from behind the rock in the direction of the sound. Tap. Tap. It's her. As the crisp footsteps got closer and closer, Gervais finally saw the owner of the footsteps clearly. Chapter 546 Meeting the Enchanting Woman Again The owner of these footsteps is the enchanting Lolita. At this time, Lolita was wearing a close-fitting lace top and a loose long skirt. Although the clothes at this time were not as revealing as the previous days. However, Lolita had obviously just dived into the water and her clothes were clinging to her skin, making her already charming figure even more tempting. Gervais could hardly move his eyes away from her. The only flaw is that the veil on Lolita's face hangs on her face from beginning to end. Even in this cave. What is this woman doing here? Did she know what treasures existed here before? After just a moment of feasting his eyes, Gervais gathered his mind and began to think. Gervais himself found this place by relying on the system search function. But the enchanting Lolita in front cannot have a system. Now that he has appeared here, there is only one possibility. Lolita probably knows what treasures are hidden here, and she obviously has a strong purpose. After getting such a possibility, Gervais was immediately relieved when he remembered Lolita's identity. This Lolita is the eldest lady of the Holy Trading Company. With the Holy Trading Company's ability to open stores in all racial gathering places, it is not a surprise to get the news about this magician's tower. After thinking about this, Gervais was full of expectations about what treasures there were in the high platform. Even a young lady with a strong background like Lolita came here to look for treasures. So this thing must not be a mortal thing. Sorry! 
No matter how charming you are. I spent 10 energy points and risked my life to get here. No matter what treasure it is. I can't give it to you. Thinking of the extraordinary treasure, Gervais began to follow Lolita's every move. He had already made a decision in his heart. If the treasure appeared later, he would never give it to the other party. Even if the other party was neither can beautiful women. Gervais has activated his perception to explore Lolita's strength. She is a gold junior knight. If Gervais had not broken through two levels in a row and wanted to snatch the treasure from Lolita, he would probably need to take kiwi fruit to enhance his strength. But now, Gervais is already a high-level silver knight, and he has the ability to fight against him, especially with his illusion and fireball skills. This was why Gervais didn't jump out immediately. He was now sure that Lolita came here also for the treasure marked by the red dot. So he wanted to wait for Lolita to take out the treasure. Although then snatching it from Lolita's hands would be much less risky than taking the treasure directly from the magic circle in person. Gervais was ready to seize the treasure. And after Lolita arrived at the cave hall, her eyes were immediately attracted to the high platform in the center of the cave. When she saw the appearance of this high platform, she did not frown like Gervais, but instead had a happy smile on her pretty face. The originally beautiful willow eyebrows were slightly curved, making her look even more charming. The descriptions recorded in the books are indeed true. That's great. With a smile on her face, Lolita explained in a small voice unconsciously, If there's anyone who knows the situation in this magician's tower best now, it's her, Lolita. Lolita dares to say that she is second. But absolutely no one dares to say that she is first. Because except for the original owner of this magician tower, few people know its existence. This magician's tower was built 500 years ago by a top undead genius magician. In order to build this magician tower, the necromancer had sought help from their family. It was precisely because of this opportunity that Lolita's ancestors became friends with the master of the magician's tower, the magician Nahum Bulla. Therefore, his ancestors knew everything about the situation here. And before they died, they recorded it in books and stored it in the family library. If Lolita's father's birthday hadn't been coming soon, maybe Lolita wouldn't have found the book that recorded the details about the magician's tower. Lolita's father had a total of five children, four of whom were men. But Lolita, the youngest, was a daughter. So as her father's only daughter, Lolita was naturally favored by thousands of people. And she was favored many times more than her brothers. The relationship between Lolita and her father is also extremely good. Lolita has always known that her father wants to collect the long sword that she loves. Lolita kept this incident in mind and wanted to find a good long sword to give to his father personally at his birthday party. It was from that book that Lolita saw that Magister Nahum was once gestating a dragon tooth sword, which was specially prepared for Magister Nahum's most powerful death knight. Arms. It was just that in a catastrophe 200 years ago, Sorcerer Nahum died directly in the land of God's fall. The location of his mage tower has become an unsolved mystery since then. Because no one knows where the real entrance to the necromancer tower is. When necromancers invite friends to visit the tower, they arrange special magic teleportation arrays in advance to allow guests to enter directly without entering from the real entrance. Therefore, if the necromancers die suddenly, their magic tower will become an unsolved mystery. Maybe it will be discovered by someone lucky enough one day. Or it may never be discovered. Such things are not uncommon in the holy continent. Lolita saw the book left by her ancestors a few years ago and learned that there was such a place to get the Dragon II sword. He had been trying to find it for the past few years. But unfortunately he found nothing. Unexpectedly, just a month ago, she suddenly received a report saying that someone had discovered an unknown magician's tower. And it was most likely the tower of a necromancer. Lolita then came in person with her people to see if it was the magician's tower belonging to Magister Nahum. Fortunately, when Lolita entered, she found that this place really looked like the environment described in the books. It might really be the magician's tower of the wizard Nahum. So Lolita followed the details described in the book and finally found the cave specifically used to store the Dragon II sword. As the name suggests, the Dragon II sword is a long sword made from the sharp fangs of a giant dragon. And the Dragon II sword of Magister Nahum is not just that. Various precious magic materials are also used on its sword to inscribe rune circles. After that, it has been soaked in the dragon's blood pool for cultivation. It needs to be cultivated for 20 years, so that the dragon's blood can truly penetrate into the sword body. Only then can a powerful long sword be obtained. From these points, you can one can only imagine the precious value of this dragon two sword. Chapter 547 Gervais Poverty The reason why Lolita's ancestor knew about this place where the dragon two sword was kept was because dragons on the mainland were not as rare as they are now. And dragon slayings often happened at that time. 
and getting the remains of the giant dragon is not as difficult as it is now. Therefore, when Magister Nahum made this long sword, she did not hide it from her ancestors, and even proudly introduced the special features of this dragon two sword, looking at the high platform where the magic circle was arranged. She was sure that she was at the right place. Lolita, who was excited, walked briskly to a place less than two meters in front of the high platform. After getting closer, Lolita's beautiful eyes immediately looked at the pool in the center of the high platform. She saw that the dragon's blood in the pool had not completely dried up, and there was a small section of the sword hilt exposed above the water. Her charming eyes became even more shining. Then Lolita started to move. Her slender hand suddenly moved up, and then she took out a red gem the size of an egg from the space ring. After taking the gem in her hand, Adela did not hesitate, turned slightly sideways, and threw the gem directly towards the high platform. TSK, when the gem flew through the air and approached the magic circle, the magic circle suddenly flashed with light, and then heard a scoff, and the egg-sized ruby instantly turned into powder and floated in the air. Sister, are you so arrogant? That gem is worth dozens of gold coins. You just threw it away. There are a lot of stones at your feet. Gervais had a clear view of Lolita's actions. He originally thought that Lolita's taking out the red gem might be related to breaking the magic circle. But he didn't expect that it was just a test. Lolita's move can make Gervais truly feel that poverty limits his imagination. Everyone throws stones to ask for directions. But this rich woman throws stones to ask for directions. It's really annoying to compare people to each other. Fortunately, he was just complacent about harvesting more than 20 deep sea pearls. Now look at them. The gap will appear immediately. How can I still claim to be the king's man in the future? Lolita didn't know that every move she made was in the eyes of a man who was secretly feeling sad. She fell into deep thought after seeing what happened to Ruby. Although the books recorded by the ancestors were very detailed, it was naturally impossible to describe the information about the protective magic circle. Master Nahum is not stupid enough to tell others these things that are really related to his wealth and life. It's so nerve-wracking. It would be great if it was in my hometown. There is no need for me to do it myself. Lolita frowned and thought seriously. Yes. After hundreds of years, the energy of this magic circle is definitely insufficient. It can be seen from the fact that it just shattered the ruby that I threw, but did not actively attack me. Then I'll let you spend more. Lolita thought of a way. Her delicate brows suddenly stretched again, and then she began to take out things from the storage space. The next scene shocked Gervais, who already felt very poor. With just a thought, Lolita saw a pile of gems half as tall as a person appearing in front of her. These gems are red, blue, and green. In short, they are colorful and extremely dazzling. But Lolita didn't look at these gems. She just picked up a gem at random, and then threw it towards the high platform again. TSK, the thrown gem turned into a burst of powder, as usual. The gem had just turned into powder. But Lolita didn't pause. She picked up a gem again and continued to throw it away. TSK, TSK, as Lolita's actions made her look like a wealthy person. A series of hissing sounds were heard in the cave. And Gervais, who was not far away, was stunned. Sister, what kind of life do you live to be so luxurious? Even if you throw gold coins one by one, I won't think it's such a waste. Gervais, whose outlook on life was greatly affected, wanted to jump out right now to stop the enchanting rich woman from her prodigal behavior. But after thinking about it, I realized that this was not a defeat for my family. So I held back. And he really hopes that Lolita can break through the magic circle and take out the treasure inside. Time passed like this, and about half an hour later, Lolita had thrown out three piles of gems half as tall as a person, while Gervais lamented that this little girl was prodigal. At the same time, he had to admire her wealth. She carried piles of gems whenever and wherever she went out. Who could bear to see this? And it can be seen from the massive number of gems that Lolita must have a very large storage space. Based on Lolita's performance, this gem is like a stone on the roadside to her. If the space was not so large and inhumane, who would put the stone in the storage space? Anyway, Gervais felt that he would definitely not do it. Of course, Lolita's prodigal behavior was not fruitless. At this time, the magic circle had weakened at a speed visible to the naked eye, and the inscriptions on the six stone pillars became extremely dim. When Lolita grabbed a gem again and threw it towards the high platform, snap! This time, there was no more hissing sound from before, and the beautiful gem landed on the high platform without any hindrance. Ah! Success! He! At this time, it was obvious that this magic platform really had no energy. Gervais, 
who was not far away, was speechless when he saw this scene. Sure enough, being rich has its benefits. He also didn't expect that the magic circle that had just made him feel troublesome would be defeated by the money offensive of Lolita. A wealthy woman. Lolita knew that the magic circle had expired due to exhaustion of energy. So she immediately stopped slacking off, ignored the small pile of gems on the ground, and walked directly towards the high platform. Soon Lolita came to the edge of the pool on the high platform. And as expected, nothing happened on the high platform. Dragon Tooth Sword! You are mine! My father will be very happy! Lolita looked at the sword hilt close at hand and muttered happily, then took out a square towel from the storage space and carefully wrapped it around her white palm. This dragon two sword is soaked in the blood of a giant dragon. Naturally, a woman like Lolita is unwilling to touch such a thing. After wrapping the handkerchief around her hand, Lolita couldn't wait to reach out and grab the dragon two sword in the pool. Clang! But at this moment, a sudden change occurred. It wasn't Gervais who took action but the Dragon 2 sword in front of Lolita actually moved on its own. The Dragon 2 sword suddenly let out a low sound, and then shot out from the bottom of the pool with a clang, escaping into the air. Chapter 548 Recognizing the Master with Blood At first, Lolita was almost startled by the changes in the Dragon 2 sword, but at the next moment, she showed an expression of surprise again. It actually has spirituality, legendary weapon, or immortality. Lolita dared to conclude at this moment that this Dragon 2 sword must have had its own spirituality. So it had undergone such a change. This makes Lolita even happier. Because as long as it has spirituality, this weapon will be at least legendary. Thinking of this, Lolita quickly took out a large and thin net from the storage space. And then quickly moved towards the Blood Red Dragon 2 sword net in the air. Whoosh! The Dragon 2 sword was extremely fast. And Lolita's net did not catch it. But Lolita is not in a hurry. Even if the Dragon 2 sword has spirituality, the time it can act independently without the blessing of external power is very limited. As long as you wait for a while, the action of the Dragon 2 sword will slow down, and then you can catch it. Moreover, this cave is underground, and the entrance requires diving to enter, so there is no way to escape with this Dragon 2 sword. Watch me catch you! Lolita once again threw a large net towards the hovering Dragon Fong sword. Whoosh! Dragon 2 sword fired another shot quickly dodging Lolita's big net. You bumped into this yourself. Looking at the red sword hovering less than two meters away from him, Gervais's eyes glowed with a faint green light, and he laughed in his heart. His conscience would be troubled if he didn't accept the treasure that was automatically delivered to his door. Moreover, it would save him trouble. He was already prepared to escape immediately after accepting this strange long sword to avoid a head-on battle with Lolita. Having made such a plan, Gervais immediately stopped hesitating. The fighting energy in his body reached its peak in an instant. And then he suddenly flew towards the blood-red sword and flew away silently. However, this blood-red sword was very spiritual. And it immediately sensed Gervais's approach. And immediately prepared to continue escaping. How could I let you escape? Fortunately, Gervais had anticipated this and had a plan beforehand. I saw a stone suddenly pop out from his hand. And the stone hit the hilt of the long sword accurately in an instant. Making a clanging sound. Then the blood-red sword swayed, and the opportunity to escape was lost. The next moment, Gervais's hand was firmly on the hilt of the blood-red sword. When the hilt of the sword was held by Gervais, the blood-red long sword still struggled to escape. It kept trembling in Gervais's hand and making a low sound. This made Gervais unable to escape with the long sword immediately. Seeing this, Gervais raised his finger and bit a small bite without thinking. In an instant, a few drops of blood came out of his finger. Come on! Recognize your master! Gervais did not dare to waste it, and directly dripped his blood onto the sword of the Dragon Two sword. Gervais's actions from grabbing the sword to identifying the master with blood dripping were very smooth, but his operation made Lolita a few meters away bewildered. Who is this man? How would it appear here? And why did he suddenly bite his own finger and rub it on the Dragon Two sword? How disgusting is that? Of course, Lolita didn't know about Gervais's decision to shed blood to identify his master. Because there is no such thing as a blood confession in this world. It was just Gervais's own imagination. Who are you? Why did you steal my dragon tooth sword? Although there were countless questions in her mind, Lolita was naturally unhappy when she saw that she had finally broken through the magic circle and the treasure she was about to get was robbed. Her pretty face covered by gauze turned cold. He asked Gervais with a sullen tone, it turns out to be called Dragon 2 Sword. After hearing what Lolita said, 
Gervais knew the name of the blood-red sword in his hand. But once the sword is in his hands, it belongs to him. So Gervais also retorted, This dragon two sword is obviously an ownerless thing. Why do you say it is yours? Not only did I discover this place earlier than you, but it is also in my hands now. Of course it is my item. Miss, I see you are so beautiful. But you must also be careful when speaking and don't slander others indiscriminately. You? You shameless thief. Lolita was almost angered to death by Gervais's words. She had just been busy for more than half an hour before opening the magic circle. But the man in front of her shamelessly told such a reason. However, this dragon two sword is indeed an ownerless thing, which Lolita cannot refute. At this time, Lolita turned on her perception to check Gervais's cultivation and found that Gervais was just a silver knight. Her face immediately turned cold and her eyes revealed a dangerous aura. When the matter has reached this point, it is useless to waste words, so it can only be solved by force. Seeing Lolita's eyes change, Gervais felt anxious in his heart. The dragon two sword in his hand failed to obey, which made his plan to escape immediately come to nothing. Looking at Lolita, it was obvious that she was ready to fight him. If the dragon two sword is still dishonest, then I will have no choice but to let him go and fight Lolita first. You broken sword, be honest with me. I've shed my blood to admit he was my master. If you don't act honestly again another day, I will stick you in cow dung. The treasures in hand will be given away later. Gervais is so angry. So he swore directly at the dragon two sword. Of course, Gervais would not say these threatening words in front of Lolita. After all, he would not have the face to threaten a sword in front of others. His threatening words were transmitted directly to Dragon Fong's sword with his mental power. Just like when he communicated with unicorns before. It was just beyond Gervais's expectation that when he used his mental power to transmit his anger and threat to the Dragon 2 sword, the Dragon 2 sword in his hand actually calmed down and stopped struggling. Hey, so it can still be like this. What a good baby. Seeing this, Gervais was overjoyed. He also didn't expect that this Dragon 2 sword could actually communicate. When Lolita, who was opposite Gervais, saw that the Dragon 2 sword in Gervais's hand had become quiet, she immediately frowned and stopped being negligent. Shameless thief. I ask you one last time. Will you hand over the dragon two sword or not? As she spoke, Lolita was already approaching Gervais. And she had also taken out an exquisite long sword from the storage space with many runes engraved on it. I said, it's in my hands now. It belongs to me, beautiful lady. I advise you not to do anything. Otherwise, I don't mind fighting back at you. How could Gervais hand over the treasure he had spent 10 energy points on? Moreover, this Dragon 2 sword has spirituality and can communicate, which is even more amazing. Then you die? Shameless person. Chapter 549, he just wants to grab the magic scroll. Lolita suddenly became violent and raised her sword to stab Gervais. And Gervais also directly raised the Dragon 2 sword in his hand to fight with Lolita. I have to say that Lolita's skills are indeed very good. And her strength is still the Golden Knight. Although Gervais is able to leapfrog challenges as always, he can at best be on par with Lolita. Of course, this is already amazing. The two of them are two realms apart. If it were anyone else, even if they were a peak silver knight, they would be instantly killed by Lolita. At this time, Lolita was getting more and more frightened as she fought with Gervais. She was surprised that the man in front of her was obviously only at the high level of silver. But he was evenly matched with her. This was simply unbelievable. After several rounds of fighting, the two sides staggered their bodies. Lolita frowned as she looked at the pitted and jagged sword blade in her hand. Otherwise, the shameless man in front of him has a terrifying fighting ability. Coupled with the dragon two sword in his hand, he would definitely not be able to take him down. However, this is not all the strength of the eldest lady Lolita. Knowing that fighting alone could no longer defeat Gervais, Lolita took out a scroll from the space with a thought. Imprisonment scroll? The moment Lolita took out the scroll, Gervais recognized it immediately. He had played with the remains of the imprisonment scroll a few days ago. So he was extremely familiar with this thing. After seeing this thing, Gervais did not dare to neglect it. The imprisonment scroll could trap even a strong man like Ardman, let alone himself. Illusion. Gervais immediately prepared to use illusions to hit Lolita, and finally captured her. With an illusion of false escape ready, Gervais launched an illusion attack directly on Lolita. However, what Gervais did not expect was that when he activated the illusion on Lolita, the Lolita in front just frowned slightly, and then nothing happened. 
Lolita didn't show any signs of being under an illusion at all. It was obvious that Gervais's illusion had no effect on Lolita. Shameless. Are you still a knight? You actually use illusions in battle. Lolita reacted immediately and looked at Gervais with disdain, despising him for using illusion magic to sneak attack on her. You still dare to call me shameless? You yourself use magic scrolls in battle. Gervais's face suddenly darkened. His illusions had no effect on the wealthy woman in front of him. And he even received double standard contempt from her. Either this little girl has some treasure in her possession. Or her mental strength is not weaker than mine. Gervais quickly came to a conclusion. And the former conclusion is easier to understand. After all, Lolita is a super rich woman. So it is not unusual for her to have some treasures. But the problem is that Gervais feels that the latter is a more suitable explanation for the situation just now. Because Gervais knew very well that if the defensive equipment took effect and blocked his illusion attack, there would definitely be fluctuations. He didn't see any strange fluctuations in Lolita just now, which shows that Lolita probably has a mental power that is not weaker than Gervais. If her mental power is similar to mine, then she must have practiced meditation. In an instant, Gervais came to another shocking conclusion. This Lolita seemed to be just a golden knight, but she was probably a powerful magician. Gervais himself developed such a strong mental power because of the kiwi fruit. So he did not believe that anyone could be born with such a strong mental power. And with Lolita's background, she has such a strong mental power. She should have learned magic a long time ago. Magicians are more popular than titled knights. However, this rich lady is now acting like a golden knight. Gervais feels that there must be a monster when something goes wrong. Either this Lolita wants to use magic as a trump card, or her magic is shameful. But no matter which one it is, the strength of the woman in front of her is obviously not as bad as it seems now. While Gervais was thinking, Lolita's hand movement did not stop, and one hand was already grasping the activation switch of the imprisonment scroll. Seeing this, Gervais didn't dare to think any more, and immediately flew towards Lolita, preparing to snatch the imprisonment scroll. If he was really imprisoned by Lolita with a scroll, he didn't know what this woman would do to him later. Ah! Lolita did not expect that Gervais would fly towards her. With a scream, her whole body was thrown to the ground by Gervais. Then the imprisonment scroll in her hand, which had been opened and ready to be thrown, fell beside the two of them. Before the two of them could make any further moves, they heard a buzzing sound, and the confinement scroll activated its effect, imprisoning the two of them directly on the ground. Unable to move. You shameless person! I'm going to kill you! Although his whole body could not move his limbs, his head was not imprisoned. Their eyes met. And when Lolita saw the man who was only more than 10 centimeters away from her face and whose whole body was pressing on her, she suddenly became furious and wanted to devour the shameless man alive. Hey! Miss! You have to understand the situation. You release this prison scroll yourself. Okay! Smelling the refreshing fragrance and feeling the astonishing feeling coming from his body, Gervais was helpless and aggrieved. He really didn't want to be like this. He was not a shameless person. He just wanted to snatch the imprisonment scroll. I'm going to kill you. You shameless. Despicable. Filthy thief. You are more shameless than an orc. More despicable than a goblin. And more despicable than a one-eyed troll. How could Adela listen to Gervais's words? And began to curse at Gervais continuously. It was obvious that he was extremely angry at being frivolously held down by Gervais. If you continue to scold like this, I won't be polite. Gervais' face also began to look ugly. Originally, Gervais felt a little unreasonable because of such a posture. But this little girl's words are getting more and more unpleasant now. And Gervais won't agree to it. Not only will I scold you, I will also kill you later. You shameless person is worse than a pig-headed man. Facing Lolita's still determined abuse, Gervais really couldn't bear it anymore. So he decided to temporarily block Lolita's mouth to prevent her from continuing to abuse him. When Lolita continued to curse, Gervais lowered his head and then blocked Lolita with his mouth before she could react. After being gagged by Gervais, Lolita's eyes widened in an instant, full of horror and disbelief, and she began to struggle violently and make whining sounds. Ah! Of course, Gervais was not a hooligan. He just blocked it for a few seconds. He thought that after this little girl knew how powerful she was, he immediately raised his head and let go of her mouth. When she felt she could speak again, Lolita immediately let out a scream. You shameless person! How dare you do this to me? I will definitely kill you! Stop making noise! If you make any more noise, I'll gag you again! This time Lolita was really scared. When she heard Gervais' threat, she shut her mouth instantly 
and just looked at Gervais with eyes filled with endless murderous intent. Seeing that Lolita was so obedient, Gervais felt a little disappointed and couldn't help but smash her mouth. Not to mention, it's really delicious, but there is a layer of gauze that affects the taste a little. Chapter 550 Under the Tool Not to mention, it's really delicious, but there is a layer of gauze that affects the taste a little. Of course, all this is Gervais's subconscious behavior. But when Lolita saw Gervais's subconscious smacking of the lips, her eyes became sharper and her face turned red. Lolita's face was not blushing because she was shy, but because she was extremely angry. If her body wasn't in prison now, she would really go berserk and kill the shameless person in her at all costs. Tell me what this woman looks like after taking off her veil. Gervais didn't care at all about Lolita's murderous gaze, as long as she stopped yelling. After all, being so close to each other would make her head hurt. Smelling the delicious fragrance and feeling the taste just now, Gervais became very interested in Lolita's face under the veil. This Lolita is top-notch in terms of figure and temperament, including her charming pair of eyes. But she always wears a veil, which always makes people feel like they don't know Lushan's true face. Why don't you take it off now and take a look? With this thought, Gervais's desire to find out became more and more uncontrollable. Anyway, I have offended this woman to death. He will definitely chase me and kill me later. Why not take advantage of this opportunity to feast your eyes on it? If there is no such a good opportunity in normal times. While thinking about it, Gervais's eyes were darting around on Lolita's veil. Making the final decision, Lolita kept glaring at Gervais fiercely, naturally taking in Gervais' eyes. When she saw Gervais' gaze moving downward, a bad premonition suddenly arose in her heart. What do you want to do? Lolita is really scared. Nothing. I just want to see how beautiful you are. Lolita's trembling questioning voice seemed to give Gervais the last shot in the arm. The less the enemy wants something to happen, the most important thing you should do. That's what Gervais thought. And the more Lolita showed concern, the more curious Gervais became. Of course, in his mind, this was just a look at Lolita's face, and it shouldn't be considered a big deal. After making the decision, Gervais immediately lowered his head towards Lolita again, while Lolita quickly turned her face away to avoid it. It's a pity that her body is restrained. How could she escape? Gervais's mouth bit the tool on her face at once, and then gently pulled it away. In an instant, Lolita's delicate face, which was covered by the tool, was clearly exposed to Gervais's eyes. A straight and tall but delicate nose. Rosy. Small and crystal clear red lips. Plus pearly white and neat teeth. Gervais was shocked. It turned out that the tool covered up such a perfect scenery. Ah! You shameless person! Lolita was also shocked. Her face was actually seen by the shameless human being in front of her. It was at this time that the effect of the imprisonment scroll finally ended. Lolita suddenly pushed towards Gervais on her body, wanting to stay away from this shameless man. In fact, there was no need for Lolita to do anything. Gervais took action the moment he felt his body regaining control. He quickly stood up from Lolita and then ran towards the passage behind him without looking back. At this time, he had already committed Lolita's crime to death. Looking at Lolita's violent expression, he would definitely fight to the death. If he didn't escape, he would probably die in the hands of this beautiful rich woman later. Gervais is sure that Lolita, like Adela, has many killer weapons in the storage space. At the moment Gervais escaped, Lolita did not chase Gervais immediately, but quickly picked up the veil that fell on her neck. After putting the gauze back on and covering her face, Lolita looked at Gervais's back with her extremely cold eyes. I must kill you! Azure Fury! Lolita no longer hides the fact that she possesses magic. She has only one thought in her mind now. And that is to kill this hateful bastard who underestimates her. Wow! As Lolita's furious voice came out, a huge wave with a height of more than two meters rose from the ground and surged towards Gervais in front. However, because Lolita was delayed for a while wearing the veil, Gervais had already run a certain distance. The raging wave did not catch up with Gervais. In the end, it just hit the wall of the passage instantly slapping the wall. There must be dense cracks. Seeing that her magic did not hit Gervais, Lolita was not angry. And her fighting spirit was running to the extreme, and she quickly chased Gervais. Holy crap! I guessed it right! This woman was hiding her strength just now! The huge wave that could crack the rock wall really surprised Gervais. The power of that magical power was at least for an intermediate magician. If Lolita hadn't given up on attacking her immediately because she was wearing a veil, then she would have been in a terrible situation. At this time, Gervais had already run to the place where he had landed earlier. 
He glanced at Lolita, who was about to chase out of the channel with his peripheral vision. Gervais did not dare to delay and jumped into the underground river with a splash. If possible, Gervais really doesn't want to go back the same way. After all, there is probably an old friend waiting for him down here. However, there are only two roads in this cave. The other one is the passage where Lolita comes in. Gervais is even more afraid to run that way now. Lolita's subordinates must be outside. In the past, he only surrendered himself. Share. Wow. Seeing Gervais jumping into the water, Lolita did not hesitate after coming to the dark river and dived into the dark river with the same light leap. This woman! Didn't I just look at you? Is it necessary to chase me like this? Gervais heard the sound of splashing into the water from behind and cursed in his heart. It was so dark underneath the underground river that Lolita jumped down without even thinking about it. She wasn't worried at all if she couldn't find a way out and got lost underground. He completely ignored that he had just taken a bite of someone else's food. Even with a curse in his heart, Gervais's hands and feet were still nimble, and he immediately reached the entrance of the underwater passage, and then got in without hesitation. It's just that Gervais didn't notice that the moment he got into the passage, the speed of Lolita behind him suddenly increased sharply, without being affected by the resistance of the river at all. There is a thin film of air covering the surface of her body, which prevents her body and clothing from coming into contact with the river water. Lolita actually doesn't like the feeling of being separated from the water very much. But now she needs to chase Gervais quickly. So she has to use it. Shameless bastard. You will never escape. During the rapid pursuit, Lolita happened to see Gervais turning into an inconspicuous passage. And she gnashed her teeth and cursed in her heart. 